and it looks like players are not wasting any time. I think they're going to be readying up here soon. So Extinction, ready to go. All right, here is your countdown. Three, two, one, and it's game time, baby. Con X5 jumping in. We've got Team Liquid versus Team Intensity. You see the players on the left. We're going to start off with Extinction. Remember this game mode, you can see the, the player lives in the top. It's going to be a matter of last man standing. But when you get eliminated, when you run out of lives, you still exist as kind of a ghost. So in other words, you can still chase people around the map and get kills. So keep that in mind. Nobody's ever going to be permanently eliminated from this game type, but it's still a case of having the last player with a life. And right now you can see, uh, you can see Liquid kind of off to a quick start, but they're all very, very weak. You can see the health in the top, top left up there. Gonna have to be wary of any pushes. So Vindicator coming up, that's gonna be your damage amplifier power up in the middle of the map. Nice shot there by Waz, right on top of that 100, Team that red Vindicator. armor. Looks like Rafa picked up that extra damage uh, booster right there, the Vindicator. So he'll be running around. You can see he's definitely favoring Oh, looking for that spike damage. Got 100 damage. Another 100 plus damage. Shotgun blast. Getting the kill there. Eliminating one player. You still got two for intensity. Oh, going down to the rail. So where is that power up? It does drop. Wad's going to pick it right back up from Rafa. He will be on the hunt, though. Looking for players. He's got a ghost in front of him. So that's what that white sort of flamey bit is. That means that that's a ghost. That means that's a player that's already been eliminated. So they still get to play. And they just get to... Uh, determine whether they want to try to hunt down other players if they want to try to protect their own oh nice kill there by ease minus one on the scoreboard kills going back and forth the hang gets the kill on moto and so you got two total lives there on the green team for intensity we'll go on board um let's go on board here we go so you can see two players left alive and it gets really interesting at this point because you kind of have to decide who to be aggressive, who to be ooh, passive. And now you've only got one chance. We'll stay on board with Moto now. One life left. He's got to stay alive and give his teammates time to track down those Liquid players. Multiple Liquid players are actually pretty weak, but Moto now on the run, only 63 and 64. There's another kill coming out left and right. So two to one. Oh, and they get eliminated. So round one going to Liquid. Take a quick look at that scoreboard. Round two. Two. One. Fight. Yeah, breaking nose is a, a ghost acts just like a regular player. They just don't have any lives left. So you can still take out enemy players. You can still uh, go on the hunt, track them down. And again, first kill going to liquid. They've had really good starts. Actually, first two kills. The first 30 seconds of the first round and this round now both heavily in liquid's favor. You might see if intensity tries to switch up anything. Maybe they want to roll. Maybe they want to group up in the first few seconds. Um, maybe pick one side of the map to hang with a couple more kills. To kill, to hang, I should say, with a triple kill there. And already an egg hunt down to the last player alive. You will notice that that last player has two lives, so they will have to take him out twice. But only one death so far for Liquid. Looking dominant so far. There's one kill. Trying to track him down. We'll try to get him. Oh, actually, it sent us right to him. And so you got the Vanguard power up up. And now here you go. You can see him checking it out. You're not going to dive in there 3v1, so that's a smart play. And that's where you get into the map control aspect. Whenever you lose those lives, you've really got to decide, okay, am I going to be, am I going to push or am I going to drop back? Honestly, though, in that case, they had eight lives versus one. So Liquid, red hot already at the beginning of this map. Hey, Dimco, what's up, man? Haven't seen you in a while. Everything been good on your side of things? Also, hadn't seen you playing in this game. Uh, definitely been playing with a lot of the UT guys lately, so... We're gonna get more playing in as, of course, time goes on now that we've got a full release. Here, though, uh, in this match, already another quick start. Look at that, 30 seconds in and already four kills on the board for Liquid. You're seeing them just get... Tons of damage early on in rounds. Moto here has been putting up plenty of damage himself, but it seems like Liquid has just been grouping up and pouncing. 
in the first 20 to 30 seconds of these rounds is giving them a huge edge. And see, now you get into these situations, right? Siphonator's coming up. But with uh, such a life deficit, you have to be careful how, with how aggressive you are. That said, nice pick right there. And they actually pull much closer to even. Who picked up the Siphonator? Let's go on board. There it is. Vlad's going to have it. Only 23 HP. And remember, you are going to gain health over time with that Siphonator. Oh, and big rocket. That's going to heal him quite a bit. And that'll actually take him out of that critical range. So not a whole lot happening with that power-up. It's more of a defensive power-up. Oh, and Ease with the nice shot from behind. This is probably the best chance they've had so far in a round. We'll give you a quick look at the scoreboard. Oh, and just like that, Liquid pounces on them, takes them down to their last life. Moto, the last one alive. We've seen him in this position before. Only three lives for Liquid, though. Oh, but he goes down, and that'll do it. Round three going to Liquid. Every time it seems like their opponents uh, kind of start to gather themselves, Liquid just turns on them immediately. We're seeing some really nice teamwork there. Rafa getting the, the mega health spawn with the rocket launcher on top. That's going to make him very dangerous. And this is actually, again, already a kill on the board. This is where Liquid's been making their places in the first 30 seconds. Already two kills on the board, three kills on the board. Everybody going down. And that's really a credit to their communication. I mean, perfect rockets, beautiful follow-up rail there by Rafa, but... Really, teamwork and communication there is what got them a couple of those kills and really been dominating. Look at this, already down to two lives, 35 seconds in. Liquid taking no prisoners now in this first round. Egg Hunt already, only, only one life lost for Liquid. Vindicator coming up and this could be First map, Liquid, if they can fin finish this round off, there's one. Oh, go on board with them. Unfortunately, we can't switch straight to the power-up. There we go. All right. There we go. On board with Waz. We're going to follow that power-up now. You can see him facing off against the Ghost, and you get into these interesting situations in this game type where you have to decide whether to engage Ghosts or not. So you see Liquid there finishing things off strong. And starting off this tournament strong. So showing that they're very comfortable with this Extinction game type. Again, a, a relatively new game type as far as haven't really seen it in tournaments before. Curious to see how teams adjust. No problems here by Liquid. Oxide. So what we're going to have here is the loser of the first map then gets to choose the game mode for the second map. And then the winner of the first map chooses the map for the second one. So if they, again, this is a mixed game mode situation. You've got um, Extinction, you got Wipeout, you got MacGuffin. Looks like they're going to choose Wipeout. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the game did just release. And, you know, there's a certain amount of... There's a certain amount of skills that carry over from being Quake players. Because this is, a, I mean, obviously a heavily Quake-inspired game. Um, but, of course, there were, you know, closed betas and such. Um, let's see. Are they going to back out of the lobby? Looks like they're going to do that. So, looks like we're going to see Wipeout as the second game type. Switching it over right now. Wellspring. Spring. Dimco, I always pictured you as Gaston from Beauty and the Beast, just eating like 12 dozen eggs for breakfast, so that makes a lot of sense that you'd be into this game. Ooh. So we've got some trivia in chat coming from Force. Yeah, I mean, guys like Reflex, Killing, Scissor, of course, Lavac. Oh, here we go. Players are ready. Here is your countdown. 3, 2, 1, and it's game time, baby. Con X5 jumping in here. We got map 2 between Liquid and Intensity. We're on Wipeout now. Map 1 went to Liquid, so 
Intensity chose this as the map two game mode. Going to be one teams are going to be maybe a little bit more familiar with. Right off the bat, already a better start. We saw some really, really quick just map domination. The first 30 seconds of those extinction rounds, Liquid just dominating and putting themselves well in the lead uh, based just off of the starts there, just blazing hot. See if that carries through. Already three to nothing Liquid, so you are definitely seeing teamwork and just raw fragment ability giving them the leads early on in these rounds. Of course, anything can happen. They're, they did use their healing bubbles. You can see no armor on those uh, those health bars up top left for Liquid. Taking the high ground, pretty standard strategy here. Nothing really exotic so far. On board with Rafa, you can see him kind of cross-firing towards that, towards that courtyard area. And we've seen this from teams before. Where one team basically covers that water area, one up top in what a lot of folks are calling dojo. And then you kind of just get, a, get an attack and defense, kind of who's going to make that first move. Oh, Moto, maybe being a little sneaky there. I thought he might try to flank around. Problem there is, of course, if you fall off the map, you die. So very dangerous. Oh, missing the follow-up rail. Nice defensive slow bubble. He's going to be the last one alive here, but he does have the Siphonator, and his teammates are coming back in about 10 seconds. So if he can just survive, you can see him healing. I actually like that move. Oh, he takes the teleport right into some blaster. There you go. Round one going to Team Liquid. Fight. Oh, up close with those rockets. And Shaft's going to be a huge differentiator between players and teams. We've seen... We're going over to Hang. We've seen his... Shaft just be on point in prior games. The key here that players spawn with so much health, you can't really rely Ooh, on one or two. And here we go, Siphonator for the hang. Last one alive, just has to survive a couple seconds. Was in pretty good shape there, had a player behind him. When you get the Siphonator, those rockets can really uh, take people down. You kind of dare people to chase after you. Only five HP, getting that extra rail that's really just icing on the cake at that point. So four to two frags, that score you see on the left side there, that's going to be number of frags per team for that given round. So it gives you an idea of who's kind of ahead and behind when it comes to the respawn timers. So a couple of kills coming back and forth. See one player left for intensity up top. He only has to survive for about 15 seconds, getting some nice damage here, taken out to hang. And another shot, just blasting them with this pincer, this railgun. It's caught around the corner, and unfortunately for him, that that Siphonator, where you you, re, you uh, regen your health by doing damage, ended at just the wrong time. So still a three-frag lead, you can see, for this round by Liquid. Intensity trying to slow it down, though. It's probably a smart move. They can try to catch a Liquid player out all by themselves. They can maybe try to call them to hang. Does get taken down, and there you go, a round on the board for Intensity. First round they've taken. They were down by three or four frags and they were able to come back and it's all about timing it's not just about most frags in a round you got to get the entire team down at once so smart play by them to slow it down towards the end there to heal up and did exactly what you know what we were saying if they can catch a player by themselves or whittle them down one by one to make something happen unfortunately for moto that's exactly what's happening to him right here nice job though escaping two rails and a rocket oh going for the big home run to get the kill rafa chases him down but not before taking a ton of damage so he's here as a chance to actually uh, fight one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, he's not really going to get surrounded just yet. Oh, the pincer shot by Ease missing, and that's going to be such a big punishment. This game definitely punishes you for missing rails. Egg hunt now. We've got a couple on the board. And Rafa right now has 15 seconds to survive. This could be another opportunity for Intensity now to take the lead if they can catch him out on his own. Only 71 HP. This is actually a dangerous spot for him if he gets hit with the rail. That could be very, very dangerous. He's still got three seconds to survive and nice job. So that rocket jump right there, it's not necessarily hard to do, but it's not something everyone does. It's, it's kind of a, I don't know if unintuitive is the right word. It's not the most common path. So nice job escaping that way. He had, what, 13 seconds on the board to survive with 71 HP. That's a pretty precarious position. Mendes has come out alive. Liquid now taking the lead five to four in total frags. They trade kills here, but Intensity gonna have a much uh, quicker timer. 
So it will be 3v2 three three for about 25 seconds here. Here we go, Rafa again by himself. 20 seconds to survive, but so much damage can come out from the Siphon Air, and they take him down. They catch him on that back porch area, and there you go. Lead taken by intensity here in the wipeout round. We are playing a four round limit, so it will be first team to four rounds taking this map. Intensity trying to force the tiebreaker to MacGuffin. Liquid, of course, trying to move on. Early on, early kills here. Much better round by intensity. I think they're settling in a bit. Grouping up, I think, has been the key for them. I mean, you can take a look. We're actually tied on frags, but Liquid ever, Liquid was doing uh, so much more damage in the first 10, 20, 30 seconds of these rounds. We've seen that even out a bit. Oh, smart play by Waz. Seeing that heal bubble, basically just an, an obvious tell that someone's hanging out there. Nice damage there. A couple of rails coming in. They do flank him and take him out, but not before doing some damage. So we got Siphonator from Moto. Actually, Siphonator for both sides, but that's going to end right now. And nice job by Moto getting that kill. Now they're, they're going to force another Siphonator situation. So Dehang's the last one alive. Very short respawn timers, though, is the number of frags. Again, only five and five for each side. We'll see that going up now soon. I like that counter. So it countered that slow bubble with a slow bubble. Egg hunt situation one on one here. You got to hang trying to take him out. Last player alive. He goes down. Liquid able to tie this one up. Fight. So that was probably the first round where Liquid really got off to a slow start. Able to come back and win it though. So a little bit of a confidence boost there, knowing that even if they don't start off on fire like they have been, they can still come through and win the rounds. Got a tie game here. We're back up here. Rafa in the back patio kind of area. He goes down. Moto with a nice job. Getting that consistent damage with the shaft. Taking him out to hang here. Down by himself. Ooh. Couple of big shots could have taken him out, but those really, really fast respawn timers, of course. Gonna make it very hard to get quick wins like that. Oh, and he catches them on the patio. Double kill with the rockets, and that will be the round. To hang catches them sleeping. And that is the danger when you throw down those heal bubbles and group up like that. To hang makes them pay. And it is now match point for Team Liquid. So again, you see the fight for the top area. Things have actually gotten a little bit messier. Oh, nice. Grenade there by DeHang, catching him right over the lip of that, that platform. And tons of damage back and forth by both teams. Only one frag so far. Intensity has multiple players weak, though. You see Moto trying to get that spike damage out there. Not really in the position to heal. Catches Waz coming up. Dangerous play there by Waz. I'm actually surprised he did that. Eats a rocket. Moto did some damage to himself, but able to at least buy himself some time here. And another 100 damage grenade. We've seen some big grenades already today. Hunt situation now. Ease here. Last one alive. Gets one kill. He will have a teammate now. Now it's 2v1. But you can see, again, only 10 seconds. We'll actually be back at full strength in 10 seconds. So I think both teams are going to probably back up, try to establish some sense of map control. We've seen that before, where teams want to take the top, split up between the water side, and uh, I guess what you might call... Actually, no, they're going to back up to the, to the bell. So, ooh. You see, Liquid has them with the high ground surrounded. So this is going to be a really tough situation for them to fight themselves out of. Egg Hunt situation. He's going to be by himself. Needs big shots from the rocket launcher. He goes down. Liquid catches them around the corner and knocks them out. And the match will go to Team Liquid. But pretty good fight there by intensity. Taking a couple of rounds. Actually had to lead there for a minute. So that will be first match Taken there by Liquid. We'll go take a look at the brackets now. See Liquid over Intensity. They'll go on to take the winners of, uh, let's just say, Idiots and Equally equ equally Yoked. Let's see how their match is doing. 
You can see ball and vibration and miles versus McCool, Pitt, EKZ, and Jurotic. I'm not sure who's actually playing out of this four. They might be swapping out. So, of course, winners of that match are going to take on Liquid. We're going to stick with Liquid throughout, Liquid throughout this tournament. And it looks like they might just be hanging out in this same lobby. So we'll stay in here with them. We'll see what's going on uh, in the bracket. It looks like this match might still be going on. For idiots versus equally yoked. So I'm going to take this opportunity to take a quick look at Discord. See if that's been reported yet. And as soon as that's good to go, then we'll jump into round three, match number two here. See, we had some people jumping into chat. Appreciate that. What's up? I know we got some new names here and some old names, of course. And yeah, Middleman, they uh, actually talked to some of the GD Studio folks about it the other day. They, they definitely have spectator uh, in casting like tools on their radar. But of course, from, I guess, a prioritization standpoint, you know, getting the, the player experience um, finished off and wrapped up for launch date it was really their first priority, which I think we can understand. Um, but definitely things like the minimap is a relatively new addition. Um, things like x-ray mode. I mean, they, they don't necessarily have a list of things that they're promising, but they have some folks uh, on the team that have built those things out before. So I, I definitely know that it's, it's on the radar for them. It'll definitely be much easier. I mean, even the ability to swap to spectate a power-up or a specific player will make things easier so we're not having to do the whole you know clicky clicky thing but bear with us game did just come out a couple days ago so first couple weeks is going to be a lot of things shaken out both uh you know we talked about teams and rosters even organizations and which websites people use and which game types people play and of course from the spectator streamer um, even developer perspective as well So there we go, refreshing those brackets, Team Liquid. Moving on, still gonna wait for the outcome of Idiots versus Equally Yoked. Yeah, I wish, actually, I guess there is a browser plugin I used to have back in the day where you could set it to auto refresh. That would probably be a smart addition. I'll do that one of these days. Yeah, I mean, taking a look at the bracket, you can see um, Team Smiley. Um, again, a team that I think, I mean, I think they're, what, the number three seed here. So I guess I wouldn't call Team Smiley a dark horse by any means, but yeah, Team Liquid, Prevail Gaming moving on. Team Smiley, yeah, Egg Control going to be down there. Definitely some teams that we've seen make noise already in prior tournaments and, and some players that are even kind of remixed, right? I mean, Team Smiley, we'll go on board with them. You see Sane, Griffin, Chaney, and I'm a very interesting, uh, very scary roster right there. I think the question we're going to have throughout the day for these teams is just how much have they played together? And of course, a lot of these folks coming over from the Quake scene, how much have they played Diabotical specifically leading up to this, uh, this launch? Have they played in the closed betas? Have they been focusing on Quake up until release? So all things that uh, we will just have to speculate on. The only thing we'll get to see is who wins and loses. And uh, that's kind of what we're waiting on right now is who wins and loses this winner bracket 2-2 game. I'm going to take a peek in Discord, see if we've got any updates there. So I guess one thing we can do with this time, if you'll bear with me, let me see if I can get that uh, that cheat sheet back up again. Oops, that was the old. Here we go.
There we go. So we can kind of just give a quick scroll through some of these team rosters. A little bit easier than poking through every single team and every match in that bracket. Um, like we did see before, yeah, you can always use the brackets tab, or the, sorry, the brackets command in chat there. That'll bring it up, uh, bring up the link for it. If you want to follow along at home. See, so yeah, again, Ed Control being a team we've definitely seen active in prior tournaments. Weak bodies, I believe we saw in the last one in the MacGuffin tournament. Whom with uh, j back Vigilante. I, I don't think I've seen Big Time Rush before, but we've definitely seen them playing. Fundamentals, of course, some players that we've seen before. Intensity. Yeah, lots of familiar names. Uh, actually, surprised we're seeing fewer Egg puns in team names, so... Uh, BMG here with Sidegib, Brick, and Death Row. Another team. I think they were number three seed here. Definitely want to keep an eye on as well. Uh, Ecstasy, a team we've seen, I think, in all of the Get Crack tournaments so far. Oops. Yeah, so Ecstasy with Boo Boy, Champa, Rook, and Nation. Uh, I think they've maybe been changing the fourth player on their roster a little bit. But, uh, that you know, through that consistency, if they're a team that we see playing week in and week out, it be very interesting to see how they progress over time. Edgy Children, of course, one of the top teams from every tournament we've done, so another team to keep an eye on. So there you go. Just a quick rundown. Wanted to show you every roster just real briefly. Well, if you want to get a good look at Waz's egg, uh, this is the... <laughs> Again, still waiting for their next opponent, so we're going to hang out here and chat. It looks like that, that meme of the, uh, of the little girl that's, that's very, looking very skeptically, skeptically towards the camera, right? That's what I get out of that. <laughs> So we'll head back to the brackets now. You got, you know, something to look at in the meantime where we wait for that other match. So I think maybe it took a little bit while, uh, longer to, to get started. Idiots versus Yoke. It might have been one, too. Um, it looks like they got a buy first round, so it may have started a little bit late. And if, between that and if it went to, goes to a map three or something, like I say, some of these rounds in these games can last a long time. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Ecstasy lost to Prevail Team 1. It looks like they're playing against Prevail Team 2 next. Prevail Gaming, though, they're, they're number one team. They're uh, not... Not a bad lineup there. I mean, Arabooks, Davis, Pithy. We're seeing a lot of players and a lot of teams at multiple different skill levels, and I think that'll be interesting um, to see not just where things shake out now, but, you know, a month down the line, three months down the line. Are the top teams still the top teams? Are the sort of mid-level teams moved up or down the ranks? Has anyone taken anyone by storm, right? That's always interesting to see early on in a game. It's not just a matter of who's good day one. It's a matter of who's good day 100, right? And, of course, we did have all those esports announcements. Um... I guess it's on Diabotical slash esports, right? We're going to do the official stuff. Looks like we're going to start with Duel, but right, uh, right on into the team game types later on this year. So, again, something to keep an eye on: which teams stay together, which teams get those reps.
take another look, close out some of these tabs for you. Okay, it looks like we just saw a match result here. So, looks like equally yoked here. McCool, Pitt, EKZ, Droddick did beat idiots uh, who joined a QL League in 2020. Ball in Vibration and Miles, 2-1. to one. So, it was, it was a close one. Went to three maps. Between that, if you get into overtimes and such, that totally uh, makes sense why that match would take so long. So, that one is finished. We're going to see that reported here any second. So, equally yoked. Coming from uh, getting a first round by sort of a mid a middle seed, I suppose. Uh, technically with the upset. Not a huge upset there. Not going to shatter the earth or anything, but be an upset nonetheless, and they'll be taking on Liquid for their trouble in round three. All right, we do see that match result official, and Liquid still has their same... Gotcha. So Liquid does still have their same uh, lobby up, so we might just be hanging out in this one. So I'll keep an eye on that, and we'll just wait for their opponents to show up. It's always interesting to see players moving around the maps in this game just to see who has different kind of favored shortcuts, who uses the dodge, right, to change directions. We saw it to hang there. Using that dodge to get up that, um, I, don't know, I guess that ramp, right, behind the base. Some people like to circle strafe. Some people like to use the dodge. You can see them using dodge to change directions. Just a lot of feel comes into play in getting used to these maps and, and not just the most efficient way to move around it, but your favorite way to move around it. What's more, more comfortable? Um, speed certainly plays a factor getting from point A to point B getting the power-ups quick you know contesting bases or whatever but you also got to be a little bit um, unpredictable at times so when you see people that can develop alternate routes right ways to get from point A to point B in a less predictable way so they're not eating rockets and rail all the time oh and you see the teammate boost so interesting move there melee still does boost your teammate though it's a little bit inconsistent at the moment could see them messing around with that. It's an interesting move. I, I don't know that we're going to see it in a game mode where you can hurl the MacGuffin so far. I think you're probably going to see more people just setting up to receive it than necessarily boosting their teammates. But if we do end up with something more like a, a traditional capture the flag mode, it'd be interesting to see if that if that is a tactic that people employ. <laughs> and just watching the hang move around the map, I mean, he already looks more comfortable than, well, than me, frankly, moving around this map. So I know there's been some question with some of these higher level, uh, you know, folks coming over from the Quake scene, you know, how much have they played this game? How familiar are they with the original maps in this game? And, you know, the, the, the movement changes compared to something like Quake or Quake Live or Quake Champions. I think when you're used to, when you've been playing strafe jumping games for long enough, though, you, you can definitely transition between them carry over some of that feel. So we had a pretty close match last time between uh, Intensity and 
Liquid, at least on map two, whenever they got to got to wipe out on Wellspring. Uh, Liquid actually having to win three rounds in a row to take that one. It was two to one, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Poor intensity, but Liquid, of course, not panicking. Coming back to win it, though, so, uh, you know, a contested match, but wasn't a nail-biter necessarily. So they've had some time to go between matches. Always interested to find out if teams find that to be beneficial so they can kind of clear their minds, get up, you know, wash their hands, wash their face. You know, some, some players, their hands get sweaty when they play. Some players, their hands get really cold, right? When you're nervous, every little bit of uh, discomfort kind of gets amplified. So having that time between matches can be really nice to reset yourself that way, let that adrenaline kind of flush out to calm yourself down for the next match. But some people like to just keep that momentum. They want to keep that intensity from one match, match to another, just jump right in. <laughs> what's up, Demko, man? I said what's up already, but uh, I do appreciate... I do appreciate the sub there. You'll have to forgive me. I've actually been changing my settings. I actually... I had my... my sub sound effect, the godlike, turned down temporarily while I was testing things. I think, I think you just unlocked a new chat badge, though, if I'm not mistaken. I think there's a nine-month-er there. Yes, Demko, of course, of, uh, of the gifting leaderboard fame, <laughs> for anyone who hasn't noticed. Him and Marcos, and of course, DC being the, being the primary gifters up there. Um, I think right now, if I'm not mistaken, if anyone's looking to sub anyone, you know, if you want to go give the hang a sub or whoever, I think Twitch is doing some sort of uh, promotion for sub or for uh, September for subbing. So just be aware of that. Of course, anyone with, uh, with an Amazon Prime account, if you hook it up to your Twitch account, you will get one free sub per month to give to anyone you want. And it counts just like a regular sub as far as money going to the streamer. So... Amazon has all of the money in the world right now. Might as well take some out of their pockets, give it to whoever. It could be me, it could be DeHang or Rafa or Press OK, who's also doing some streaming alongside for the tournament here, or really anyone else. Uh, you know, if you find someone that's that really paints some, uh, you know, some pretty pictures on the internet, give them five bucks, right? Like, might as well. Jeff Bezos has enough. He will survive. Um, looks like they might be re-hosting... So Waz is still in here. I, I do see DeHang now talking to McCool. And Discord getting their, their business sorted. So we should get a match starting here shortly. So while we're waiting, let, let's head back over to the bracket so you guys got something to actually kind of keep up with here. See if we've got any more results. Looks like California Love took a 2-1 to one over Weak Bodies. They'll be playing against Prevail Gaming. We'll give you a quick look at that matchup. So Prevail going to be Arabux, Davis, Pithy. California going to be Death, Pi Hero, Cali, and Sin. So that'll be a really high-powered matchup right there. I think either of, those team, either of those teams could finish top three in this tournament. I don't think anybody would be surprised. California Love, though, I think. Probably has to be considered the favorite in that matchup. But higher seed going to prevail. Winner of them going to take on Team Liquid. We will bring you that match uh, after this one. So it'll be Liquid versus Yoked coming up next right here. And then... Uh, Liquid probably, let's see, uh, versus winner, uh, you know, if you go with the favorites, according to the seeding, it would be Liquid versus Prevail, but I mean, anything can happen. We're getting to these later rounds of the winner's bracket. We're already down to the quarterfinals of the winner's bracket, so I already got this tournament moving right along. 
Already down to the top eight as far as winner's bracket's concerned. We'll take a quick look at the lower bracket. These matches, best of one at this point, so these will be moving right along with the winner's bracket. Starting round four in lower bracket, that'll be best of three. And then, of course, as we finish things off, um, we'll have a little bit of a break for whichever team makes it to winner's bracket final and wins. We'll catch up with the lower bracket and then move right back to, up to the grand final. All right, looks like we do have Team Liquid now in the match, just looking to get their opponents in here. So we'll jump over to get get you a look at the the lobby as we're waiting for everyone to jump in. So it looks like Extinction going to be, uh, of course, the, the round one match. And it looks like they're choosing Icefall. So maybe that's going to be a favorite for Team Liquid. Only a couple to choose from, of course. But we saw them choose that before. They're going to have the high seed again throughout that bracket. So might be interesting to see. I mean, they're not going to be pushed off that map at any point in this tournament unless they move down to the lower bracket. So unless someone beats them, they'll be able to start off with their strength and be playing that over and over and over and just getting more and more used to it and better at it as the day goes on. All right, we do have players in here, so there we go. McCool, Pitt, EKZ jumping in. All right, if anyone's been falling asleep at their keyboard, don't worry, we are back in action. Liquid here. Taking on equally yoked, they're calling themselves. So you got the Hang, Waz, and Rafa, of course, here on Team Liquid. In the green, you got Pit, EKZ, and McCool equally yoked. We're here on Icefall again. Um, like I was just saying, Liquid's gonna be able to choose this map we're going to start off with Extinction every round here. And they're going to be able to, to force Icefall every time if they want to. Oh, Rafa here. Down to a six ping. So Rafa gets to play from the future. Going to be a little bit of an advantage. We'll see if Equally Oath can make him pay with perhaps any uh, time travel paradoxes. If they can bait him into meeting himself or perhaps his own father. Um, unless you subscribe to the Futurama parallel uh, dimensions kind of scenario, in which case you're really just creating a new parallel dimension every time he sees himself, in, in which case really not going to end up helping them too much in the long run. But I think at the end of the day, the first 30 seconds of these rounds, whether they can get a hold of these powers, probably going to matter more uh, than trying to counter off his time travel. I'm actually kind of amazed. Six ping is probably the lowest ping I've seen to an internet server ever, honestly. <laughs> I've been on lands where you ping more than six, certainly more than three. Like, I I feel like I've pinged higher to my own loopback address than Rafa's pinged to the server.
McCool there with that jump. That's a jump that is... I think I did by accident the first time. Uh, that lift jump across from red. But that's such a key jump because you, you can get really tied up. If you're back by that red armor, you're in a corner. You really don't have any easy escape. That's a really popular place to corner people, especially in this game mode where you know a team has one one guy left and they're hiding back. They're trying to take that red. You can ambush them so quickly. All right, players are ready. Here is your countdown. Three, two, one. Then it's game time, baby. Con X5 here again with Team Liquid, this time playing against Equally Yoked. This is going to be Liquid's pick here on Icefall. They will have that benefit for being the high seed. Right off the bat, both teams splitting up a bit. You see Rafa trying to push them off of that, ooh, that shaft and that red armor. Gets the kill, takes heavy damage in the process, though. He's going to have to be careful here as he slides around to pick up that 50. Goes for more, 25 HP, and now that red armor is up. Oh, and he's kind of out of position. He might be able to get up to it. Nice job with his teammates giving him cover. He decided to rocket jump and switch to machine gun. Interesting move there, definitely a big risk, but gets in the armor, his teammates come around, come around. They maintain control and already an elimination on the board. You can see it in the top right there. Vindicator coming up and another red hot start to the beginning of this round. So power up's gonna be coming up. Rafa has it in his hand. He's got a target in front of him. That's gonna be a ghost, takes him out. He'll be on the hunt. Still finding the eliminated players though, looking for the last man standing. The last man standing there gonna be Pit, it looks like. Immaculate timing there for Team Liquid. That's gonna put the mega health in the hands of a player with the damage power up. That's gonna be so deadly, but unfortunately for Liquid, not able to get a bead on Pit, who's still staying alive. Let's move over to his perspective. There we go. So Pitt has two lives, two lives to live. Trying to just escape, trying to put some space between him. We've saw, we've seen that that uh, that mega health is already under control of Liquid. They're gonna, they should have timing on it. So expect to see a big challenge here. If Pitt's gonna try to grab it. Oh, and the drop down there. Not sure if they were going for the bait, but Pitt looked like he wanted it. Didn't have exact timing. They should have timing of it now, though. So if they can stay alive long enough for that to respawn, he will have the ability to at least um, have that perfect timing to jump on. Nice rail down below. Might try to get a kill himself. He does, taking out Rafa. Nice positioning there, and now the red armor's up. They can head from this right over to Mega if they want. They will expect to see some liquid players there. Maybe ready to, to make a stand. That said, he's pretty stacked here at 192 over 100. Pit here can try to uh, put out some damage of his own. Ooh, take some damage from a distance, and now he's got to be on the run. Only 51 HP just like that. Got sniped down instantly. It's a tough spot to be in underneath that red, trying to make something happen here. Has his teammates. Nice job with the help from his teammate. EKZ getting a double kill. Red armor might still be up. He could circle around and grab it if they're saving it for him. They may have scooped it up. So both teams likely having... Oh, we haven't Vindicator picked up, but it looks like they didn't get timing of it. So Liquid here, the big opportunity to try to put this first round away. They've had major trouble tracking down Pit though, as he's been very elusive, at times being quiet, just kind of showing off that sometimes in this game type, the best move to make is just to stand still. McCool coming behind to hang. He'll actually have a little bit of Vindicator. Now he's got the rail in his hands. Can do some damage. We're down to one life and two respectively. Oh, there's a kill with the nice rocket. Pulls it down to one frag apiece. The comeback here by equally yoked. Oh, goes up and gets taken out by Rafa. So now we're on board. We'll try to go on board with Pitt. He's the last one alive here. Able to scoop up that Meggie. He's got all kinds of heat around him in the mid air shot there. Gets the kill and round one. Going here to the green team. Nice comeback here. They were really in, in a tough spot. Pitt only had two lives left. Zero for the Ghost. He was able to be very, very elusive, and I think that was really the key there. Allowed his teammates to make those moves. They actually reestablished control of the map. They kind of lost control of Mega and Red. They were able to push Liquid off of it and really stage an impressive comeback that round. Big damage from the Blaster coming up by Pit there. Oh, they trade kills there and 3-2-2 and two, two versus 3-2-2. Two, two, so, coin toss start to this round. 
Need to hang trying to push him off. He goes down. So five lives apiece, but you can see 212 and 311. You can see at the top to keep track of those lives. Oh, Waz here getting caught out of position. McCool with a nice flank there, gonna take him down. Oh, uh, there's the first elimination. McCool going down. We will have the power up spawning soon, trying to see who's in position for it. Vanguard comes up, goes down, and another kill on top of it, and Pit ends up with it. So nice trades there, and so now to hang the last one alive with only one life to go. And a very impressive showing here. Trying to put Liquid on their heels, but what can the hang do? You see him trying to get some free damage. Doesn't see the kills coming in. Or excuse me, doesn't see the uh, the uh, machine gun coming in from behind him. They're able to get the kill. Everyone for Liquid going down. And round two. Going the other way again. So what we saw from Liquid in the first match, they were able to get these early round kills and, and go up even just one or two kills to give them that advantage. And they haven't been able to do that this game. Trades coming out, big damage to Hang and Waz getting the kills. And so that'll give them a little bit of a lead. Equally yoked though, we saw them come back last round from a bit of a frag deficit. The Hang has control of that red armor. Can they maintain it? We saw them get challenged on it last round and end up giving it up. Liquid taking no chances. All three of them rolling together, trying to get control of that mega health area. But Siphonator popping soon, so they're going to have to make a run. You do have two players left alive, down to one, so... So here we go. Pit's going to be the last one alive here for Equally Yoke. They did manage to uh, challenge that Siphonator, but Liquid's going to get it in their hands, and this is going to be a tough spot. We've seen Pit be extremely elusive before, but... He's going to have to give his, his team time to take eight frags off the board. Oh, Siphonator grabs the Mega Health. That's going to do it, and Liquid takes their first round of the matchup. The opening spawns are so important in this game type and, and knowing exactly what to do from any given spawn. Closest path to a power up, closest path to a weapon. It's much like Team Deathmatch where everyone spawns and just immediately scrambling to get resources under control. To hang there with not a great spawn was able to get a blue armor and a rocket launcher, but not going to be able to, to really challenge for red or mega until the next spawn. Two quick kills there by Liquid right off the bat. They do lose one. The hang here, you can see down to 60 HP. Has to be careful. One shot could take him out. Vindicator. Vindicator spawning. I mean, Liquid would love to challenge us, but look how low three of them. All three of them relatively low in health. You saw some armor grab. Oh, two quick kills there. Rafa now going. He goes down, so all kinds of death happening. Around that Vindicator, who ended up with it? Looks like Pit has it. Very low HP. He gets the kill though with this, with the uh, the snipe from the pincer clutch shot there, and all three players in Liquid are down to their last life for this round. That was a huge grab right there. We just saw multiple deaths, just basically baiting Liquid into trying to grab that power up. They all went down. McCool picks it up from his teammates, so both teams still have three players alive. And tense moments now. This almost becomes a wipeout game at this point. Blaster coming out. You see the pincer shots through the uh, stalactites and stalagmites. And, and there you go. The kill on Liquid. They've got one player left alive with uh, any lives. That'll be Waz. Down to 13 HP. Anything could take him out. He's got to be so careful here. Picks up the red armor, but he's going to need some health on top of that. He's got two 25 packs that'll spawn around that corner. Instead, he's going to go through mid. Maybe head over. There's a 50 armor or 50 uh, health pack that direction, but... He's going to opt. Interesting that they're leaving him by himself. Only 38 HP and he's by himself. Looking for more armor. Getting chased down. There's a big rocket on him. Egg hunt. 
And there's the kill across the way, so only one player left alive for EY as well. But there's the rocket that cut him off, takes him out with one shot, and just like that, it is map point for Equally Oak. Oh, actually, they're saying it should be best of three instead of four, or first of three instead of four. I will let the admin... Okay, looks like they're going to call it. So map one, then going to equally yoked. Apparently, we are doing first of three. Uh, luckily, the admin force is in the game, so he can confirm or deny any kind of rule questions going on. I will do a nice sly Incoming Vanguard. alt tab here while no one's paying attention. I don't know if the round count is listed on the tournament page or in Discord. Might be Discord. All right, so it looks like we're going to call it. So map one going to equally yoke, taking the first map off Liquid. Liquid, though, we've seen... What they could do in earlier rounds. We'll see if they can come back and force a tiebreaker. This will be their pick. So it looks like we're going to be playing MacGuffin on Marina. Sort of the default map. Everyone's going to be comfortable with it. Believe me, both teams should be very familiar with this map at this point. Extinction, an interesting mode. Like I say, it's relatively new, at least from the competitive scene. Okay, so we are confirmed we're doing first of three rounds for extinction. Gotcha. Game All right, players are ready. Here comes your countdown. Three, two, one. Man, it's game time, baby. Con X fire. We got map two between equally yoked and liquid. Equally yoked taking map one in that extinction on Icefall. Trying to move on and stay in the upper bracket. Team Liquid trying to force a map three that would be Wipeout. Oh, to hang with superior shafting skills right there. We've seen that from him before. We'll stick with him as he's got a full stack of health, though no armor. Everyone looking pretty weak. Actually, they're going to let Waz jump with it. So Waz has MacGuffin taking it back to their base. Looks like he's just going to go for the quick delivery still got 100 armor so he can actually defend this by himself pretty effectively there's one big shotgun blast goes down but it gives time for his teammates to come into play there's the grab and toss oh and the bait with the midair shoddy ekz here he goes down and dehang now gonna deliver it right back to base we do have the vindicator coming up in any second so here we go power up gonna go to oh nobody yet they're still fighting over the top of it rafa make it in his hands down to 10 hp he goes down and the pickup there by Pitt, so EY gonna grab that damage amplifier. He'll be on board with it in their base. Trying to take him out. Nice pincer shot with the rail. Trying to counter. So 22 quick points on the board for Liquid. It'll be first to 100. Another shot there. Ooh, another kill there. So Pitt right now on fire with that rail. Gets the delivery and a few points on the board. No real armor, though, so in these hectic sort of transition situations, it's going to be a matter of who kept timing of those power-ups. All three players going down for EY, so now Liquid going to have that MacGuffin moving. See what has, or excuse me, Waz with it in his hands to hang on the other side. Not going to bother throwing it, just going to cut off the enemy and try to defend it. One kill coming out, and this is what the armor buys you. Waz with a double kill there. One shot away from getting a third kill. He finally goes down. Now before buying time for his teammates to come over and stack up even more points on the board. McGuffin, of course, an interesting game mode in that you can have a 99 to nothing lead and technically your team would still come back. All right, McGuffin in the hands of Pitt. 
Oh, he goes down, get caught, gets caught in the mid. It's so dangerous to go towards a power up like that with a MacGuffin, because you know the enemy team's gonna be waiting for that. KZ with a nice grab, spits it right back out though, and it looks like more grabs and tosses. Rafa's gonna have it. They're gonna be following behind him. We'll stick with the hang for now. So Vindicator up in just a few seconds to hang, looking for an angle. Oh, nice patient play there, just waiting. And a double shot with the rail. He does go down, but not before out putting a ton of damage. It allows Rafa to finish him off. And I think Rafa's gonna pick up that damage amplifier. He does. He's gonna be very dangerous in mid. They Enemy do MacGuffin. give up the MacGuffin, but he'll be chasing it down Enemy MacGuffin. with that extra Enemy damage on that shaft. So the power up so key here to controlling back half of that map really allows him to soak up those points. Oh, the hiding. So that's one thing we'll, thing we'll see sometimes is uh, you can stack up points. You can stack up those coins by holding that MacGuffin. And then you sort of bank them whenever you cap it. So if the enemy team has control of your base, you might just hang on to it. And this is a perfect situation to maybe consider that Pit here, I think, is looking. You see, you can shoot through that grate. Looking to peek through his base and say, okay, I'm not going to try to deliver this until I know I have a clean path. Oh, but to hang a racism, and that's going to go down. KC grabbing that mega, so they will have timing of it. We'll see if they can keep control of that as they try to defend this base. Oh, nice rocket to rail combo, and everybody on Liquid went down. That's going to put a bunch of time on the board. So equally oaked here, trying to come back in this round. Still the first round. Upwards, almost five minutes in. Nice defense here by Equally Yoked, able to catch those Liquid players coming in one at a time in the duels. Rail shots here with the pincer gun by McCool. It just buy them more and more time and another Vindicator spawning. And this Vindicator would be absolutely critical, whether they're defending their base or if Liquid could get that MacGuffin moving and they have to try to attack it. Oh, and instead we see DeHang snagging it. No armor on board for him, so we'll have to be careful here. They're going to go ahead and just be straight up aggressive with it. He's going to attack. Goes right around that slow bubble, gets one kill. Looking for the second. That shaft just melting them down, but none of his teammates really around him. He'll be on his own. He's going to pass it forward and try to get some kills. He goes down. Nice job. So you can see they basically had cover waiting for their runner in mid. So let's go on board. Let's see. Who's going to be pushing in? McCool ooh, runs right into that shaft. He goes down. Brad's going to be defending him, trying to knock him off. Remember, every time they touch that, they're going to reset the timer. Shotgun Blast going down. He goes down to hang with the defense. He goes down. And EKZ now. If he can get a couple more seconds, going to keep his team alive. Try to get it moving. But they're going to need a couple of big kills here. At 89 to 99, it's basically a tie game at this point, though. If EY can get that MacGuffin home, they'll just have to defend for a few seconds. And this is where they can maybe catch Liquid a little bit out of position. You know Liquid's going to be rushing their base. If they can get one or two kills and deliver it, they'll be in great position to defend that base and try to come back and finish this round off. There's the delivery. Oh, Rafa comes in, gets one kill. They take him out. McCool gets the, gets the uh, railgun back on base. Going to have to hit a big shot here. Oh, he misses. That's going to give them the ability to grab it. Nice shot to take him out, but look at Liquid all over the base. You see the MacGuffin running all the way back. Uh, let's try to catch up to him. There it is. The hang is going to have it back to base. You see that 99 to 99. Whoever can defend their base for just a few seconds will take this first round. Big kill right there. They're going to have to dive in. They really don't have any time left, and I think that'll do it. So after a long round, almost seven minutes dead even between these two, Team Liquid holds on and takes the first one. Game starts in three, round two, two, one, fight. All right, so Liquid trying to force a tiebreaker mode on Wipeout. Here we're on MacGuffin. Taken map or taken round one of this map. You see the machine gun coming out. The hang gets the kill. A lot of players aren't practicing with that machine gun. 
But in a game mode like this, it can really come into play. We've already seen it come out a couple of times. And nobody really stacking up any sort of pickups early on. Teams just diving at each other. DeHang ends up with that McGuffin. He'll deliver it. We'll stay on board with Rafa trying to... So Rafa catches up to him from behind. They got two players to defend their base. They're going to be giving up control of mid while they do this. Trading uh, basically the mega and red control for their early points. Enemy McGuffin. Enemy red does McGuffin. go to DeHang, so perfect timing on that. Vindicator comes up right now. DeHang will be able to get around the corner. If he can get red with that power up, this could be a huge opportunity. And the shaft right in front of him. That was a huge pickup right there. He's going to be able to attack this base doing tons of damage. Has extra armor. 100 damage rail shot comes in. So DeHang softening up everybody. Does go down finally. Actually a double kill with the rocket launch. Excuse me, with the shotgun by EKZ. But there's the kill by Rafa, Rafa coming in. He'll pass that along and they'll be moving right along. But a lead though taken by EY going up early. We saw them with the comeback last round. Basically a tie round. Came right down to it. Let's go on board with the MacGuffin carrier. That's going to be Waz. He's just going to go ahead and drop that off in base. Oh, missing that mid-air rail. But three Liquid players there to erase him and just, again, take the lead back, stack up those points. We see Liquid favoring that over... We've seen some teams that like to drop the MacGuffin off and then immediately circle back around to mid to try to, uh, you know, control the map on that side. Here we're seeing Liquid MacGuffin. dropping one or two back to defend every time, every time they deliver it. And of course, they're also going to have time in these power-ups, so not going to be any surprise whenever those power-ups do spawn. Pit here doing what we've kind of seen before, stacking up points, right? Saving those coins. Going to let his teammates take a peek at their base, maybe try to clear things out. And this could be his opportunity. If Liquid is all over their base, he can drop back and maybe try to get timing on the red armor, maybe try to sneak in a mega health. Oh, he goes down from behind. Waz with the great flank pushes up from behind. Takes him down with a shoddy, and that'll be a big lead now for Liquid. Oh, another big kill there by Waz. Not just getting the kill, but not taking damage. So we do have a power-up spawning, but meanwhile, while all of that's going on, tons of points getting on the board, up to a 40-point lead. We do have Vindicator grab. We see him on the run. He goes down. We'll see Pit here trying to take him out and grab it right back. He goes down. Nice shoddy play there. We'll go on board. Attack trying to catch up with Rafa. There we go. So Rafa has the armor plus the damage power. It's going to be very, very scary to turn around that corner and run into. And there's another quick kill. Basically instant death when you have that damage amplified shaft. See him just diving in the mid, chasing people down. Power-up's over, but he's not done doing damage. And once again, a delivery by Liquid, and they're trying to put this one away. So nice job there by Equally Oak, able to get in there, get the MacGuffin moving. Oh, rail after rail coming in. Pit's going to be on the run. He's not going to outrun them, but a nice ambush. Rafa, though, unfortunately for him, had armor, cuts him off, takes him down. Everybody goes down. The delivery comes from Rafa, and uh, we might see the end of the round here unless, unless the green team here can push in and get that MacGuffin moving. Last couple seconds, and here we go. Overtime bar up. All they have to do is get maybe one more kill, and they do, and they keep him off it, and there it is, Team Liquid. Taking map two, and they're going to force a tiebreaker, which will be on Wipeout. And we'll stand by to find out what map that'll be on. Take a quick look at the scoreboard while we're waiting for them to figure that out. All right, looks like we're going to be not on Sunken because we're not playing McGuffin again. We're going to be playing Wipeout. And I believe Equally Yoked will get to choose the map.
So already, pretty early on this tournament, we're already seeing a tiebreaker map. Equally yoked, giving Liquid all they can handle here. I'm not going to lie, I, I didn't have equally yoked pegged as like a top three finisher in this tournament. You know, maybe kind of a dark horse to, to kind of do well. Uh, but so far, they look pretty good here. Looks like Furnace will be our map pick, so we've got Wipeout on Furnace. Tiebreaker coming up right now. Alright, Furnace gonna be much like we saw in MacGuffin, gonna be sort of the default map, at least from playing in ranked modes. I feel like this is what everyone likes to pick. It's very easy to communicate on. I mean, you've got the colored names for the rooms, so even someone who's relatively new um, can find their way around this map, at the very least call out. Uh, I know when I was first playing with Flames, the first time I was playing Diabolical, I was like, I, I don't know where I am, it's the green room. They're like, okay, cool, we'll be there in a second, right? You don't even really have to know the map to give decent call outs, so. I think this is a great map for, for newer players to kind of get used to. So here we go, it'll come down to list. Winner of this will move on in that upper bracket. Loser will, of course, go down to the lower bracket. players are ready here comes your countdown three two one and it's game time baby con x5 jumping into the last map between these two winner takes all here and wipe out you can see the rosters you can see the round limit first team to four will move on in the upper bracket loser will have to fight their way through the lower bracket facing elimination the whole time really interesting to see what happens here this game mode probably more closely resembles extinction than say mcguffin um, Extinction, of course, the game mode that the green team here, equally yoked, was able to take from Liquid to open up this match. But really, both of these games have been so even that anything can happen here. There's a couple of kills on the board. You can see two to one. Again, that score there will be your frag count for the round. So you get an idea of, of kind of what the accumulating and increasing respawn timers will look like. EKZ with a couple nice pincer shots right there just right over the ledge pixel perfect a quick egg hunt scenario it means there's one player left alive but they're going to come right back with the counter attack so four to three still anyone's game here and you're going to find these situations now towards the middle of these rounds these fast respawns can be a bit of a trap where teams may think they have an opportunity to finish off the round and try to be aggressive end up running into the other team looks like everyone on liquid Rushing into the blue room, catching equally yoked, stuck in the corner. Tons of damage, couple of kills coming out. A big opportunity here to take out another player. And we've got Egg Hunt versus Egg Hunt. Round two. And EKZ comes up with the win. They were down a one on one, gets the big rocket, takes the round. And equally yoked takes the early lead. Fight. Oh, big rocket by EKZ. Pit three right now, leading the game in damage. We'll stay on board with him. Nice pincer shot jumping through uh, through the top area right over that ledge. I like the rocket jump up, up top. Unfortunately, he dove right into his shaft. Two quick kills for Liquid. They're going to have an early advantage in this round. And there's another kill and almost an end of the round. He was technically... The last egg alive for a split second there. You just you saw that glow for him. Oh, that was a scary moment. You don't want to cough one up like that. I mean, it's a three to zero lead for Liquid, but this you can definitely come back from with some quick kills. Liquid has used a lot of their heals already. EKZ gets one kill there. Another kill there by EKZ. So evening it back out. Still four to two. Oh, 
Oh, three versus one. So Rafa looked like he was in a one-on-one -on -one scenario, but now they've got McCool on the run. He gets backed up into a corner. He goes down. And your teammates responding to you is so important in this game type in particular. We saw that right there. Looked like Rafa had a one-on-one -on -one fight that he might lose with that shaft. And then all of a sudden, both teammates popped around that corner and just erased the opponent. If you're fighting 1v1 and Wipeout, you're, you're kind of losing, just philosophically. So anytime you can see there's 3v2, 2v1 scenarios, it's going to be huge. Positioning and teamwork is so much more important than just flat out out aiming whenever you can get organized like that. To hang with a dangerous heal down low. He's got the shaft on him. He's going to have to run away. Pit takes him out. We'll see. That's two quick kills. So complete reversal of the last round. Liquid going to have an early deficit here. But with Rafa up top, he's going to pull back within one frag difference. Egg hunt. And another kill to even things back out. Liquid now just running around as a big murder ball, trying to catch individual green players out in the open. There's a couple of them down low. You can see them. They may have been healing down low. Nice peak shot by Rafa, catching them right before the teleport. Ooh, the Rockets pouncing the pool around. E ball coming out too. It looked like he had a good angle and just got completely disrupted there. EKZ is going to heal up top. Give you a quick look at the scoreboard. Teams are uh, kind of waiting for the respawns. Oh, nice. Two quick snipes in a row. Three in a row here. See him with the escape. EKZ making them pay. Oh, he's got Shaft coming around him. It manages it to escape. So a couple of nice escapes here by EKZ. He was in precarious positioning. If you keep an eye at the top area ooh, of the HUD, you can see the uh, relative health. You can see how that kind of cycles around. We've got dead even 4v4 counts between the two teams on frags. But Liquid's going to have a bit of a life deficit here. One goes down. Another goes down. 15 seconds for the egg hunt. This could be an actual round-ending situation. They've got 10 seconds left. Raz going to be on the run. He sees healing himself with the pincer shot there but he's gonna need a big rocket shot hits one can't hit the other in time round two going back it's equally yoked remember this is first to four so still plenty of time for liquid to come back Fight. equally yoked taking a big lead and nice 200 damage with the early grenades just daring them to push that top area and the double double snipe with the railgun there hits are coming through hitting both players Big early damage lead here by Equally Yoked. Ooh, Rockets up top. Look at that weapon switch, the quick weapon switch to machine gun to open that door and switch back. Something everyone's going to have to get used to. So EKZ healing. You see he's got a teammate pit up top. Only frag of this round, so a pretty slow start to this round. One frag apiece after a minute. Oh, big rockets there. Taking out Waz. Waz unfortunately got trapped in the corner. EKZ, though, here doesn't look like he has a heal bubble. He's going to be looking for heals from teammates. Trying to get free damage on the board. He goes down. It looks like right back. Yep, even back up three to three. Everyone's gone down. Oh, the aggressive play catches them up there by that shoot area. Are they going to come back up top? They do, and Waz is waiting for him. Gets a rocket and two rails in a row. Gets the kill. Finishes off the round. And we are even right back again. That was a really quick, actually, finish to that round. So it was a slow beginning to it. They caught them out up by that shoot. Took all three of them out instantly. They had, I think, like 15-second respawn times left for both of them. That is the danger whenever you group up uh, all three players together in this game mode. We've seen Liquid pounce like that a couple of times already in this tournament. Oh, and Waz with a nice shot. We've seen a couple of nice shots. Oh, and already an egg hunt. They're not going to get to him in time. Again, very, very fast respawn times. But look at that lead. Three to nothing already. Frag advantage for Liquid. I mean, this is the tiebreaker map, so first team to four will move on. Oh, 
Oh, the rocket's up top just bouncing right around him. Waz had a great idea there. He's going to be facing down some blaster, though. We'll move on on board with... Uh, let's, let's go on board with Pit. He's got a little bit of health here. Trying to give chase. You see them backing up into that orange booster room. Orange, I should say, a jump pads room. Oh, the fall away, though. Pit gets cut off. And just like that, Liquid again pouncing. Knowing that they had the, the, uh, the lead with the frags and therefore the advantage with the respawn timers. So early kills, Liquid again takes the lead. Looks like there was some question about what round we're playing to. Looks like we're playing first to four. Yep, Force gonna go ahead and confirm that he is the admin, so his word will be final. Liquid gonna heal up top, double bubble. Only got a one frag lead, and they're gonna be using their, their healing resources here to get back up, so it's a smart play. A lot of teams will get really antsy when they get a couple kills early on, and they'll try to be too aggressive, and they'll give those kills up without even being able to use their, their healing bubbles. Anytime you die without using healing, that is a lost resource. Oh, the nice shot. You saw him opening up the door with that machine gun. That is brilliant teamwork right there. That is all communication. Open up the doors, switch to the rail, took him out, and a quick, quick end to that match. So Liquid comes back after dropping the first map, after finding themselves down Facing some adversity early on here, so equally yoked there, giving them all they could handle. Give you a quick look at the brackets. I think we've got the next team ready to jump in here. It looks like we said Prevail. Oops, let me get to the bracket. I'll refresh that. Prevail Gaming looks like they won over California Love. So the uh, the high seed going with it. So, all right, Prevail Gaming going to stick with us. They're going to take on Team Liquid. We just saw them uh, finishing off against equally yoked. We'll wait for that to get reported. And we are already at our winner's bracket semifinal. Let's take a quick look at the lower bracket while we're here. You can see teams already moving right along. Um, said it before, lower bracket's going to be best of one until we get to round four. So they should be caught right up to us once we finish this one off. But a couple more matches here in the upper bracket. We'll finish off lower bracket and then bring us up to our grand final. I see Arabux dropped a message in chat here letting us know that they are ready to go. So they'll just be waiting for that key to get passed along. EKZ wanted everyone to know that he loves us all, so. For anyone who might be going through any adversity in life right now, just remember, EKZ loves you. All right, looks like we did get that reported. So bracket updated. We'll take a quick look at that matchup. Prevail jumping in here. So Liquid versus Prevail. Arabux Davis Pithy versus the Hang Rafa Waz. Of course, we're sticking with Liquid right now. Seen them come back from some adversity. I mean, that last match, maybe the closest Oxide. challenge we've seen from them, certainly today. Oxide. There's the sound effect. <laughs> Thanks, Dimco. Appreciate it, man. Dimco, did you just buy some subs? Like, like, does does Twitch have some sort of uh, like does Twitch have some sort of a uh, deal going on? I think mean, they're like, I saw something about like September, and I don't know. They do all sorts of promotions, so. I lose track. Looks like Prevail already in the server, so we're going to jump in and be ready to go.
So Liquid gonna stick as Team 1. They're gonna be purple. Of course, they are hosting, so we will uh, have some continuity there. Prevail gonna come in being green. Of course, Team Prevail being one of our sponsors for this tournament, so shout out to them. Oh, interesting. All right, players are ready. Here comes your countdown. Three, two, one. And it's game time, baby. Con X5 bringing you Team Liquid versus Team Prevail. We are already already moving right along. Later stages of our winner's bracket. We've got Oxide now. So interesting to see Liquid deciding after losing their, losing their last match on Extinction. They're going to change up maps here. See if that does any better for them. Early on, some trades back and forth. Prevail with an early lead. They're going to be in position for that red. Takes a little bit of damage. Ooh, tough spot to be in. Oh, he switches to the shotgun and gets him just in time. I was about to say, close range rail duels in this map in particular. Not, not easy to, uh, to be productive with, we'll say. But a nice shot there on Dehang. Takes him out. Prevail finding themselves in good position. Oh, but that Vindicator is coming up soon. Try to get on board with someone who's in position. Rafa goes down. Who's going to pick it up? Davis is in position. It's right in the middle of everyone. It looks like Waz ended up grabbing it. We'll try to catch him. There it is. Only 56 HP, but he gets away with it. Heading over to that red. Takes out 50. He'll be right on it. And looking to uh, perhaps just zone them out at this point. Red does go to him. He has one life left. Remember, we do have two players on purple taken out. Give you a quick look at what it looks like on the scoreboard. Ooh, one player left alive for Liquid. That'll be, uh, let's go on board. There it is, Rafa. He does have two lives. He has a little bit of uh, room for error. Oh, but he goes down from behind, so. Rafa, now last life for Liquid in round one here. He will have that mega health. He sees them, ooh, coming at him from the shaft. He's gonna be on the run. I'm kind of surprised he even peeked there, to be honest. Loses all of that mega health advantage, but he will have a, a blue armor in front of him. Smart move to go pick that up. And now they've got them down. One player left alive. You can see Davis over there. Davis does have two lives, however. So, oh, big kill there. Double kill there by Rafa. Uh, sorry, Miss Book. Airbucks laughed last one alive for Prevail. But two kills on the Ghost. Rafa just protecting himself. Down to 18 HP. He'll be on the run. Looking for armor. Looking for health. Anything that can help him stay alive. Teammates calling out red. He goes to get it. That'll be critical. Picks up the 25 armor and now just trying to escape. They're calling out enemy players. And Rafa from, from on the brink of death now to 100 over 83 looking much, much better. Mega health might be up soon. Looks like he's... Oh, they're heading around to try to get that kill. He's going to go after him. One rail comes out. Will he chase him down? He's going for it. Rafa going for the kill. Oh, he gets sandwiched. Dangerous play. I was about to say it was it was kind of a dangerous, aggressive move, but he tried to get the shot in when he could. He said first round goes to Team Prevail. So again, you see uh, Team Liquid losing player first a couple of kills coming in on the board back and forth it's already uh tons of damage coming out this is a very aggressive start to this round not even 30 seconds in and already what, five six kills on the board between the two teams so really really chaotic already an elimination you can see whoever's green rafa already eliminated however that will allow him to be aggressive and that's the interesting thing about this game mode is depending on how these teams play you might actually have people just Basically ignore the amount of lives for a given player and just tell them to be blindly aggressive the whole time. Vanguard. Vanguard comes up soon. DeHang's in position a little bit early. We have teammates to give him support. Oh, he goes down. He gets picked up and he goes down. Rafa ends up with it. Unfortunately for them, Rafa, not a player that has any lives remaining. So a defensive power up not going to be great, but it will allow him to be hyper aggressive. He has 130 armor. He has 98 HP and he can just dive at whoever he sees. There's one kill and there is the round win. Able to single him out, take him out, and tie up the rounds. Game starts in three, round three, two, 
All right, we'll stick with Rafa at the beginning here. We saw a crazy hectic opening uh, opening moment of the last round. I mean, we think we saw, what, seven kills in the first 25 seconds? Surprised to see that much aggression. Teams basically just decimated each other. This time, much slower start, 25 seconds in, only one kill. Prevail gonna take the advantage there. Nice use of the smoke by Rafa to avoid, or at least make it much harder for them to rail him going for that pickup. Nice rocket there. Rafa with a prediction. That's probably a great call by his teammates. He's going to give up that health. He has a little bit of armor for, his, for himself. And pretty much dead even so far a minute into this round. So interesting. They're giving Rafa, who has three lives, going to give him that armor. It's completely stacked at this point. Oh, no challenge, it looks like, on that pickup. So Arabux here, able to grab that uh, that defensive power-up. He'll be able to stay alive now. Still three lives on board for him. Oh, nice job turning that corner, taking out to hang. And every time he gets a hit, that's going to heal him. Every time he just stays alive, that's a benefit to them. So health going to be counting down again, but not before getting up to about 150. Oh, they take the lead for a second, then he goes down. So we've got two lives apiece for each team. Rafa down to 60 over 79, but this red arm will be huge if he can grab it. And things getting a little bit messy after a couple minutes into this round. Teams losing uh, control of some of the power-ups. We'll see if that comes into play. Rafa grabs red. They're going to head straight over to Mega. Don't know if they have time on it or if they're just checking it out. Ooh, Rocket's coming out. It looks like Prevail has an angle. You see the machine gun coming out, but they may get that red. And it looks like they did, so... Still a little bit extra health and armor on Rafa, just trying to stay alive. I'm actually a little surprised they didn't decide to send Rafa out to be aggressive for a split second there. But, anyway, he survives that. Just trying to buy time for his teammates. He goes down to a rail, so he'll be the last one alive. Rafa, again, going to respawn. Now he has to get stacked back up. He's looking for some armor. Oh, and the teammate call is so important right now. He ducks away, but not before eating a rail. And that Siphonator, oh, would be huge, but he can't get hold of it. It's another round here for Prevail, going up two to one. All right, very curious to see the opening moments of this one. We've seen rounds where they both get hyper-aggressive, turns into basically just a bloody mosh pit. Then we saw last round where teams kind of took their time a little bit, split up, big rockets here on Vaz early on, but he dives through one, down to 25 HP. Manages to get the kill, and of course picks up that health level off the kill. Down to 11 HP, playing with fire right now, but he man manages to get away, finally backs up. I like that move, though, of giving that armor to his teammate when he's low on health. Still only one kill on Liquid, two kills on Prevail. Waz has somehow stayed alive, up to 61 HP. Oh, anything could take him out. There's the rocket, he goes down. Vindicator spawns soon. We've got a couple of players for Prevail in position. Three players in position. Now, can they hold that high ground? Looks like they're gonna grab it, get the kill immediately on Waz. We've got another player down low. Trading kills there, but they get the kill into Hang. Oh, and another looking player dives in. It's Rafa. Rafa gets the kill, and I think Rafa able to take that power up. Dangerous play, but he does get it back, and he'll have mega health. So with a little bit of time left on that power up, he can be super aggressive here if he wants to. There's one kill. He's got targets left and right. He's going to go left. Tries to cut him off at red. There's another kill, and they've got one player left with one life. It'll be Arabux here on the run. And what a quick turnaround that was in that power-up grab. Rafa was able to take the big risk with that rail shot. Got the kill, took it back. So what they're opting to do here, Airbook's basically running around by himself. They're not assigning anyone to cover him like it's uh, you know, kind of like a flag standoff to capture the flag. 
going to be on his own to try to survive, try to be sneaky. They do have red armor for him, so smart play. He's going to be completely stacked right now, so both of his teammates can be hyper-aggressive if they want. I mean, they've got to get three kills now. You see it's Rafa trying to stay alive. Oh, they circle around, get behind him. But nice job by Prevail of teaming up with them, taking them out, and that armor really comes in handy. His Arabux somehow stays alive. Meanwhile, Rafa did lose a life, so two to one. Oh, Airbuck's trying to fight over that red armor. He knows there's someone back there. He's going to go for it. Oh, he does. Interesting. So Liquid actually either backed off or got killed off screen. And that was a big grab. That red armor could be huge. Trying to stay alive. Giving his teammates an opportunity. Rafa goes down, so it's one-on-one -on -one now. This actually could have flipped to a to an, ad, uh, an advantage for Prevail as they've got a little bit of extra armor on their last person standing alive. And this Vindicator could be the, could be the round. Airbook's in position. It's going to spawn in just a couple more seconds. They're going to give it to Davis. He does grab it. We'll go on board with him. Can he track down Rafa and take him out? There's one kill. Going to defend his carrier. There's some armor for Davis. Looking for a target. Has a beat on him. There's one shot. There's another shot. And, and it looks like there it goes. Prevail coming up big. And another extinction victory. Liquid, we saw them in this position last round. though. They, they gave up the extinction mount, they're able to come back with Wipeout and MacGuffin and take those to take the victory. The Prevail looking awfully good here in the first map on extinction. All right, so we got another good one here. How's everyone doing in chat? Don't forget to hydrate. I think last time I cast it, it was probably like 107 degrees here. Now I think it's in the 80s. So it's actually a much different scenario for me. I'm, I'm even wearing pants this time. I don't have my webcam plugged in, but, uh, but trust me, I'm wearing pants. So because Prevail won that first map, this was their, uh, it was a Liquid's choice now for game type. They chose MacGuffin map choice, then I believe went to Prevail. Oh no, both picks. Okay, so sorry. This, the uh, mode and map were Liquid's pick. So favoring MacGuffin, we will see it on Marina. What's up, DC? <clears throat> That's actually something I'll work on soon, too. I need to update my, uh, my sub emotes. I like the fists. I think I might update a couple of the other ones, maybe change them out. All right, players are ready. Here is your countdown. Three, two, one. And it's game time, baby. Con X5 bringing you Liquid versus Prevail. Map two, we just saw Prevail taking Extinction three to one in map one. Liquid has been here before. Remember, we saw that last match. We were down that first game type, that first map. They came back to win two in a row. This is their game mode and map pick. See what they can make happen here. Ooh, big shots coming out early on by Arabux. That's going to give MacGuffin to Davis. He'll be on the run, heading straight for his base. Seeing if he can outrun Liquid there. I think he's going to do that and get the plant right before they get there. So a few early points on the board for them now. We do have that uh, that second round of pickups coming up with the Mega Health and the Red Armor and all that. I'd be curious to see who picked those up and gets themselves in position for this Vindicator because you can give up early points going on the board. You know, giving up about a 25-point lead. Certainly not desirable, but if you could take control of the map and counterattack with it. And Waz, now you see 
pretty stacked up. 100 armor, has that power up in his hands. Surprise, he's going in with the shotgun. He actually has... He has the shaft as well, I think we saw him pick up. So he'll be in here with shoddy. Two quick kills, though. Apparently making the right choice. Oh, to hang body blocks him. Not going to make a huge difference, but that's something you see here. You don't just want to bunch up like that in this particular game. But you can definitely body block your teammates. Nice job getting those kills. And you just saw a huge sweep of kills on the board there. 13 kills to 9 by Liquid overall. Obviously, this is an objective-based game mode, but... Just a, a wave of kills. I don't think Prevail's gotten a kill in the last probably 15 seconds there. You just saw like 9, 10 kills in a row, and that's going to put a ton of time on the board for Liquid stacking up those points. What's up, McCool? Enemy McGuffin. Enemy McGuffin. Yep, this is uh, my own creation for the spec HUD. Uh, I personally play purple and green, so I've left that. For stream purposes, we could do something like red and blue or yellow and blue or whatever the defaults are um, at some point or another, perhaps. But I find I find that these just give us good contrast. So meanwhile, you see that MacGuffin going back and forth, back up to 37 to 48. Prevail fighting their way back into it. Enemy MacGuffin. MacGuffin going to be on the move again. We'll see Arabux here. Trying to see who's going to be in position. Um, doesn't look like anybody's got any major stacks going on as far as armor is concerned. So Davis going to be sitting here looking for the kill. Going to grab it now. I imagine they'll head straight down to this Vindicator. This Vindicator is spawning three seconds, so they need to get there right now. If they give this one up, this could be a problem. Liquid does manage to get it. Who's got the Vindicator? Looks like it's Waz. He's got the Vindicator and the MacGuffin. I imagine he'll just go plant this at home as quickly as possible. Defend your base. And that triple damage Shoddy Blast instant kill. Gets another one and another. Waz just erasing them right now. You see him going after the spawn kills. Getting another kill and another one. Waz right now on a rampage. I think he's got, what, six kills in a row now? Has completely wiped Prevail single-handedly. That was a huge series of kills right there. Puts them up to 99. This will basically be round point right here. They've got 99 on the board. They're just trying to take that overtime. If they can keep them off it, and they can't, they have to back up. So McGuffin moving. And this is where Prevail has an opportunity to try to take back control. Oh, going down. Nice job with the teamwork. Rap is going to get this back to base. And just a couple seconds left. And this is where Prevail gets desperate. They have to come in. They have to sweep out the base. They have to get that MacGuffin moving. I think they're going to run out of time. There's nobody in position. Nice pushback by the, by the shaft. And they get there just in time to keep the overtime going. But who's going to be alive? Not going to get there. So 100 to 37. Actually a pretty convincing round take here by Liquid for round one. Game starts in three, round two, two, one. early rounds here. I haven't seen any super, super specific strategies amongst teams in these early rounds. It seems like they're kind of splitting up. You want to get the first two red armors. Sometimes, uh, some teams will even give up the first MacGuffin spawn in order to grab that second red spawn. But right now, Liquid is dominating mid. You see Rafa doing just that, grabbing that second red, then grabbing MacGuffin so he can get a clean run back to base. His teammates kind of just clearing out that mid area, not even touching. Kind of surprised not to see people grab the MacGuffin and throw it towards red if they have a teammate waiting there, but timing worked out perfectly for them there, so easy grab, easy, I guess, capture, if you will, plant back at base. And early lead again for Liquid, but again, this Vindicator, like we were saying in chat, super, super critical to control. Oh, Rafa throwing the slow bubble right on the power up. Going to get one kill. Prevail going to send another player there. He goes down. And just as that bubble ends, Rafa going to grab that. Be perfectly in position to take this on the defense. And unfortunately for Prevail, gave up the power up and still didn't get that MacGuffin moving. So already a third of the way towards ending this one is Liquid. Give you a quick look at the scoreboard. And also see round limits too. So this is map point for Liquid already. Attack their base. All right, 
so we see the defense right now going to be huge for Liquid. They do finally get this MacGuffin moving, but not before getting two-thirds of the way there. So two minutes in, already a 65 to nothing lead, but of course, uh, again, with MacGuffin, anyone can come back. As, until the round's over, you really can't can't relax. The airbook's up top there, trying to get an angle. Oh, and he survives the big rocket. Nice kill on Waz, but Airbus right there has got to be pretty disappointed that he got that much damage on the, on the carry and couldn't take him out. So here we go. This is going to be the final, the final push here. 75 on the board. Got Prevail in position to perhaps get this moving right into the slow bubble. Probably going to throw this one to a teammate. There it is. Nice grab and toss right there. I think they're going to actually throw it right back to Liquid, but... The big grab right there. Big scrum in mid. It gets thrown again, and we're trying to keep up with it. DeHang's going to have it in his hands. There's the plant. Um, a actually, DeHang <laughs> running to the wrong base. Um, so, bold strategy there. He's going to go ahead and throw it right back towards his base. Try to get the kill. We do have Vindicator spawning soon. Oh, he goes down with it. So, Vindicator going to be... Up for grabs, who's gonna end up with it? Looks like Airbook's gonna have it. Only four HP though, so he has to be careful. A couple kills coming out. They ooh, they don't have the MacGuffin though, and they don't have much time to lose. So if this MacGuffin gets planted, Waz has it in his hands. This will be almost the end of the map right now. So they're gonna plant this with a little bit of time left. Only about 10 seconds to go though. So Prevail has to get in there. Unfortunately, they're gonna be jumping in versus a Vindicator, and that might be it. There it goes, Liquid. Again, use, making great use of the power-ups. Holding them off their base, and two pretty convincing victories uh, with those two rounds here in MacGuffin. So final game type will be Wipeout. It's going to be Prevail's map pick, though. We'll get that uh, that music restarted in the background. Don't want you to hear my cat snoring or anything behind me. But yeah, I agree. Uh, the, the Vindicator in 3v3 is, is pretty brutal because you can just wipe the other team constantly. Um, I'm not sure if I necessarily would prefer to see a random power-up in, um, in MacGuffin. Like if you see like a, the defensive power-ups just randomly kind of rotate like you do an extinction or something. Because a defensive power up in, in a game mode like that is kind of weird because the only way to really make use of it, I guess you could defend your base with a <laughs> nice midair rocket by Waz. You always hit the, you always hit the uh, midair rockets in practice, right? All right, players, you're ready. Here comes your countdown. Three, two, one. And it's game time, baby. Con X5. We've got us another map three tiebreaker. Liquid versus Prevail this time. Wipeout will decide it. And it goes on to the semifinals of this top bracket. Loser will head down to the lower bracket. You can see we're on Wellspring playing first of four rounds. Typical start to the round here. Both teams trying to take the top area. Oh, risky play there by Rafa. Throwing down the bubbles so you could see them right around the corners. They're going to push in. Kills coming in back and forth. A full wipe there by Prevail. And a four-kill win of round one. And that is exactly how they wanted to start this one. Fight. And the aggression right now. So Liquid this time getting the best of it. Staying up top. They could get a quick win themselves. Do a split second away. The respawn timers are so quick in the first 10, 20 seconds of these matches. It's it's very, very difficult to get a win that quickly. We've almost saw two already. Oh, big damage there by DeHang. Just following them all the way down across that arc with that shaft. Three to two frags. Again, you see that score on the left there. That basically just means uh, how many kills they've gotten in that round. So you can see an early... Last man there for DeHang, but he's just going to hide, let his teammates respawn. Nobody. So you see some healing going on for Prevail. You see them uh, off in the corner there healing. None of them have any armor, though, so a bit of an advantage in the armor stack for Liquid. 
We're all gonna have to be careful. You don't want to group up like that. They both took damage from that rocket. And Prevail hiding up top again. I mean, you can see they're taking sort of the classic approach, just wanting to hold that top uh, kind of dojo area. Oh, the ambush with the rocket does damage to himself, but gets the kill. Looks like they're being flanked, but they're all low health right now. Prevail has to be careful. They could all go down at the same time. Instead, they get the, they get the last man standing here. He gets the last man standing, so one-on-one -on -one right now. For the round, they've got five more seconds. It doesn't look like... It's going to be in any hurry to try to take this one-on-one. -on -one. So they're just going to wait for their teammates to respawn. It's actually a smart play by Prevail because they're going to have three on two for about 23 seconds here. So Prevail, turtling up, daring Liquid to try to track them down. But they have to be careful. This is exactly what Liquid did in, in round one, and they got pounced on, taken down instantly. Ooh, looking for that Twitch flick shot. Not going to happen. Rafa gets a pick on Davis, so it'll be 3v2 for a good amount of time now. Got about 33 seconds left. We'll see what's going on with the hang up top. Trying to track them down. They do catch them. They're both in the courtyard. One big rail. I think he actually was aiming for the other player, but got the hit. And there's Egg Hunt time. Pity's going to be by himself for 20 more seconds. It's going to be very difficult. 2v1. Nice rocket to escape, but he's... Oh, he bounces into the rocks and still takes a rail for his trouble. Nice attempt to escape, but he goes down, and we are tied back up 1-1. One one. Uh, you can hit the exclamation point bracket command in chat to get the brackets. Nice sneaky play there by DeHen. Gets right behind everyone. Actually doesn't get a ton of rocket damage. Down to 60 HP. He's going to have to sit back and try to rally. Does just that. Two big shots. And another one. Three in a row by DeHang. Four in a row to hang. Last man standing. we got one-on-one. -on -one. Opponent in the water. And he goes down, but not before everybody respawns. So a crazy, hectic, just mad chaos around the high water area there. Neither team really taking top, uh, top dojo, if you will. Both teams going to that top of that water area. Oh, Arabuck's in the tough spot here. Gets one kill with the rocket. It's going to be down to 4 HP. Trying to rocket jump back up and just stay alive and gets another kill. We've got another one-on-one -on -one situation for seven seconds to hang. Going to opt to run away, but there's going to be a slight advantage. Oh, two big rockets, so might get him a kill here. Davis goes down. That was a bit of a mistake. Now they've got one teammate left alive. It's going to be 2v1. Pippi trying to get, a, get away. One on one. If he can get the rocket damage out, he can survive. No longer has Siphonator down to one health. He goes down. And another one, this time for Arabux. If he can just survive for five seconds, so he can at least make it 3v2. You see the uh, two frag lead there by Liquid. That's going to be what informs those difference in the uh, in the spawn timers. Big damage back and forth. Both players weak. Arabux is going to heal in place. Very, very dangerous move there. They're going to know exactly where he is. They do get the egg hunt, but. Where is he running? The hang's gonna be here for 30 seconds, has to stay alive. And they're gonna they're gonna have a three on one for about 25 seconds. So I think Prevail probably should try to heal up here if they can and then go on the aggressive. Oh, they dive right in front of him. This is gonna be a one-on-one, -on -one, which is not what they want against the Siphonator. There's an easy kill there for the hang. They're gonna track him down, but still at 150 health. Double teaming him there and finally goes down with the double shaft. So round two, going back to Prevail. He's trading back and forth. Remember, this is a best of three, and this is the tiebreaker map. So first team to four here, we'll move on. Oh, we're seeing the ambush right through that high water again. 3-1, 3-2 on the frag counts. Mad just chaos happening around. The bubble's coming out. The smoke coming out. The heal's coming out. And already a round win. Somehow Liquid fought their way through that just massive amount of chaos and destruction. Came up with a win. That was one of the fastest rounds we've seen all day. Now these teams are not wasting any time anymore. Going right at each other already. Down to one player, so Liquid. Ace of their own medicine. Down to one player in the opening seconds. Is that two to nothing? Yeah, two frags to nothing now. 
Frag lead for Prevail. They do trade a little bit there. There's going to be a couple more players going down Prevail. If they're not careful, they got one player left alive. One more shot could take him out. Oh, just barely survives long enough to extend the round. We're tied up three frags apiece. Liquid going to be healing here, but no armor going to be under their belt. So it's still a little bit of a stack lead here for Prevail going into the second, I guess, section of this round, if you will. Oh, nice. Kills there coming out back and forth. We're gonna have one player left alive, and Davis has got a good amount of damage output here. If he can get some rockets, he can keep himself alive one on one. He's got the shaft versus shaft. He's got about 10 seconds left to go. This could be the round, and there it is. Davis bounces right over that rocket, keeps his shaft trained on him, and it is now match point for prevail. Fight. So, this is all the pressure on Liquid now, trying to stay alive. Playing much more defensively this time. Looking for the free damage. Over 100 damage from that rocket. Leave it to Rafa to shoot. Over 100% accuracy with rocket and rail this round. Oh, wow. 28 second round. Liquid comes back with a vengeance. And you saw that from Rafa. Over 100% damage with rocket. Double shot with rail. Basically being two players in one right there. That's how you went around in 28 seconds. Very, very rare, but... Smart play there by Liquid, and here we go. Match point. It all comes down to this round. And interestingly, they're going to split up. Rafa goes on his own again, catching people in the smoke. Nice escape, but they do shoot him down, so early kill. Kill prevail. They took a good amount of damage, though. See if Liquid can counterattack. We see one-to-one -one on the frag so far. Double heal, double heal here in that cellar stairs area. And both teams have actually slowed down quite a bit. They're being very careful. They're looking for that ambush. And you can see the heals going on by Prevail in that back porch area. I think they know they're there. They're dropping grenades around. They're maybe going to rocket jump up. You see the split by Prevail. I like that move. They split up instead of staying grouped up. Each one kind of took an entrance to look for a flanker. They were able to isolate people, get some kills. And we are now at a three on two advantage. Make it two on two now, even up. Oh, dangerous jump pad, but Waz gets the kill. So Waz with a double kill there. He's going to stay alive with that double heal now. I couldn't see how low he was. You can see all the way back up. And we're going to have three on three, a slight advantage here on the respawn timers for Liquid. Liquid going to play the, the distance game a little bit more this round. Waz going to take a little bit of damage. Would be surprised if he doesn't heal here. He's going to just hide in a corner. Nice hiding spot. He may have already healed. There he goes. The hand going to throw him a heal bubble. And they're just going to try to stay alive and try to wait. You can see the uh, scoreboard right there. A slight frag advantage lead. That means they're going to have a slight advantage in these respawns. 3v2 for about 15 more seconds, and this is where Prevail can really do some damage. They don't have to try to end the round right here, but if they can get them weak, get them in a little bit of a life. Oh, and there you go, getting one kill on the board. That's going to throw off those timers. Now it's going to be 2v3 again for about 10, 12 seconds. And Prevail can stay aggressive here, just keep kind of churning out the damage. Again, they don't have to win the round now. They can just kind of whittle their way down. They can build a three or four frag lead. It'll be a huge respawn advantage. There's another kill right there in 3v2 again for 15 seconds. Oh, the falling snipe doesn't go through. We're going to have to be careful of the chase. So 2v1 now for about three seconds. And this is a dangerous spot here. Prevail, their players are pretty weak. In fact, you can see over there, Airbook's down to 60 HP. So it's technically 2v2. But there's going to be a big advantage on the uh, on the armor stack for Liquid here. I think they know that. You can see Arabux being very defensive. And we haven't seen anyone make this jump yet. It's such a dangerous play to jump from top to bottom there. I typically rocket jump. Seven seconds, though, and this will be a big advantage. We can stay alive here. All Liquid knows is to go in right at him. Two more seconds. Oh, and they take him with two seconds left until two of his teammates respawn. Liquid takes him out at the very last second. That was so critical. 
If he had stayed alive for two more seconds, it would have been 3v2 for, what, 40 seconds? And Prevail would have had a huge advantage. Instead, Liquid knew it was at stake. They chased him down, found him in the corner, and just erased him. And Liquid comes back again in the third map tiebreaker. Keeps themselves alive in the winner's bracket. Crystal the big Cove. win over Prevail there. So some really, really close matches going back and forth already in this tournament. You can see Team Liquid now finding themselves in the winner's bracket final. Looks like we've got Smiley versus Egg Control going at it for the, the uh, semifinal for the winner's bracket. Give you a look at those players. So that's, we've looked at both these teams already. Sane, Griffin, Chain, Yenum, Hoyt, Goon, Messick, Zydeglyph. Egg Control, of course, has had some top three finishes in prior matches, prior, I should say, uh, tournaments for Get Cracked. Some of these players have been around. I mean, Yenum, of course, has won. Um, kind of a new team composition here for Team Smiley, but definitely going to be one to fear. So these two teams, I, I think either of these teams could easily finish second or third. Be very interesting to see what happens in this winner's bracket final and uh, who wins between these two, two teams. Doesn't look like we've got anything reported yet, so... So I'm going to take this opportunity then. I'm just going to take a quick break, grab some water. Um, looks like we're going to have winner's bracket final coming up next. We'll let that semifinal finish off. We'll stick with Liquid. We'll see if they can finish it off. Remain perfect going into the grand final, but certainly, certainly looking fallible. Equally yoked to Prevail Gaming, both taking extinction rounds off Liquid, putting the pressure on them, making them come back in MacGuffin and Wipeout. Uh, we'll see what the winner of Team Smiley and Net Control can do uh, to try to end their streak and push their way into the grand finals, or if Liquid can stay undefeated. So again, going to take just a few minute break here. Wait for that match to end and we'll be right back at it. Stick around, y'all.
<clears throat> All right. Water has been refilled. The kit, the kitten has been scritched. And we are still awaiting a result for Team Smiley versus Egg Control. Winner of that will take on Team Liquid in the winner, Liquid in the winner's bracket final, which we'll be bringing you here. This is a good time to mention that uh, these Get Crack tourneys are largely sponsored by the community. We do have some kind of major sponsors on different events, but prize pools are, are largely pitched in by the community. I do have a page if you hit GC Fund. That'll bring you to the PayPal site where you can donate if you'd like to throw some money towards those prize pools. Of course, you can always get that info in their Discord as well. If you go to the brackets page, that'll actually have a link straight to their Discord. So if you want to join in and be part of the conversation, um, or if you just want to yell at the admins, you know, whatever, it's all good. I'm not an admin, so you don't get to yell at me. Who am I kidding? You're already in my chat. If you want to yell at me, you can, you're already yelling at me. If you want to yell at me, it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Discord's on the uh, tournaments, or tournament.com brackets page there. Um, of course, you can find all the info there. But again, that link right there, that PayPal link, the exclamation point GC fund, will take you to that site if you'd like to pitch in. So shouts to everyone who has donated. Shouts to our sponsors as well. Of course, Prevail Gaming, the major sponsor for this one. So let's take a look at the lower bracket while we're here. I mean, we're still waiting again um, for that other match to finish off. To see, we're almost done with round three. So once we get to round four uh, in the lower bracket, we will be going to best of three. So after we switch off from this winter, winner's bracket final, we head back down to the lower bracket. We will be going back to that same, or I guess we'll be keeping the best best of three. Sorry, we'll be keeping the same best of three uh, match structure that we've had before. So no change here. They played best of one to keep up with the lower bracket all the way through the first three rounds, which seems to work pretty well. Right as winner's bracket finishes, we'll be having the switch back down to the lower bracket to best of three. And then we'll have, you see, round four, five, six, and seven. Of course, that's just going to be um, basically quarterfinal, semifinal. I guess it would be uh, fountain round five would be quarterfinal, right? And this would be semi. And then the loser of winner's bracket. So the loser of the match we're about to cast will have a little bit of a break. Wouldn't be as long as uh, in some of the prior tournament structures, but they'll have maybe an hour or two to kind of take a break, take a nap, eat some food. Um, if they have cats to scritch. I know that's an important part of my breaks here. Yeah, keeping an eye out here um, through through Discord. Looks like we're just waiting on that Smiley vs. Egg Control match. So I'm going to send you back to an AFK screen. We will be ready to go just as soon as that one finishes to jump into these winner's bracket finals. In the meantime, I'll kick, out, I'll, I'll kick out the jams, crank up the music, and enjoy some old school. I'm still, I'm still rocking the UT99 soundtrack. Frankly, just because I know that that's one that won't get me uh, YouTube copyright strikes. If Diabotical, if the studio has uh, some music that they know that they'll let us use on stream, by all means, I'll, uh, you know, I can come up with an original playlist or something. But the Space Trance is always a nice one as well.
All right, other news in lower bracket. Looks like California lovers equally yoked. They're about to kick off, so... Yeah, we might even be jumping right into the lower bracket quarterfinals by the time we get done with this winner's bracket final, so... Shoutouts to the player who's been keeping things rolling right along, not really having to wait on much. We're almost four hours in. I'd say we're probably about... about halfway point of this tournament. Not too bad, but if you're planning ahead, trying to figure out how many beers to, to have on hand to chill, uh, I don't know, how many bowls of cereal to have ready. In my case, how many boxes of uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch churros to have on hand. If you're in it for the long haul, uh, we're, we're making progress. And again, you know, that's, that's the scenario for Liquid. If they win this winner's bracket final, they'll probably have a good hour or two to go eat dinner and take a nap or do some push-ups, whatever it is that they do to, to keep, uh, you know, in shape for their matches. That said, winner of Smiley and Egg Control, whoever takes that, definitely got to feel like they have a chance here. I mean, Liquid's given up that extinction round to the last two teams, equally yoked and prevail. So looking um, human, perhaps vulnerable, but certainly the ability to come back and take both of the uh, next two rounds under pressure for their last two matches, definitely demonstrating a lot of... Uh, you know, experience and, and, of course, ability as well. Oh, hey, Astron. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for hanging out and watching. Uh, I don't I don't think I've seen you uh, chatting before, but, you know, during some, especially some of the bigger UTPL matches, we had lots of people chatting, which sometimes hard to keep up with. But yeah, I mean, this is, it's, it's basically a modern version of Quake. It's a modernized Quake. It's not going to be, you know, it, it's not going to uh, revolutionize um, what you think of the genre necessarily, um, but it's an evolution of it. It's something that's going to be a little bit easier to get into, lower barrier to entry. Obviously, it's free to play. Um, some game modes, they're trying to try some different things with different game modes, um, both from a spectator perspective as well as from a new player perspective to get people interested. And I think almost maybe the most important thing with Diabotical and the way that it's, it's being, I guess, run, if you will, um, is the fact that the, the project is being designed in a way that it doesn't have to be a blockbuster. It doesn't have to sell 5 million copies in order to break even. Uh, too Good had said this on stream before where they were very specifically aiming for a game that could at least maintain, at least sustain itself with a modest player base. So obviously it needs some interest. It needs to be successful to some extent. But they're not targeting some unrealistic amount. And I think that's one of the benefits of being essentially an indie studio is they can, they can try to keep their costs down. They can try to pinpoint a demographic and say, okay, we know we're going to be niche, right? Like we know we're going to be like the lacrosse of shooter games, right? Like you're, you're not going to have, uh, you're not going to have the same number of players as Halo or COD. And that's fine. If you build your business model around that, you can still be financially successful and therefore justify keeping it going. And that's really the key to it.
But yeah, when you see it in action, there'll be there'll be some changes to the game types. There'll be some game types that are maybe slightly familiar, but with a little bit of a different twist on it. Um, so it takes a little bit of getting used to. Otherwise, movement's very quick. Like there is a dodge sort of. There's it's sort of a boost, not really a dodge. Um, but basically, it lets you change directions quickly. It lets you get up to speed quickly. Uh, if you ever played Warsaw, kind of like that. It's not really an equivalent to a UT dodge necessarily. It's not something you use in, in combat, in other words, but um, but that, it does make it a little bit more friendly as well. There's a lot more leeway, I feel like, with the movement in this game than some of the prior Quake games. So in that, in that sense, I think people who maybe bounced off the movement in prior Quake games might find it a little bit easier to, to get into the rhythm of in Diabotical. It's not a game where if you're not in the top 2% of movement, te movement technique, you're like not even going to be able to reach certain sections of the map. Um, you definitely get an advantage. Obviously, being faster is, is being better. But you're not going to live and die solely on whether you can make, you know, the rail jump on, on campgrounds or something. So that's kind of the approach they've taken. I mean, obviously, with the, you know, with the eggbot enemies trying to simplify things, taking the sort of flatter, I don't know, painterly textures approach um, to visibility and things like that, you know, trying to lower the barriers to entry across the board. Um, and I think that's important, but it's also kind of nice that they give us things like the ability to customize HUDs. I and mean, they've done a couple of things that I think, you know, they're basically like targeting who they want to make happy with different features and different design decisions. And so being able to do that across the board, I mean, they're never going to make everybody happy. Nobody is. So um, that's, that's, I, I understand their philosophy and I think they're taking the right approach. Um, you know, all you can do is uh, play what you want to play and watch what you want to watch. And if you don't want to play it, don't play it. And if you don't want to watch me cast it, you know, by all means, no one's uh, being forced to do anything, you know? The market will dictate itself. Uh, one thing I will say is actually just earlier today they announced um, a little bit more of the esports kind of official plan, and you will see a little bit more of a an official support, um, I, I guess, approach. So it's not going to be entirely community funded. You know, these get crack tournaments as an example, community funded, community run, community organized. Uh, but it's nice to also have major support from the developer slash publisher. I think that'll make a big difference with you know, kind of getting, getting people on board. <laughs> Appreciate it, Rocket Jump Zone, if that is your real name. <laughs> I am in the Rocket Jump Zone Discord. I just, I don't know uh, who actually runs Rocket Jump Zone all that much. I know it's one of those community groups. Yeah, totally. And, and for those of you who may have checked out some of my casting in the past, I mean, I, I've always tried to um, come from a perspective of you know, people who are newer to a game, right? Like, I don't want to just be talking in jargon the whole time. I mean, sometimes you slide into that, especially whenever there's fast paced things happening. But my goal is for people to be able to watch and, and follow along, even if they're not familiar with the game. If you don't play the game, I want you to be able to kind of pick it up. I mean, that's one thing if you listen to like, uh, <laughs> if you listen to um, soccer announcers so I was in a, a sports bar one time and I actually heard off to the side there was a soccer game that was just you know, that's what was being pumped over the audio and I realized that you could listen to a soccer announcer and you could know almost exactly where the like you could you could really have an idea of where the ball is on the pitch based on the inflection in the announcer's voice 
So it could be, you know, I think this one might have even been a Spanish soccer announcer where it was like, I literally don't know most of the words he's saying, but I can understand based on how he's saying them, kind of what's going on. And you don't have to be an expert, right? You don't have to know much about soccer to be able to watch a, an excited announcer go, okay, they're getting really excited. That means something, something important is happening. Okay, the ball went into the net. That's, that's big, right? Meanwhile, when the ball's kind of being, you know, kicked around back and forth in the middle of the field, no one's really got control. They'll be a little bit more academic about it. And you just know, you get trained as a viewer to know what's important, what's not important. You don't have to know every little nuance of everything. I mean, um, and I think that's important for gaming as well, right? If you can watch a game, if you can listen to a, to a catch or wa watch, watch a cast or listen to one and, and kind of pick up on what's going on and when you should care and when you shouldn't, that's kind of the goal. All right, well, I'm gonna give you guys some brackets to look at. We'll, uh, we'll keep the music up a bit just to kind of jam out here for a bit. So again, still looking at Smiley versus Egg Control there. Winner of that gonna face Liquid in the winner's bracket final. We'll be bringing you. In the meantime, we are into the best of four section of the lower bracket. Things are getting real. We're down to our final, I guess seven teams here, right? Maybe final eight. I don't know. It's 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 been too long of a day to do math. In any case, we're down to it, right? You got best of threes, um, California, California Love versus Equally Yoked, Edgy Children versus uh, we'll call them BMG. This will be a really intriguing one. We're getting to some teams now that are very dangerous. I mean, look at these two teams. One of these teams isn't gonna finish top five. Think about that. Right? Like these are both teams that have had really nice showings in previous tournaments. And these are two teams playing in your, uh, you know, your round four lower bracket. It gives you an idea of the, the level of, of teams that we've got in this tournament now. And we'll take, take uh, check out, I should say, California Lovers Equally Yoked. Of course, we've seen Equally Yoked playing almost, uh, I mean, it certainly gave Liquid a run for their money earlier. And then California Love, of course, a team of other players we've seen kind of rearranged and put back together. So Death Pie, Hero, Cali, and Sin. Uh, again, same, same thing. Like one of these teams is going to be eliminated in round four, pinning the current match. So um, some really good teams being eliminated early on here, just because just that's what the level is of these teams already. So pretty cool to see that. Um, actually, wouldn't surprise me if once things get up and running, you know, once we have dozens of teams, we might even see different leagues. We might have your upper, uh, you know, your kind of tier one leagues and tier two or whatever the case may be, because there's just so many teams um, that are already coming out and getting really good. Take a quick look, uh, see if there's any major changes. I mean, you can see the lower bracket after round four, best of three, same format. You're going to start with Extinction. Um, looks like we're going to keep the same format for winner's bracket finals. Grand finals looks like the basically the exact same. Yeah, exact same format for grand finals. So it'll be best of three, and if the team that comes out of the lower bracket wins the best of three, they'll reset it, and we'll just do another best of three. Oh, it looks like the grand finals bracket, you're going to play a new map each time. So that'll be interesting. So you sort of eliminate them. So if the team from the lower bracket resets the bracket, 
you'll actually see both teams have to play on a new map uh, for that second best of three. So that's that's kind of an interesting, that's one to highlight. Just just put a little put a little checkbox by that one as something that, you know, a little asterisk that we've already got here may come into play. It might be very interesting. Now it won't come in, it won't be a factor unless we see that lower bracket team come back and reset the bracket, of course, but just keep that in mind. Otherwise, pretty much standard rule set coming in through these. I think we've got, yeah, round round four through finals and grand finals. Same kind of thing, extinction first, then uh, loser will choose mode and map. So sliding over to Discord here, just keeping an eye out again for that match result. Um, Smiley versus Egg Control. We've seen before when some of these some of these matches go really deep into overtimes and late rounds and third maps. Um, they can last a lot longer than some of these quick wins that we've seen. Even that Liquid versus Prevail match, while it didn't necessarily go into really long rounds. Um, actually, I mean, actually, I should, I should say we're going to contrast this. It went to three maps, but it wasn't long rounds because both teams were being very, very aggressive. And that's something you can see whenever you have teams playing differently, it can really extend or compress the length of these matches. And I was actually surprised by that, especially in Wipeout. Liquid and Prevail both started off first, I think, round or so, maybe round, uh, first couple rounds. They were very standard, you know, taking the top of, of Wellspring, sitting back, waiting to kind of, you know, get some pick damage, maybe get a, get a kill here or there, or a poke damage or a pick, I should say. And then after that, like second half of the match, they just went nuts and started ambushing each other and diving in. And we saw smoke bombs and and uh, slow fields everywhere. And things just went crazy. And we started seeing sub 30 second rounds left and right. So even though that was a long round based map, you know, number of maps based match, it actually went by pretty quick. Um, yeah, map editor, I think, is still kind of being developed. I'm sure. I'm positive you're going to see all of the standard uh, remakes, right? You're going to see a campgrounds. Um, you're going to see a longest yard. You're going to see a deck. You're going to see a face. Um, now, what I would be curious about, I don't know, something like deck, I guess, could work with rocket, with rocket jumping and like wipeout or something. What I, what I would be curious about is some of the Quake inspired UT maps with more of the rounded, you know, curve structures, things you can kind of bounce around. Um, something like a Grindle Keep, both in Deathmatch and Capture the Flag. Um, even something like Bulwark from the, you know, the old CTF days could be intriguing. I don't know about dual maps. I'm not sure if there's any dual maps in the UT universe that would really translate well into Quake style movement, but. I mean, you're, you're bound to see it. <clears throat> you're bound to see it, right? You're definitely going to see the iconic maps. We'll probably see a Rankin remake, and it'll probably be terrible in this, in this game as far as movement's concerned.
Oh, it looks like we do see a report. Was that only... Okay, so we have a little bit of a report here. So extinction with Smiley's Way, and we're one-to-one -one in MacGuffin. So, okay, so this one will be over soon. I think MacGuffin is first to two. So either Smiley will win and take it, or then we'll see a wipeout game. So quick update there. Oops, let's head back over to that bracket. There we go. All right, so it looks like we've got a few minutes left until that, until, uh, that round's gonna finish off. So what I'm gonna do, take one more quick break here before we jump in. Again, winner's bracket finals coming up here soon. It'll be Team Liquid versus the winner of Smiley and Egg Control. Then from there, winner of that obviously will go to the grand final and await lower bracket winner, and we'll head down here. And we'll start um, bringing to the last couple matches of the lower bracket, and at some point, we're going to join forces, and Press OK will be jumping in here, and we'll kind of be simulcasting this on our own stream. So that'll be fun. Um, but like I said, definitely stick around. I'm going to take one more quick break while we've got some time, and we'll be back in here for winner's bracket finals coming up next.
All right, looks like we do have a report that egg controls with map two. So McGuffin went egg controls way, Smiley won extinctions. So they're going to that map three wipe out tiebreaker. And as soon as that's ready, then we'll jump into those grand finals because again, winner gonna take on Team Liquid. Um, that will give me some time to do a little bit of playing around with my HUD. So I'm gonna take a little bit to do that. Otherwise, just kick back and uh, and relax. Of course, we've got some lower bracket action going on. I'll report as soon as those re you know results come in as well. We'll keep up with those too. <laughs> oh, and thanks for the suggestion earlier. Um, I did actually adjust my HUD here. So the keep or the, uh, the number of players alive on a team, you can actually take that off of being team colored. So I'm just going to have those be white. So uh, you guys are saying the purple one might be a little bit hard to see. Easy enough. I'm just going to make it white now for both teams. Um, so yeah, should be fine now. Should be a little bit easier to see. We can even give it some tech shadow. So hopefully it'll contrast with the background. We'll see how that looks in action. But I think it'll be good. There it is. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It's just not team colored anymore. But that does mean that it'll be consistent. And even if I decide to change team colors, it'll still, uh, it'll still contrast. So that will work. Always looking to improve. Looks like we do have a report. So Cali Love taken out equally yoked. Close some of these tabs and head back over. So California Love taken out equally yoked. Again, a high high level match there. Let's see between these two. So Death Pie Hero, Cali and Sin taken out in the cool pit. PKZ and Dradic. Remember, Equally Yoked was the first team to take that first map against Liquid, so a team that's definitely been playing well today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's especially being, uh, you know, a heavily Quake-inspired game, you're definitely going to see a DM6. You're definitely going to see a Longest Yard. Someone will probably remake the Edge, and then everyone will realize that they don't actually like it. I mean, truth be told, even as a UT player, face and deck are two of the worst competitive maps for most game types. Some might argue that deck plays all right in certain game types, but neither here nor there. Point is, most people don't even really love both maps, but they're, they are iconic. And I think they're iconic because they're very easily understood. So a player jumps in. I mean, I can remember the first time I played, you know, I know we're going back and forth between Quake and UT, but... UT in particular, the first time I played UT with my friends, you know, we probably played 25 different maps, but the ones I really remember are like Morpheus, Face, Deck, right? The maps that you could jump into and within 30 seconds kind of get your bearings and, and they looked unique, right? 
you might have the most perfectly balanced, perfectly competitively oriented map. Um, but when you play it for the first time and it just feels like a bunch of rooms, it doesn't necessarily stick out to it, it doesn't make an impression. And I think you need a balance of both in a game. You need some gimmicky maps, you need some, some maps you can jump into, look at real quick and get. And then you also need some maps that, you know, while they may not be the ones that stick with players for 20 years based on their first impression, maybe are really well competitively balanced. Those aren't mutually exclusive, but they don't have to be mutually inclusive either. Longest Yard, perfect example. I can't believe Competitive Quake played actual, like, important matches on Longest Yard for at, for at some point or another. But it's still one of the favorite maps amongst just people who just want to randomly run around and shoot stuff around. Um, even in UT, it was ported and, you know, the the, the equivalent of Clan Arena kind of stuff and uh, Elimination Tam, etc. Players like jumping around on it and just shooting rockets around and blasting people off the map and whatever, so... Not saying it should be in uh, in ESWC, but it definitely justifies its existence, especially if it gets new players interested in the game. Close out of my HUD editor. There we go. So I'm curious, has anybody in chat gotten notifications of any drops from watching this stream yet? I have drops enabled, and supposedly they're doing some weird things like like shoes, like cosmetic stuff, I guess. Gotcha. Yeah, I also don't know how often those drops are happening. Like, is it once in a blue moon? Are they just giving out a few things here? Are they like raining down from the sky? I'm still awaiting my uh, my streamer, you know, avatar unlockable art stuff to be to be uh, accepted to be, I guess, to pass their submission process or whatever, then hopefully that'll be in order and you can at least get that from the channel. <laughs> Actually, it looks like I just got my rejection email. So apparently my Caco Demon art that I commission someone to draw uh, is too close to something that id claims to have copyright on, even though they stole that from the Astral Dreadnought art forum D&D. &D. So that's fine. That's not, a, that's not an argument I can really, I'm not in a position to make that argument. So all I'm saying is the Caco Demon was not original to id. So all I'm saying. All 
All right, well, how does everyone feel about the, uh, the Luchador cat? I guess I can always upload that, and then people can roll with that. All right, fine, fine. I'm uploading the cat avatar right now. So if you've seen that cat, the luchador, the gato lucha art, my, my, the same artist who did the... Uh... Uh, who did the, uh, the caco demon art that apparently does not pass copyright muster. Uh, also did uh, the cat luchador. So that will be uploaded, hopefully be available for folks to get via stream drops and such in the near future. Oh yeah, it looks like something else we can talk about. So looks like Get Cracked is also doing a 2v2 arena tournament tomorrow. I'll just throw the uh, throw the link in chat here in case anyone wants to sign up. Keep an eye on it. I don't think I'll be able to cast that one myself because I just it's it's a long weekend, <laughs> lots of stuff going on, just finished moving, etc. But definitely check that out. All right, it looks like we actually have a result, so we can move over to the brackets page and uh, let's get us a good old fashioned reload here. Ah, oh, there we go. So Team Smiley. So there we go. After all of that, we've got Smiley versus Liquid for the winner's bracket final. So there you go. hang Rafa, Waz. We've been following them all day. Team Smiley, Sane, Griffin, Chain, Yenum. I was saying from the beginning, earlier on today, I was like, that is a dangerous team. It's, it's a team technically that's new because they're formed from players from other teams and players we haven't actually seen in these Get Crack tournaments yet. But very, very uh, talented team, so... So here we go. We're going to see them in a winner's bracket final. Of course, winner will go straight to the grand final. Lower bracket final will feature the loser of this match. So even the loser will have a little bit of a break because we're going to have a couple more matches to finish off leading up to it. Oh, I see. So one of the problems we're having now is it sounds like there might be a master server issue. So we will see if we get that solved here. I think there's been kind of uh, maybe some issues time to time with it, periodic issues. I don't think there's been any extended downtime. So hopefully this is something that gets solved uh, very quickly.
So if you're liquid, this is one of those things when you're playing in a tournament, right? They've been waiting how long? Half an hour or so in between matches because we uh, the other bracket was a little bit behind. This is one of those things you got to have to be ready and kind of keep your head in the game. Now, these guys, obviously, uh, I mean, this team in particular is, is crazy experienced when it comes to these kind of things. But it's something to consider, right? Some teams are going to be used to it. Some teams aren't. Some teams will respond better than others. When you have a layoff like that in the middle of an event, and they're going to have another one after this while they wait for the lower brackets to catch up. You know, does that affect them? Or are they still feeling comfortable? So here we go. Waz the Hang, Rafa already in here. There's Yenum and Sane. So all right, if you've been napping or if you've been whittling away, playing some Nintendo Switch or something, well, I don't know, whatever, painting a bucolic landscape, whatever you've been doing with your time. Now's the time to wake back up. We finally got another match ready to go. Team Smiley versus Liquid. Curious to find out who their third is going to be. You got Yenem and Sane. Could be a uh, Chain or Griffin. Oh yeah, land competitions are the worst because it's usually even like tougher to find out where you are because brackets and like land people who run land competitions have a bad habit of not having any online system to check up with and not communicating where things are. So a land competition often ends up being, hey, you need to be ready between, it's like it's like ordering cable or something. It's like you need to be ready between the hours of 9 a.m. and next Thursday. And if you're 15 minutes late, you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna be forfeited. And it's like, but you told me to be ready for nine hours straight for one match and I need to, I have to use the bathroom sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, shout out there for any of you that are UT players. Um, again, I think there's some connect some folks that played with Griffin back in the day in 2K4 days. So cool to see him, you know, still around the scene. And Griffin is in. So Griffin, Sane Yenum versus Rafa DeHang and Waz. And we will be getting kicked off here in just a bit. Again, advantage to Liquid being the highest seed. They get to choose Icefall as their extinction map. They've lost the extinction round twice already, though. So really curious to find out what happens here. Oh, they're switching it up to Oxide. Okay. I was kind of curious, like, which map did they feel more comfortable on? They've lost on both, if I'm not mistaken. I think the last two matches, they lost on Oxide last. And then before that, they lost on, uh, what is it, Icefall? One of these days, teams will learn to change the team names here. So if you're the host of a lobby, you can actually change these team names. And then they'll show up. As, a, as like a widget in the HUD. So if you go to the HUD, there is a, uh, a team like name bar that you can pop up there. So really helpful to fill those out in any case. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, looks like they're confirming. There we go. All right, looks like they're con confirming the round counts and all that. Of course, getting into the winner's bracket finals, you definitely want to make sure you get everything in order ahead of time. And here we go, jumping on in. So, all right, everyone, we were I'm waiting sorry. for it, but here it goes, winner's bracket finals, Liquid versus Smiley. Loading up and ready to roll. So Smiley not going to be coming off any layoffs. I've been playing all day. Could be, you know, getting a little bit fatigued at this point. Liquid, meanwhile, just came off a big weight. Looks like they're ready to go, though, ready to jump in. So only one more ready up away from getting this kicked off. Game starts in three. All right, players are ready. Here is your countdown. Three, two, one. Then it's game time, baby. Con X5. Bringing to the winner, winner's bracket finals here, we got Team Liquid versus Team Smiley. The Hang Waz and Rafa versus Griffin, you know what I'm saying? You see them there. We have seen now Liquid coming off two straight matches where they gave up the extinction round and ended up coming back and winning with all the pressure on them. Obviously, they would like to avoid that this time. Early on here, very slow play from both sides. You see Smiley in green, Liquid in purple. Smiley with a little bit of a health lead at this point, but in the early parts of these rounds in Extinction, you got to be very careful. Everyone's going to be weak. It's basically like the beginning of a team deathmatch game. Scrambling for resources, trying to build up any kind of stack. You see Griffin roaming around with that Incoming pincer. And it looks like uh, we've got some players from Smiley in position early. You see Yinum challenging that red, and he goes down and pays for it. That was a big shot right there. Now that's going to allow the Vindicator to go to same. He did have that Mega Health as well, so trying to do some damage in the counterattack, but already an elimination just like that for both sides. You can see him down to 60 HP, saying not wanting to give up the, the kills, but also not wanting to give up the power up and a nice peak shot on Waz. Great uh, communication there, I should say, by his teammates. Power up still on the ground. I'm not sure... There we go. Rafa was able to pick it up. A little bit of time left on it. So if he can chase down some players, you can really rack up scores in a hurry in this game type. Oh, it ends right before this fight initiates. He's got him trapped in the corner. He's going to dive around the corner. They do double team him. Take him down. Maybe another kill on the board. He's got him stuck down below him. Misses the rail. Only had 5 HP though, so anything would have killed him. So here we go, we got one life left. It's gonna be on Sane, he's running away. He sees them above him, he's gonna head over to red. I think he's just looking to put some room between him as an opponent and his opponents at this point, give his teammates time to go on the hunt. Red armor spawning, do both teams know what that timing is? You see them spamming that upper ledge. Nobody from Liquid actually challenging that red. I'm curious if they know the timing or not. Definitely been hanging out over you see him just looking for that mega trying to get some free damage with that 200 armor you might as well try to get some use out of it not just turtling up and being defensive there's one more kill on the other side by smiley just trying to whittle them down Incoming vindicator. so you got mega coming soon and vindicator it looks like smiley has chosen their side he's got to be careful here he's going to be vulnerable 
Oh, and there's the egg hunt. So they got one more kill. There is the power up. They're going to try to be aggressive. So the last man standing has the power up. He also has armor. Didn't get the mega, but he's going to go aggressively forward trying to find. There's one kill into hang. They need to find him again. He's going to be able to grab that red. And Dehang goes down to Yenum, so here we go. One life each. We still have that Vindicator and 200 armor for Saints, who's going to be in great position here. Try to finish this round off strong. He'll be able to defend himself. And there he is. He has a shot. Dehang's around the corner. He's got a little bit of an armor left, but not much HP. He took a bunch of damage. Is he going to wait for that Mega? I know they had timing of red. Liquid looked like they lost timing of red. But at this point, it looks like they pretty much traded, so... Both ghosts go down. Liquid's going to have a tough, be in a tough spot here. You've got uh, Dehang here on the run with 50 HP, or excuse me, 50 armor, 81 HP. And he's going to look to try to get something under his belt. So we just saw the Mega. These teams are almost trading power-ups back and forth. There's the blue armor comes up. Oh, he misses the jump. Not really going to matter in this case. And here we go, Mega coming up. We know that Smiley grabbed the last Mega, so we know they had timing of it. No real challenge to hang, just hanging out there, grabbing it for free, kind of surprised. They know where he's at, but will they be able to catch up to him? All of a sudden, this really changed uh, fortunes around. Liquid looked like they were in a precarious spot. Now they have complete map control. The hang's gonna be able to have the Mega and the Red under his belt at the same time. He can be crazy defensive now. Sane, meanwhile, looking pretty healthy here, but Oh, he comes around the corner, one on one. This is for the round right here. 100 damage rocket comes out and another one. And big, big rocket through all the chaos was able to keep his focus, get that damage. And one round up for Team Smiley. So Sane with the critical, critical shots right there coming around the corner. Did Hang actually had a, I think a little bit bigger stack but it wasn't 1v1, it was sort of a 2v1 scenario and it got caught out a little bit. And that 100 damage rocket was crucial and followed up again right through all of the smoke and the chaos. Two quick kills though for Liquid to open this one up and they've almost got an elimination already. Oh, nice, beautiful rocket there actually on, on, on Rafa. You saw him just threading the needle right above that ledge, hitting him with that splash damage. And kills coming back and forth. We'll go on board with, uh, let's say, let's say Rafa. We haven't watched him in a little bit. He's in position. He got the Vanguard coming up. Defensive power-up's really an interesting beast in this game mode. Oh, it takes a shot from Griffin. So you're going to have Griffin grabbing that power-up. So he can be extra aggressive here if he wants. There's one kill on Dehang. One elimination each. Basically dead even as far as the kills. Oh, and Vanguard. Vanguard Shaft's going to get the easy kill, but going to have to be careful. He's only got 22 HP. Nice fall away rail, but not going to land. Turns the corner. Oh, stuck in a corner against the Rockets. This is a tricky spot. Waz gets him. Picks up the last couple seconds of that power up. Not really going to matter. And we are, again, all tied up. Three lives each. One elimination apiece. You know what? Let's, let's, let's go back to Eno. We haven't really watched him much. Ooh, eats a rocket. We've seen that a couple of times now. I feel like Liquid is maybe throwing out one or two extra just defensive kind of spammy shots. And, and I think it's really uh, working out for them. They've caught Smiley trying to double back and be aggressive. With a couple of big hits already. So let's go on board with Sane. Last one alive for Smiley. Now it's three to two now. This is actually closer than they were in round one at this point. Oh, he's got a little bit of damage coming out. He's going to get trapped though. And get flanked, and so he's gonna go down last life now for Sane. Good job of his teammates communicating the timing of that power up. I think he had liquid players right behind him, so he'll be on the run as fast as possible. A little bit more armor, great timing and control of the map there. Yidim's gonna be defending him a bit. Only two lives on liquid side, so this could turn around really, really quickly. You see one player weak. Who's the blue player? That's gonna be Waz. Waz looking fairly weak across the map. Vanguard coming up soon. 
this could be critical for either either as a defensive power up or really as an attacking power up either one really you do see that going over to Waz. so now with that and the mega health he can be super aggressive if he wants to be i mean he still has a life left if he wants to face up against these two ghosts if he wants to try to find an enemy player but he takes down three rails in a row and he goes down smiley takes him out beautiful shots there now we're up 2-0 and it's first to three so it is map point for team smiley and again we're just seeing liquid back in this position um, and we know they're not afraid to be so even if they lose this round and lose this map you definitely can't count them out they've won two matches in a row after being down from the extinction round Staying in position, throwing out the crossbow bolts, takes a pincer shot. You got two players on him, gonna have to try to get away. Yenum comes around to try to chase him off, but down to eight HP, and Sane's gotta be careful here. Nice job by his teammates, though, of pushing them away, but you can see at the top, we've already had two, two deaths for Smiley and uh, lots of damage on the rest of them. There's another death. Yenum now down to one life. So that's gonna be a red grab. Griffin's. Hanging out around the powerhouse, but he's pretty weak. He may go down. And it looks like Waz going to have that Siphonator. And I think with this much of a lead early on, he'll probably go ahead and be aggressive with it. Another kill coming out. Just So what they're actually doing here, I, I think he's healing himself there, right? So still only one elimination. This round really slowed down. And Smiley here with a two-round lead. Not wanting to give up any rounds if possible. Nice use of the machine gun there by Rafa. We've seen a couple of players now. Able to get clutch shots, whether it's just uh, extra damage falling away or even, even kills like that. Mega did get picked up right in front of him. So Sane going to be on the run, trying to get away. He's going to have a big health disadvantage. And there we go, last life as Waz gets the chase down. Ooh, Sane gets caught up. There's players all around him going to need his teammates. And they do get the kill. So two to one now. One player left as a target for each team. We've seen Smiley come back in that first round and get a win like this. But they're going to have to maintain control of some of these pickups in the map. You see, they're going for this red. I don't know if they have timing on it. Based on how much they're kind of loitering here, I'm guessing they maybe lost timing. Here he goes, jumping in for that red. As soon as it spawned, grabbed it, took a rail shot. So Sane will be on the run here. So Siphonator goes to the runner, goes to the hang. You see him healing himself, and that's something he can do because his teammate there doesn't really... Oh, and he's going to be aggressive here with it. Dangerous play down to 65 HP, but he gets the kill. And of course, that Siphonator heals you as you do, as you do damage. Great opportunity to, uh, to be aggressive, even if you're the last one alive. So Liquid takes a round. We're going to see round four coming up. So you try to tie it back up. It is still map point, though, for Smiley. Oh, nice use of the blaster there. Griffin goes down to that plasma. There's another kill. And qu quick damage here by DeHang. A couple of quick kills. Trying to just get them on their heels. Another kill. Back and forth. These shots are going, but benefiting Liquid so far. So one elimination for Liquid. They, they get the first elimination. But they do have two players with three. Ooh, make that two. So, okay, just like that. Smiley able to draw back even. Oh, and Dehang not really equipped to go into a shaft battle there. He's going to go down. They're going to try to cut him off. Just dodges that rocket and manages to get the kill. Big kill there with the blaster. Probably should have gone down there. Instead, jumped right over that rocket. Manages to stand in there. Gets the kill. Throws another 70 damage on top of it. Vindicator. Sane will have the Vindicator. Oh, and the 
triple damage machine gun just melts his opponent. Looks like he's going to be happy to sit back and maybe uh, just wait for this mega control, though. So essentially tied up here with the frag counts, you do have some liquid players pushing in from that side. Oh, and there is the rail, both teams. One player left, there's a big rail shot there, but unfortunately it does not get an elimination for Waz. Remember, this is map point. We're playing first of three. If Smiley can come up with a big shot here, they can take that one map advantage in this best of three. Red's coming up. Waz gonna circle back around. Remember, he doesn't have the power up, so let's move on board. We'll see Sane here trying to stay alive. It's over 100 armor. I'd be very uh, interested to see if he circles back around and tries to grab that, that mega health, or if he's happy to just sit back and grab armors. So he's being very quiet, letting his teammates do the scouting. He's probably telling him right now, yeah, there's, there's two or three of them over by red. He's going to circle around. He's actually got blue armor below him. Yeah, he's going to scoop that up. Does see an enemy player. Ooh, eats a rail shot. Has to be careful here. Down to 51 HP. Really needs to get some health. Oh, and there it is, one on one. This is for the round, and there it goes, ties it back up. So to hang with the one on one was in better position, had better armor, takes the shaft win, and here we go. Now, winner take all. We've seen two straight wins here, and Liquid pulling right back even. Oh, two big kills there. So Liquid starting off quickly in this round. Enum does have that mega health under his belt. Gonna stand in there. Gets another kill. Trying to trade. And now he'll have red armor, so he can be hyper aggressive here if he wants to. Yeah, he's gonna do just that. Dives right into Waz. Still has 63 armor on top of 123, so stocking up again with that blue. He can continue to be aggressive here. Mega did spawn. Looks like they're not going to get over to it in time. They're just going to bail out and try to zone them off of the red, it looks like. Incoming Vanguard. So they're going to want to get in position for this Vanguard. Nobody really super stacked for either side here. You're going to see him jumping up. Vanguard goes to Liquid, though, right in front of Yenum. Unfortunate play there. Just a couple of seconds late. The target. Who had it? Looks like Waz grabbed it. And a whole wave of kills there by Liquid just wiped out Smiley. But look at this. Three players alive, each with one life. So Liquid has to be careful here. It's going to be a bit of a trap. Having three players alive, you feel like you're a bit invincible. But then if you all go down immediately, you can die very, very quickly and lose this round. Whereas Eats a Rocky, he's going to go up front, try to be aggressive. He goes down, and here we go. Just like that, two quick kills. Now to hang the last one alive, he has a little bit of armor. He's going to be on the run, though, looking for something else, be it the Mega, maybe pick up a Red. We got one life for each side, though. Yenum went down. Give you a quick look at the scoreboard. So it all comes down to this life. This map will be decided by this standoff to hang with 150 armor, waiting for this Mega. This will put him in great position. We saw him double back in an earlier round. Once he got stacked like this, double back on the enemy. A player who was the last one alive was able to get that kill. Wouldn't surprise me to see him running around with the shaft, looking for that opportunity again. Liquid grabbing that red armor. So right now, Liquid in complete control of the map. What can Smiley do as we see them relegated to that back corner? It's a very dangerous spot for them to be because there's not a whole lot of ways out of there. Oh, and there it is. Roaming around the quarter, you just knew it would come down to a shaft kill like that. So there you go. Take a look at the scoreboard. Liquid comes back to take it. So after two matches in a row of going down and looking like they were out of it, I mean, it was two to two to zero or two to one in favor of Smiley here. Liquid finally breaks that streak, comes out on top. And uh, now all they have to do is take MacGuffin or Wipeout, secure their place in the grand finals. Smiley here is going to have to come back. I believe they will have mode and map choice though
So Wipeout and Wellsprings looks like that's going to be their choice. Wellspring. Alright, so we are back on Wellspring and Wipeout. One of the first maps and first game types that I think a lot of people played in this game. So something everyone's going to be familiar with. We've seen from earlier rounds, uh, Liquid here, perfectly happy to both play the, the, the slow game on this map and be a little bit more strategic. And also, very willing to go stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, turn it into a brawl, uh, and just fight their way through the chaos. In any case, here's our countdown. Three, two, one. Then it's game time, baby. Con X5 bringing you a map, too. We just saw Liquid coming back to finally take an extinction round. We're going to be up one map to nothing. Smiley decided to choose Wipeout on Wellspring. Kills going back and forth. This is looking like one of those more hectic rounds like we saw earlier. Two to one lead for Liquid, but they're pretty weak right now. They're going to have to be careful. Health bubbles coming down all over the place. Sane with a beautiful rocket on Waz. The Hang trying to answer back with the revenge shot, but oh, he turns the corner. That's a dangerous spot. Coming around that corner and seeing three people pointing rails at you is uh, pretty frightening. Not going to lie. So dead even here on score. Pretty even on damage, too. Nice rocket there. And some really efficient play there by DeHang. You saw him getting free damage, not really putting himself out there and exposing. They got him cornered. Can maybe end the round right here. And Oh, never mind. This time DeHang by himself. So it's a one-on-one -on -one scenario. And he's got to be careful. It's going to be three on two for about 10 seconds here. He doesn't want to get trapped. Oh, instead takes a shot of his own. May just be back to 3v3 here now. The hang on fire right now. 800 damage already. And I like this play defending the healing teammates, but this time you see a slow bubble come in just to push him off of it. A little bit late though, so Rafa got a decent amount of healing off of that. So we're 3v2 for about 25 seconds. This is going to be a bit of a precarious spot here for Team Smiley. Liquid's not exactly stacked, but they can be super aggressive here. We're going to go on board with Sane, trying to hide. There's a couple of hidey holes in this map. The problem is if you get caught, oh, you can get erased, and they do see him there. They, they're going to try to push him through that teleporter. He sees two behind him and decides to go through the teleporter, gets the kill. That will heal him a little bit, and now he has a teammate. Liquid's still going to have the three-on-two advantage, though, for about 15 seconds. Oh, the nice, patient ambush there. You saw Sane letting his teammate set the bait, but this time he goes down. He goes down to the bottom. He's going to lose out in that fight. And who do we have left? We've got Yenum hiding down low. He's going to have a minute respawn time, though, for one of his teammates. So in 10 seconds, we'll have a 2v2 for about 20 seconds. And yeah, it's decision time here for Team Smiley. If you want to be aggressive, 2v2 with the armor advantage, you can try to end it here. But you got to make something happen. Because otherwise you're going to be facing 20 seconds with a disadvantage. One quick kill. That was a big, big push right there. This could be it right there. And there it is. Great push there by Team Smiley. I really like that play because otherwise they don't make a push and end the round there. They're going to be facing a disadvantage for another 15, 20 seconds. And you would have seen a push just like that from Liquid. So... Smart play there, took their opportunity, took the lead. We are playing, of course, first to four rounds. You can see on the scoreboard there. But we saw them take the lead last map. We saw them take the lead on the Extinction map, and uh, Liquid came right back into it. So anything can happen here. Nice under the ledge rail by Yenum. Quick egg hunt. Don't think they're going to have an opportunity. They do. They win it in 33 seconds. 
didn't see where that kill happened off screen. I think they just split up Liquid. And so Liquid now, got to be blinking their eyes right now. Losing a, a wipeout round in 33 seconds. We've seen it happen before, but it's definitely not, not common. Ooh, that rocket just misses. And Rafa making him pay, getting him unfortunately was uh, married to that rocket launcher. It didn't work out for him. Yenem and Griffin answering back in three quick kills. So just like that, a three to one frag advantage here for Team Smiley. I would not be shocked to see them try to heal Sane up. It looks like Sane is doing just that. There he is down low. Ooh, nice job dodging that rocket with the teleporter. <laughs> and the ambush in the smoke. The falling, oh, the falling rail misses, and that's two quick kills for Liquid. And the ring out by Waz and still hits the rail. The skyhook there. He goes down. People just dying left and right. So where we have with the kills, we're tied 3-3, but that was just a flurry of activity. 100 damage on the egg hunt situation, so we might actually see an end, and we do. Wow, another one that ended. It looks like it was going to be a slow, methodical round, and just like that, they turned on each other. They just kind of started wailing on each other. And it is now map point for Team Smiley, trying to come back with a quick map win after uh, perhaps coughing one up in extinction. They, ha they had map point and let Team Liquid come back into it, trying to revenge themselves. Nice ambush with the shaft right there, but he gets double team. Lots of damage output, but no kill. Oh, and the health bubbles around the corner. That's just going to be you know, a little bit of a wasted resource. That's going to limit how much Waz can heal now. It does allow him to kind of move over and help a little bit, but only 114 HP after that. to hang with a double kill that's going to give them 15 seconds of an advantage only a one frag lead but oh and griffin goes down so here we go egg hunt time griffin getting stuck for a second you know in great position for a split second there gets one kill can maybe get a second out of it no they double team him take him down it is 2v2 though for just about 15 seconds and then it'll be 3v3 almost dead even on the timers there so if you're liquid right now if you look at their health they're actually going to be in a pretty big disadvantage. You need to try to cut that health lead down. Get some free damage. One kill comes out. Waz, last one alive, but he'll have a teammate soon. It'll be 3v2. With one weak smiley player, he goes down. But again, very, very quick respawn timers. The hang getting the kill. So we're just seeing kills back and forth up to six and five. And now is when the respawn timers start being a little bit more of a factor. So you see a 40 second respawn on to hang and that's going to be significant now if smiley heals up which they're trying to do it looks like sane Ooh, goes down and that was a big kill so now it's going to be 2v2 not nearly as big of an advantage and if they can survive they can actually get that 3v2 advantage for like 10 seconds or so rafa on the chase up top looking for some shots oh smart play holding that high ground we've got that one player down and takes him down with the shaft Stuck in mid, so Liquid with a big flurry of kills towards the ends there. Towards the end there, comes back, and here we go. Three to one. It's map point again right. for Smiley. Can Liquid come back again? Or will they have to fight their way back in a MacGuffin round three? You see pretty even damage distribution for Team Smiley. To hang having a monster game. He got off to a really hot start. Oh, nice, consistent damage coming out. We're seeing a lot of that from both teams, baiting enemy players to jump in on you, and then having your teammates ready there with their shaft out. Oh, there is that bait, just like I talked about. Yenem coming in, eating three players' shafts. Now, they are all grouped up here. This is very scary. If they get someone coming in, oh, but they get the kill. Sane came in, but didn't have enough health. Got erased. 
Oh, and Griffin with the mid-air shot. Looked like he was going to get plucked out of the sky. Answered back, and there is the win right there. Smiley comes back and takes map two. So another third map decider for Team Liquid. They've, they've come out on top the last two. This one will be MacGuffin. I believe it'll be their choice. It'll be MacGuffin. They've been choosing Marina. Wouldn't surprise me if they stick with it. They're obviously very comfortable on it and haven't lost yet today on it. So we're on uh, we're on rough and area right now. <laughs> but I do believe we're going to be seeing, seeing MacGuffin as the third map mode, I guess you say. There it is. Here we go, are back on Marina. Again, a map nobody's gonna be a stranger to. We've seen to hang Rafa and Waz. Come back on this map. And here we go, they're gonna have another opportunity. Here's your countdown, three, two, one, and it's game time, baby. Con X5 bringing you the third tiebreaker map in a row. Third match that's gone into a tiebreaker for Liquid. See if they can take it. They looked very, very comfortable here on Marina so far uh, in these matches. So probably feel pretty good about their odds. Team Smiley had them down one round away in Extinction. So you got to think the pressure is going to be on them after being so close and Liquid coming back. Brad's coming out back and forth, though. Oh, and the MacGuffin barely getting grabbed. Yenum has it in his hands. Gets knocked into the wall. I think he's going to be able to get this one planted, though. And it is, but Liquid's going to be all over it trying to get it moving. This is that second round of pickups that, you, that we talked about before. Do you give up potentially the pickups and try to get the MacGuffin moving? They, they do just that, but immediately move towards mid. And, of course, the Hang's going to be in position here to challenge that power-up. Who's going to have it? Sane ends up grabbing it, and this could be a big opportunity now. They've got the MacGuffin and the power-up. Sane will be able to defend it. Kind of surprised he doesn't back up and uh, and try to pick up an armor or something. There it is. You definitely don't want to be sitting around with just base health. And we've seen a lot of players now really favoring the shotgun uh, when you're defending the base, especially whenever you have this Vindicator. It's pretty much an instant kill if someone comes bounding around the corner. Not a whole lot actually coming out of that Vindicator, though. I don't know if... Liquid made the, the conscious decision to try to avoid it and just scoop up other items in the rest of the map. But a couple of kills coming out. Liquid's all over the base, but they take a ton of damage. There's the slow level. He's going to be already out of there. Oh, a double kill by DeHang, and that MacGuffin's in mid. Rafa trying to get away. He's going to be in his base already. And there's a plant, and there you go. A few points on the board now for Liquid. Trying to come back in, but already 49 on the board for Smiley. Halfway towards taking this first round. The hang you can see again jumping out front with a total damage dealt. Having a monster match so far, but he's going to need to have another big game to earn that spot directly into the grand finals. Nice defensive play there. They're going to keep him off. And look at this liquid coming right back into it, already back into the 40s. Griffin finally takes him down and gets that MacGuffin moving. So MacGuffin getting tossed around over by Red Armor. We're going to see who picks it up. Vindicator comes up soon. And with such a dead even game, this Vindicator could be absolutely critical. So Red Armor goes to Griffin. Oh, Vindicator goes to Sane with only 28 HP. You almost 
you almost kill yourself for your teammate with the armor at that point. But it looks like uh, that armor actually got eaten into. So yeah, tough spot here. Not a whole lot to work with. Trying to stay out of harm's way. Doesn't want to drop that power up to the enemy. Team McGuffin. <laughs> nice job with the triple damage. And there you go. Pincer shot coming out. So some pretty key kills there. Not a whole lot of crazy runs coming out between these teams with the McGuff, or excuse me, with the uh, the power up though. I think people are seeing that Vindicator gets taken. They're trying to be defensive, just avoid it. Oh, it goes down. He actually dropped a ton of coins. He would have had so many lined up there from that weight and that hesitation. Instead, Liquid's got it. They're just about in position to plant it. And now they're up to 75 and this is danger time now. Miley needs to get in there and get it moving because they can finish this one off right here. There's the grab and the toss, but he immediately goes down. They're going to have it right back in the hands of Liquid. 83 already. And what we're seeing is Smiley here is having major trouble attacking. Once, once Liquid gets set up and they have three players in their base and they're just defending them, uh, Smiley hasn't really been able to break that hole. So we're in overtime with 99. They need one more player to jump on it. Did anybody spawn close enough? They don't. And Liquid comes back from a 49-0 deficit, wins 100 to 49. Once they planted that and got that MacGuffin on their side of the map, Smiley just had major problems, couldn't get it moving. Oh, nice jump there by DeHang. Ends up taking damage, so uh, McGuffin spawning soon. I'll be curious to see if we see anyone going straight forward. If they're going to do the old wait for red first. You see Yinum up top. Down low. Ooh, he's fighting off two players. He goes down. It looks like Liquid's going to have that first McGuffin and maybe able to get it back into their base. I think we saw a quick toss there. Taking that teleport, it's a great way to escape. Oh, and he goes right back down to the Mega, so that's going to be huge. He may actually hang out a little bit, give his teammates time to clear out the base. Not in any hurry. He's going to go ahead and plant it. The Vindicator comes up soon. I'm surprised the Hang stayed in base there. So Vindicator goes to Smiley. They both go down, though. Everybody goes down for Smiley. Rafa with the double kill to Hang helped out. So now that Vindicator is going to be in the hands of Rafa. We'll follow along with him. He goes down. To hang now within his hands and to hang with Shaft and Vindicator. I think especially on this map, this kind of relatively flat map, to hang Shaft has just been really, really effective. Rockets coming out already up to a 60 to nothing lead here for Liquid. Kills coming out, so it's Smiley might have an opportunity here. He's got 5 HP there for Rafa. He goes down. They do get that MacGuffin moving. Unfortunately, they just get it tossed. Liquid catches it right back. Let's try to get back over to the over to the base. Take a look. Remember, we're only playing to a round limit of two, so this is. This is match point right now. This is uh, pretty much the end of it. Smiley's only going to have a couple more opportunities here to get this MacGuffin moving. And again, once Liquid planted that MacGuffin, the defense has been impregnable. Down to 92 or up to 92. In the last moments now for Team Smiley trying to stay alive. Remember, this is winner's bracket finals. So winner of this will go on to the grand final with that best of three advantage. Where is it? Sane's going to grab it and head over to base. Are they going to get set up and just try to defend it? Looks like that might be that might be the plan. Sane's got pretty good armor stack. There's a big kill on Dehang. He's going to head over to the power-up. And this power-up could be a deciding factor here. And who can finish this one off strong? Oh, it gets picked up and dropped immediately. And everybody on Smiley goes down. Rafa's going to have it in his hands. A little bit of armor on top of it. And this will be his opportunity to really try to finish this one off. He goes down though. Sane catches him from the side and they're going to pass that over. Now Venom has it. And he
And this was a big, big opportunity now. Able to reestablish control of the map. Um, they've got 45. They're going to get at least halfway there now. They still have to fight them off. And as soon as Liquid plants it, it's pretty much going to be overtime. So if you're Smiley, you have zero degree of, uh, of error. You have zero room to make any kind of mistakes here. You have to keep holding them off. You really can't allow them to plant again. So now it's all about map control. Who can keep the timing of those pickups, right? You've got a little bit of extra time. And I like this from Liquid. Since they have that big numerical advantage, that big score advantage, they can give up a few more points in order to reestablish power-up timings and such. Right, get that red armor, get that mega armor under control. You see the pass right along the map. He's going to be right in front of the red. He needs to get one more kill. Ooh, nice. Nice kill by Yenum, but Rafa was right there, so Waz will pick it up. He'll plant it. They're trying to stop him, and nice job to keep that MacGuffin off of the plant. Again, they're going to be in overtime as soon as they do. And Smiley now with a big opportunity. They can take their time because they know as soon as they plant it, they're going to be just a few seconds away as well. Remember, he is racking up points as we speak, and if he can get into the base and bank them, he will immediately count towards their score. He's eating some shot. He gets in there, and they're at 90, and this could be... An overtime versus overtime situation. Remember, it's one round to nothing, but it's first to two. So Smiley trying to stay alive. They need this round. They're in overtime right now. One more kill could do it. It's Shaft versus Shaft. Oh, he goes down. Dehang gets the kill. Clutch kill by Dehang. And now the Vindicator, though, goes to Team Smiley. He's going to just hurl it towards mid. Yinem's got it. They get the kill across the map. Rafa gets a couple of kills. Now he's going to be taking this on the attack. Oh, stuck in the corner up the jump pad. Time. And overtime's just happening over and over. Perfect. There is the defense, though, and a 2-0 win. And Liquid comes back and moves on. Y'all go back to that map one. They were facing a loss there on map one. Came back to win Extinction, kind of break that streak. They lose the second map, and then they come back in this one and, and take it on Marina. They look strong here all game. How close, though? How close was that first map? And, you know, you don't want to go what if, but, you know, what if Smiley had won that first map, right? So close. One round away. Instead, Liquid moves on. We'll take a quick look at the brackets here. So Liquid going to go into the grand final, have that undefeated um, kind of advantage, right? That best of three advantage. Smiley going to go down straight into the lower bracket final. So they only need to win one more game to fight their way back up. We're still waiting for some results from the lower bracket. I'll go ahead and refresh the page. See what we're looking at down there. It looks like we've got the semifinal active right now. Egg Control versus BMG. Winner of that will take on Team Smiley in the lower bracket final. So there you go, Hoyt, Goon, Messick, Zydeglyph, Egg Control, a team we've seen finish top three or so in I, pretty much every Get Crack tournament, right? Then Saigib, Id, Brick, and Death Row, another team that is uh, new to be playing together in these tournaments, but certainly players we've seen and uh, definitely a formidable team. Ooh, all right, so we've got us a bracket now, right? We're all the way down to, uh, did Egg Control and BMG, are they playing right now? Okay, it looks like Egg Control and BMG might just now be getting started. So I'm going to hop out of this one.
All right, so we're just getting some of the logistics down. It looks like we might be joining forces here with Press OK to co-cast these last few matches. So bear with me here. You see the bracket. We're going to be heading down to these lower bracket round six, so the semifinal of the lower bracket. Coming up next, I'm going to send you guys to an AFK screen for just a minute while we get everything else sorted out, and I take a few sips of water. So thanks for sticking around. We're just past the five-hour mark. We've got three matches left to go. All right, looks like players ready up on us. Sorry, was not ready for that. So here we go. We've got our lower bracket final coming up right now. So Goonchamp, Mesakoit, Id, Saigib, and Brick. I do like the Festo flags for BMG, though. So, all right, we are here. This is going to be Extinction again, kicking off this match. Another just best of three here. Winner will move on to the lower bracket. They will take on, ooh, two quick kills there by Id. We do have this Vindicator popping off. This will be a really, really key power-up. 
that you can maybe even end around early with big grab there, but he gets baited. We've seen that before in the liquid match earlier. They got baited diving into it, and this time, big turnaround there. Three kills. Saigib now has that. Only 52 HP. They are on the hunt. They only need one more kill. Oh, looking, looking for the machine gun kill across the map. So this time, Saigib not... Ooh, dangerous play. So he was not really able to get much out of that Vindicator. And that's the danger when you decide to be aggressive in Extinction. You know, you're kind of you're kind of rolling the dice. But just like that, they catch him around the corner. And uh, BMG with the round one victory. Hey, look, they figured out how to put their team names in the top. Prevail Gaming 1 in purple, BMG in green. I appreciate that. For those of you who don't know, when you're in a lobby, the host can set the team names just right up top there where it says Team 1 and Team 2. That also allows me to get that on the screen, and I'll do that in a second when we get some time in between rounds. As it is, round two kicking off here. Saigib right now having the big damage numbers, but look at how slow this round has begun. Both teams getting very, very cautious for us. And I think this map kind of lends itself to that as well. I think both teams kind of want to choose a side choose a side I should say maybe waiting for a power up there's some great communication there from his teammates able to snag that kill and that red armor he's getting double teamed right now and brick in a tough spot luckily he had a teammate Saigib comes around the quarter and they managed to get the power up so red and the power up going to going to the same team or that's going to be a big benefit BMG I guess we'll call them yeah that'll be the easiest way to say it so big advantage on their side from the health and, health and armor perspective. Not a huge frag lead, but they get that first elimination. Oh, and another one right behind us. Now it is a huge frag lead. They trade one out, but it's still seven lives to three. Make that seven lives to two, and right now BMG on a roll. Big 100 damage rocket to Hoyt. Trying to, uh, to bait them in. I mean, that's... That's the disadvantage they have. With two players, they each have one life. They can't even necessarily send two people on the hunt. I think they probably want to have two people hang out together and try to defend those, those last lives. Nice grab of armor. Had a little bit of cover there. That's all he needed. But you, you can pretty much guarantee you're going to have to fight them off of that red. There's another kill coming out. So here we go. You've seen Prevail Gaming fight their way in a little bit. Is that Prevail Gaming? Wait a minute. That is egg control, gotcha. I was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Fine, they're, they're wearing their, their costume. So here we go. Round two though, coming right back to them. So two round lead, we are playing first to three. So here you go, green, trying to push through. And BMG trying to make quick work of this extinction round. Messick does get the kill. Trading out though, so back and forth, one each. And a couple more coming out. Saigib pushing through. Saigib seems to be having, I don't know, just has like the, the, the clutch kills coming out of the side. I feel like maybe he's reacting to his teammates. See him going straight for that shaft. I feel like he's reacting to his teammates calling out players and he's maybe getting on cleanup duty. So he's not doing all of the like spike damage necessarily. But we've seen him come around the corner with the shaft and get a couple kills uh, multiple times already. Oh, he's facing down two purple players right there. He'll be on the run. The Siphonator coming up. This will be a big power up. It is map point for BMG. Remember. First to three. And it does go to Brick, so they'll be on the on, on a roll here now. He can be extra aggressive with that Siphonator. He'll be able to heal himself by doing damage. 
He might also decide with three lives to play it defensively and just buy his teammates time to be aggressive. Oh, he gives up the Mega. Tough break there. He was in great position for it. See him shooting his teammate now to heal up. And so Brick, just like that, the turnaround, it's actually been a, a really big engagement there. Goonchamp was able to get a couple of kills with the Shaft, take two of them down, and now you got three lives on Brick. Oh, but there's a kill down to two. And Egg Control right now with the big turnaround this round. If they're able to flip this map around, remember this round, because they were not in great position, and now they've got... They've got Brick down to one life. He'll be on the run. Give you a quick look at the scoreboard. And this was a crazy, just huge flip of the map control in those last 30 to, to 45 seconds or so. Egg hunt. So here we go. Egg hunt time for both sides. Brick only has one life. You do have two for... Who is it? It looks like uh, Messick. We go on board with him. Tense moments here as Egg Control again tries to stay alive. If they lose this round, that'll be map one down. Siphonator coming up. This will be a big one. Let's go on board with Brick and see 175 HP. He'll have some armor on top. He's looking rather healthy. They do give up that Siphonator to the Ghost, though, and that means that he can be extra aggressive. Oh, Brick going to be on the run. He goes down, and Team 1 wins it, so that's going to be Egg Control. So there you go. First round on the board for them. And, and I want to say, again, if they come back and take this map, that round they probably should not have won. They had a big deficit to come back from. They managed to turn things around, take complete map control, and they did it. Let's see if they can carry that momentum. Because if they don't, map one's going to go to BMG. So a couple of quick kills going back and forth. Hoyt here was, was actually having a pretty uh, serene beginning, though, able to just stroll right over to that red armor. They trade kills there. And so this Vindicator here going to be absolutely critical. Already one elimination on purple. Power up spawns. You see Hoyt not wanting to make himself too vulnerable. Try to take a shot. Vindicator does get taken out. psygib has got it now. He's trying to do some damage. He's only got one life left. Deciding to be aggressive. His teammate does have three, so probably not a bad move. That hit scan shotgun going to be so, I mean, basically impossible to avoid. Oh, he catches him at the red, but not before he grabs it. So down to 23 HP is Psygib. I think he's okay, though. Giving this life up, trying to be aggressive for the chance to take out that that uh, last player alive, which is going to be Hoyt. Hoyt's going to be on the run. One player left for both of them, but again, three lives on green. So here we go. Last life of the map. We did see them flip this around last round. Oh, he's stuck. He's got shaft on him. He's going to have to get away. Teammate comes around. It's a great job of covering their teammate. Again, it's kind of like a flag standoff scenario in Capture the Flag. 50, 50 health pack coming up big. He's got armor right behind him. Nice job with the teleport. His teammate runs away. Oh, a little bit of miscommunication there. His teammate was waiting for him to cover him. There's a kill that they need. He goes down, and there it is. BMG able to hold on, come back. Egg control, though, flipping that third map around, excuse me, that third round right back at him. That was a nice comeback round, but not enough. So map one going to BMG, one map away. We're moving on to the lower bracket finals. Oxide.
Remember, we've got Team Smiley waiting for them in those lower bracket finals. And then, of course, winner will move on to face Liquid. So we're on Sunken, it looks like, for map two. This will be MacGuffin. So remember, the user gets to choose the mode and the map. That control is already ready to go. Looks like BMG taking a second to maybe get their bearings. And so kind of interesting, we see Sunken Chosen. I mean, I don't think any of these higher level teams at this point are going to be um, unfamiliar with this map. It was certainly playable the last beta. So we will find out. Here is your countdown. Three, two, one. And it's game time, baby. Con X5 with map two of the lower bracket semis. We've got BMG and green up one map to nothing. Egg control here we've seen in top three, top five finishes in multiple tournaments. In the purple here, trying to come back and force a third the map tiebreaker. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So McGuffin up. Looks like Goonchamp's going to have it. So Egg Control on the run. You see the toss up top. Nice job getting him already in position to plant that into their base and start scoring points. And a great attack. They're already getting the MacGuffin moving. Saigib's now running it. Only 20 health. That shaft's going to take him out, and Messick will have it right back in his hands. Oh, he bonks right off of the crystal. And here we go. ID or id ends up with it in his hands. So let's go on board with Messick, who still has some of this power up and some of this Vindicator in his hands. He's going to be trying to cover their way across the map. So far, we haven't seen either team really able to, to sustain much of a defense. Although, that triple damage machine gun coming up big, hit scan so impossible to, to avoid. We're going to see now. Ooh, purple team here, Egg Control taking the lead right back. Give you a look at the scoreboard. And right, just they take a three point lead and it gets right back moving again. So Cy Gibbs got it in his hands. As soon as they cap this, they'll take the lead right back. These two have been back and forth all game already. Oh, Messick with the rocket from three-point land. Looking for the follow-up. One more shot would do it, and he doesn't get to plant it. That was a clutch kill. Where is the MacGuffin? Who's got it? It is id or ID. I'm not sure which one he goes by. I'm going to say id because they're both uh, lowercase. Nice rocket there to defend it. So anytime you can cut off the carrier like that and deny them those extra few points from planting it that you instantly get can be a huge advantage, especially when you're in a, we're in a close match like this. Goonchamp with a double kill. He goes down, though. He's waiting on it. Almost had it up, and so there you go. Points just racking up on the green side. Vindicator spawns soon. 
Now, when they're defending their base, they're not going to be in position for the Vindicator. Is that going to come into play here? You see them attacking it. It gets the kill, but gives it right back up. Who's going to have it? Looks like it's going to be in Hoist's hands. No armor. But he can try to uh, be aggressive with it. There is the death from above with that shaft. Looking to catch someone behind the base. There is that insta-kill. Basically playing insta-gib. Messick will have it. They'll also have the MacGuffin moving. But not before they get it down to 79 points. So a big lead here by BMG. They're going to have to attack, and they do just that right off the bat. Immediately taking it and getting it moving. Uh, I don't think they meant to pass that. That was kind of an awkward pass. Does Brick know, he's, know he has it? I'm sure he does now. They might be waiting. There you go. For Red Armor to spawn. And nice use of that lift to escape, doubling back. Down to 15 HP, but he can take his time. He knows he's just, again, racking up those points. But he goes down and Goochamp with the clutch McGuffin. kill. Enemy McGuffin. <clears throat> so the defense coming out, you see. Ooh, all over it, and... Egg Control taking it right back up to 94 for BMG. Oh, a double kill by Brick and everybody on purple goes down. So BMG with a big opportunity here to plant that into their base. It is now overtime. One more kill will probably do it and that should be round one. So a pretty hard fight. Almost a five minute round back and forth. But uh, Egg Control really couldn't get much of a defense mounted. Uh, BMG was able to just have a couple holds for a minute or so, and that allowed them to stack up those points. We'll stick with Brick as he gets a really good spawn here on that, that Mega Health. Looking to pick up that rail. And unfortunately, being aggressive as Brick was, Gets a couple kills, but not able to sustain his stack. So whoever grabs this McGovern going to be pretty base level right now. Lots of fighting over it. Everybody getting beat up. And it looks like Egg Control going to have it in their hands. What can they do with it? messick has got it. Brings it home. Going to start getting those first points on the board. Now, can they defend it? This is what they really struggled with last round. They were actually able to attack pretty effectively and get it moving but couldn't mount much of a defense for any kind of sustained period. And, and again, just like that, they do get 15 points on the board. The Vindicator, maybe more importantly, goes to their side. Can they cut off that flag carrier? Oh, big kill. Id with the double rail kill there. One and then the other pops him back and forth. Saigib now, he's going to have that Vindicator. And the lead goes right back to BMG. And this is, again, something they've just done better is mount defenses. And so you're looking at almost a 30-second hold now, I think. Uh, yeah, up to 43, 44. Big lead now coming up for BMG, and if you're seeing anything from Ed Control, that's that's really kind of a, a weakness of theirs on this map. It seems is 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 getting the getting that MacGuffin moving. So up to 60. Remember, we're playing first to two. So this is actually match point here for BMG. Oh, he saw him dive right over that rocket. So Messick gets it moving. Goom Champs behind him. We'll pick it up. Messick goes down, but that's kind of by design. Still uh, in their hands. Who's going to have it? Goom Champs going to have it. He does capture it. Big rail, but he's going to go down to a rocket. And just like that, I mean, you see that only a few points on the board. If you're in a situation like that where you're having trouble defending it, you almost might think of just holding it, right? Just maybe sticking around mid, picking up a red. And maybe maybe taking your chances trying to cap it and get those instant points. Because right now, I think they're just getting out frag, and that's making it impossible for them to hold. So Vindicator comes up soon. 
McGuffin moving, and this could be the last opportunity for Egg Control to stay alive here. Attack their base. Team McGuffin. So Hoyt's going to take his time. He still has that power up to cover. McGuffin's traveling in behind him. He can still defend if he turns that corner. Gets the kill. Red coming up. That was a big red armor grab. And remember, they're stacking up these chips, right? They don't have to immediately cap it. They got a few extra points on the board. They're up to 43. They just need to mount some amount of a, of a defense here. They just haven't been able to. And that might be a matter of map control. It's hard to say. We don't see the, uh, the pickup counters or anything um, in spec tools, but... It could be a matter of map control sometimes if one team just gets twice as many armors and megas. You know, they're going to seem like they're invincible. They're going to have a lot more health and armor. Messick now taking his time. Uh, again, not a bad move. If they're having trouble holding it at home, they can just hold it in the field. Oh, it turns the corner, has three people on him. He does manage to slam it home and get some points on the board. And slowly they're mounting a comeback. Head controls come back within 30 points and, and still counting up to 60 points on the board. Trying to stay alive here. Again, this is match point for, uh, for BMG. Oh, the big melee knocks him off. But his teammate comes in. we got three players, though, and there you go. We might actually see the lead going right back to egg control here with a big comeback this round. There it is, back to 90. This Vindicator could decide the round and potentially the match. You do see the MacGuffin moving. I think everyone's going to... Well, you have to be careful. You can't just go for the power-up because there's only a few seconds left in this match for whoever gets that slammed home first. sidegib has got it in his hands, trying to get home. Maybe going to wait and see uh, what's waiting for him in base. Down to 53 HP. Oh, nice job waiting on his teammates. He gets stuck, though, on the ramp. He's just going to throw it up out of desperation. They do get it planted home, and that may get them into an overtime situation. They only need a couple more kills, and this would be the match. 99, overtime is up. BMG trying to hold them off. Needs one more kill. Oh, they get they get them knocked off. Now they got to hold them off again. Remember, every time that they touch it, they're going to reset that timer. Try to head over to it, but everyone's just dying. Nobody around it. There is the defeat. And BMG moves on. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of time here before our lower bracket final. We'll take a quick look at the brackets. So you saw BMG taking it, gonna face Team Smiley in the lower bracket finals. Another, uh, another best of three, of course. And then that winner will go into the grand finals where Team Liquid is awaiting.
All right, so just getting all the players and streamers and whatnot in the server. Bear with us. We're going to get these lower bracket finals going here soon. But I do appreciate everyone hanging out. We are just past the 547 mark. Hey, I appreciate the follow there, man. <laughs> Some more follows coming in. Appreciate that, y'all. Azurite. It's funny because I know a lot of you guys uh, coming from the Quake community are new to the stream. I've definitely played with a lot of y'all in the pubs, though, already in, the, in Diabolical. So, welcome, of course. Nice. All so right. We're gonna be uh, joined by Conex Five here. We're gonna co-cast this. Actually, he's right here right now. What's Mike. up, y'all? Mike, check Yo. on my side. Uh, how's everything sounding for you? You sound great. What about you? For me? For me? For you? Uh, I think you just wrote a Sunny and Cher song, but uh, <laughs> sounds good to me. Just uh, justifying <laughs> my levels right there. Um, anyway, Perfect. Twitch chat definitely let me know. Of course, we're adding press OK here. We're gonna each kind of co-cast this together. Um, let us know how the yes. levels sound. This is what Twitch chat is for, is to complain about things. <laughs> Dude, my chat has helped me so much with uh, resolving technical issues throughout. And, uh, of course, go to Twitch. For my chat, go to twitch.tv slash conx5, c-o-n-x-5. Give them a follow. Help support streamers. And uh, I'm over here at twitch.tv slash press ok. Yeah, for sure. Um, cool to see, uh, honestly, this community kind of giving... It's kind of a Wild West right now. People running events, people streaming events, people, you know, casting or whatever the case may be. It's nice to, it's nice to have that energy at the beginning of a game where there's not just like this set, you know, these are the five people that get to control everything. It's kind of nice to have everything out in the open like this. So cool yeah. to see a lot of okay. folks uh, streaming for the first time, a lot of folks even casting for the first time. I know we had some folks um, even in this event earlier that were, you know, kind of getting into it. Mm hmm Yeah, I actually like hadn't done too much casting at all before um, Diabotical, like one Quake tournament or two, and uh, I've been enjoying it a lot, really. Yeah, sometimes so, I find yeah. it more stressful than actually playing. <laughs> it can be, yeah, for sure, but you know, it's also just like anything else, practice and experience, uh, you get the hang of it and it's easier. Looks like we're going to be starting off uh, Extinction map number one on Icefall. Starting off on Saigib here. And a uh, big fight going on in the red armor room. Some damage oh. traded. First kill is going to be Sane OG goes down. Yeah, Brick That's turned the corner one. and railed him right in the face there. Griffin with a nice surprise shotgun around the corner. Brick, super double kill with the pincer. Yeah, I'm really curious to find out between these two teams how they play it. We've seen hyper-aggressive teams who just want to start a bar fight in the first 10 seconds. And we've seen teams that want to back up and sort of choose their corner of the map and secure that and work from there. Right now, it looks like they're maybe more going the bar fight route. <laughs> yeah, it seems to go one way or the other. Either a lot of lives drop immediately or none for a while. First power up is always a deciding factor. Vindicator spawning in the center of the map. Let's see who's in position to take that. Yeah, the advantage Sane has now, now that he doesn't have to worry about his lives, he can be stupid. He can just be as aggressive as he wants to be and plus fort it. Um, does end up going down there, though, and uh, giving that power up to Saigib. That's a big, big opportunity for them to try to close this first round out. Indeed. And uh, 
Yenum, last alive. He's got, uh, sorry, not last alive. Last with life. He's got two lives left. He gets the uh, red armor, which is going to help him survive. But he's up against a team with five lives, so clock is not on his side. Yeah, not to mention the Vindicator, though. It looks like it just expired, but always a scary moment. Um, we have seen teams, though, if he, if he can just kind of whittle away that time and, and allow his team to get out there and, and just get a couple kills, things can turn around quickly in this game mode. Indeed. Oh, that and, big uh, 50 HP got picked up by Venom. So key to keep that in mind. A lot of players forget about the 50 health pickups in these maps, but that can be the difference between death and, uh, and victory, honestly. I'm so glad you said that, because I literally, I'm a huge advocate of the 50 health being one of the most important items in the game. But oh, yeah. uh, last life for Yenum. Yeah, on the run here, they do manage to take one um, during a trade there, so... It's, it's, it's basically, you know, it's two to one, essentially. So it's all going to be come, coming down to map control now. It looks like they do have some armor, though, um, for BMG's kind of, you know, last man alive. So a little bit of an advantage there. Oh, and he dives right into him, and Saigib just baits him into that shaft. Game starts in three, mm. round two, two, ID with some uh, victory nice. 180s. <laughs> Ooh, Saigib, speaking of which... Saigib immediately got the red armor spawn. Always nice. There's a certain amount of RNG to this game type with where people spawn. It does seem like uh, there is some good logic behind it, though, because I noticed uh, in a couple matches, one team would spawn, like, especially on uh, Oxide. Oh, wow, nice. <laughs> from just Saigib. feeds Was him a, a basketball hit? right there. I think, yeah. I, I don't know if one hit him with Splash. And oh, then another my. one right there, Saigib right now. He's playing Tribes on us. <laughs> that was insane. Uh, but yeah, I did notice on Oxide, one round, one team spawned in the power-up room, pretty much all together. And the next round, the other team did. So there is definitely some logic behind it. Who knows if it's as balanced on Icefall or not. But, uh, big life advantage here for Team BMG. We did see Vanguard getting picked up here by id he's gonna get some damage coming out saigib actually gets the, f the finishing blows i feel like saigib's been getting the finishing blows and a lot of kills during their matches um again maybe playing sort of a sweeper role yeah totally uh i i noticed a lot that he is really a high level player in all of his in all ways like movement decision making very aware very good like i would expect him to be the in-game leader of their team if i had to guess Oh, you know, getting trapped in the corner, and that's a tough place to be. Just gets surrounded. Game starts in three, round three. And yeah, you can see on the scoreboard right now, Saige with 15 kills. Huge number. Not a ton of damage, but finishing off those kills. So, you know, credit the communication from his teammates, right? Calling out weak players, calling out players that kill you so that you can turn the corner and flank them. I mean, that's just good teamwork. True. Uh, speaking of 15, Sane is up there with 16 deaths, which is also not necessarily a bad thing because deaths count when you are a ghost as well. So maybe he's just a very good, aggressive ghost going all out. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of uh, what we saw a couple rounds ago, right? You go down early and you say, okay, now that I'm dead early on the plus side, that means I can be blindly aggressive and my, my lives are sort of its own separate resource. Oh, we see. I, I've seen so many teams now where they'll send multiple players through the teleport up top and uh, and just get trapped there. We saw a couple of tough shots there coming through. Kind of punishes you for grouping up there. We do have mm. a power up spawning. It's up, and Saigib here is not even going to go for it. He's just going to try to cover his team. So Siphonator goes to Sane. He still has a life left, so see what he decides to do here. This could be one where it all comes down to map control. They're pretty much even. Power up, of course, in Sane's control. What can they do to try to avoid him, basically? Seems like nothing as he finds one kill up at the teleporter exit. Although he's in a 1v2 situation right now, the uh, Siphonator oh. is going to help him survive. Yeah, Almost nice job utilizing that Siphonator. And, and neutralizing mm -hmm. that Mega Armor as well. It was a tough, he was a little bit a little bit behind it, but still managed to make it work. And so this is Smiley's opportunity here. To, uh, to try to grab a round back. It is map point. Remember, we're playing first to three, so BMG grabbing those first two rounds really quickly. Going to put them behind the eight ball, see what they can do here. I 
ID last alive for Team BMG, uh, or last with a life. And we are now in a three life versus one life situation. And so far, every time this has happened in Extinction, uh, the action slows down a lot. When you have one player on each team with, with lives, it's like they really get stacked and play defensive, and it uh, slows down the pace, which is a nice change. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, one thing we're seeing here is uh, is both teams have opted to put both of their players, or both of their ghosts on attack. Some teams have kind of gone back and forth with how aggressive they want to be versus sending someone to kind of cover uh, their last man alive. We do have a two to one difference here, right? You got two lives to one, and that's a huge difference. But that can that can be erased so quickly. If someone dies once and gets, gets you know, respawned in the wrong place and all of a sudden they go down again, you really can't take that second life for granted. It's true. The life you have is worth more than the life you do not yet have. <laughs> That's that what my grandfather cool. used to tell me. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have a power-up spawning soon. Red armor goes to id or id. Not sure which one he goes by. Enemy Siphonator. Siphonator up. It looks like it may have gotten dropped. Siphonator. So Siphonator goes to id, and this could be a big turnaround for him. He's the last one alive and only has one life, but he'll have that Siphonator to help kind of restock itself. Oh, and he misses... The mega help just barely. For anyone who doesn't know, the Siphonator power up allows you to heal your teammates by shooting them, uh, but also you can heal yourself by shooting enemies up to 150 health. And that's gonna help him keep help keep him alive here in the grenade launcher room. He drops down onto the 50 health, and he still got the Siphonator. Just runs out now. Uh, still two to one lives on the board. Red armor going to uh, Yenna. Yeah, he's going to find himself in a tough spot here. He still has 72 HP and gets away with a kill on Griffin, but not a whole lot of armor to speak of and not a whole lot uh, up for him to, to work with. And they do catch him coming through that teleport. It's such a death trap. So here we go. Coming right back on Smiley and uh, trying to fight their way back into it. Still map point, though, for BMG. Oh, Kenum eating the most direct rocket. Oh, wait, that was his teammate. He shot him. Never mind. Ooh, Brick going One. down. Difficult play jumping in there versus, I think that was a, uh, okay, he didn't end up switching. So I thought, thought that might have been a machine gun kill. We saw a ton of machine gun damage in the opening moments of this game. Almost feels like uh, TDM. Yeah. Uh, of course, I think you have, what, five second respawn timers in this game type on the uh, on the weapon. So there's still a little bit of a scramble in the open of, opening of a round to kind of get some resources, but you can't really starve the other team necessarily. It's just a matter of organization and grouping up. Uh, Griffin with some nice moves, footwork, uh, jumping backwards up the ice wall. Nice play. Red armor spawning. You got a purple ghost on it. I wasn't sure who that was, but it looks like, uh, let's see, who grabbed it? It looks, it looks like that might have been Yenum who grabbed it. And he's also going to get the Vindicator. Interesting. Figured they'd give it to one of their ghosts, but he is pretty stacked, so. Took some damage from behind. He actually missed that 50 health. I was surprised he didn't go up there. Does he? Oh, this is a dangerous play by him. And the 50 gets taken by an opponent, so now he's going to have to make some decisions. Grabs the Mega, and that was a huge grab. Now he can be super aggressive for a few seconds that he has left on this power-up. And he really should. Uh, there, there you go. That's exactly yeah, what he needed. kill on Maybe break. He turned that corner against the triple damage shaft. Oh, another kill on... And another one. Three quick kills. And now you're going to be left with... Where is Brick? In mid, he's got a little bit of armor, but... <laughs> Every gonna... time I've seen them play Extinction and Brick is the last alive, this is exactly where he is. I guess this is a practice strat or it's just where he feels comfortable being uh, when he's the life lead. Yeah, I mean, you do feel a little bit protected there. Um, people have to kind of jump over that... that ridge take a shot at you. you can try to escape via that teleporter but stuff like this can happen too you get trapped in a corner oh and immediately goes down with the double team and just like that team smiley shooting their way back in tying it up and this is map point now indeed Saigib was there with brick i don't know he went through the teleporter and then disappeared or i'm not sure where he went oh tough break there yinam tried to do a rocket jump to get to the red rocket jumped right into some shaft True. Although, to be fair, he did make it to the red, so that was a nice <laughs> rocket jump from dead. And that's something you have to keep in mind going from one game type to another. I mean, if you're playing Wipeout and all of a sudden you're playing Extinction, when and how you rocket jump is a completely different equation. All 
All right, so we're seeing some trades back and forth. BMG, though, ultimately with a slight lead here. Seen a lot of teams trying to control that uh, Mega Health Rail Room, although it is really big. But if you can get like two pincers on your team, uh, that's kind of a huge deal because that allows you to play very defensively if you need to. Uh, Brick picking up the power up here is Vanguard, but he didn't have the HP to keep it. Yenim on a machine gun spree, but he goes down as well, and the power up ends up on ID or id. Yeah, and he goes down as well. This is just the cursed power up right now. We'll see who grabs it. Griffin has it. He can maybe be a little bit more aggressive with, you know, being a ghost and having 70 HP, but... Can't find a target. Is Griffin going to grab the red? He is. So interesting play here. Griffin's going to be kind of a power attacker here. He's got... Power up goes away, but he grabbed that red. And just looking, looking for a target. Every weapon right now. So his options are wide open. Uh, he's a very powerful ghost. Oh, he's got two targets in front of him. He has plenty of health. I mean, they don't know, remember, that he picked up that red. So if he can bait them, he can maybe get a kill off of it. Doesn't end up happening. Meanwhile, Brick's over here with 190 HP. Looks like he picked up that Mega and a little bit of armor on top. And he's looking mighty comfortable. Finding a second blue. He's got 100 armor. It's uh, Sane last alive for Team Smiley. And he's got three lives left. So this is a good position to be in. Uh, I was talking about it earlier. I think, like... It's easier to keep one player alive with three lives than three players alive with one life. So, uh, yeah, Sane is in a good position here. Yeah, and it's kind of the opposite of something like, like uh, I don't know, Clan Arena or if you, you know, basically if you could keep, if you were actually eliminated, then yeah, you'd be, you'd be worthless. But when you have your ghost, like that is value right there. You can, you can be aggressive, so. See what Sane decides to do. He's going to turn on, and that's a decision that you, that's kind of interesting that you have to make is when to turn when to turn on a ghost. Oh, big fight over the red, misses the rail. He's going to be stuck down low. Tough spot. These two are standing in there. I'm surprised neither one of them backed off at this point. He's going to be aggressive. Brick follows up and gets the shotgun blast. That was a crazy chase from Brick. They were both players with lives, so they didn't have to be super aggressive, but they knew that they were both low. So uh, Brick decided to follow up, and it paid off. Very nice play. Yeah, and, and three minutes in the round. This is a pretty deep round for this game type. Keep in mind, winner of this round wins the map. So a huge advantage. And a couple of kills coming in. Saigib right now, super weak. Last one alive, 34 HP. They do get him back. They're going to probably try to get at least a blue armor on, in him. I don't think he's going to want to head to red. It looks like uh, maybe some enemies down there. So they're basically standing in between Mega and Red and just waiting to see which one they have, they have access to. They grab Mega. They're all going to get pincers. It scares me that he's still here waiting for the pincer and his teammates had left him here, but uh, if he got trapped down on that low ground, there's no exit in sight. He gets caught out here and he's calling oh, out for help. Oh, just so like that. Arrive. GG. So a nice comeback there. That was actually three rounds in a row from Team Smiley coming back to take it. It looked like BMG might run away with it. So first map, Extinction, going to Team Smiley. BMG going to have to fight their way back into it. They will have a uh, game type and map selection, though. Mm -hmm. Oxide. Just to reiterate, for anyone who has just joined, we, this is a uh, multi-mode tournament, so all three competitive modes here. We got Extinction, MacGuffin, and Wipeout. Uh, it's best of three. First mode is always Extinction. Loser chooses second mode, and then if it goes to a third, it's going to be whatever mode is remaining. So it's really nice to see um, all the different modes play out, and I thought it might be a little bit confusing. Someone came in the chat, and they were like, uh, do you think that it's confusing for new players to follow? But I don't think so, because the games are really intuitive, the modes, for the most part. Uh, and it's really nice to kind of get it, um, mix them all up. Every match feels different. Every map feels different. Yeah, I mean, that's actually something that... I, I know this sounds like sacrilege, but I've been saying for a while, and I'm standing alone in my soapbox, but one thing Halo does well is mix it up in their matches. They'll have four or five different game modes. They'll, they'll have four or five different game modes in a match, which as a spectator means rather than watching an hour and a half straight of Capture the Flag or Duel, 
you know, you're watching a little, you know, a little bit of Team Deathmatch, a little bit of One Flag CTF, a little bit of what's essentially Clan Arena or whatever, and it kind of keeps it fresh. So, like, I'd almost rather see, you know, best of five matches that mix up game modes than seeing the same game type for three straight maps, right? True, very true. This and also, um, it's very, it, it promotes various skill sets, you know? So like, if you're really fast, you have good movement, maybe MacGuffin is your best mode because you can uh, be a flag runner. If, um, if you're good at strategically thinking and hiding and stuff, you can benefit from pretty much any of the modes. So. Uh, and then aim obviously benefits all modes as well. Force QL in the chat saying prize pool has been bumped up to four hundred dollars. Thank you everyone for the donations for this uh, attorney. Nice. Yeah, again, you can, again you can use the uh, the chat command. Um, ooh, GC fund, I believe, when I popped up in there earlier. That'll give you the link to the get cracked page where you can make donations. So again, for everyone, this is uh, MacGuffin. It's like uh, similar to a one flag CTF mode. And the flag is about to spawn here in the center. Yeah, you gotta grab that, take it home and protect it. Sane with a triple kill there with the shaft coming out and just finishing everyone off. <laughs> you see that? His throw. He threw the MacGuffin straight up and tried to pass it to himself, but then he couldn't find it. Gotcha. I was like, yeah, that's an old, uh, like, bombing run move from UT 2004, but didn't work out for him. We're going to go on board with Brick. Enemy Vindicator. Enemy Vindicator. So interesting move. What he's going to do here is just eke out a couple more points on the board before slamming it home. Although with the team, his, his opponent's mostly focused on mid and grabbing the power up. Not necessarily making a difference. It's really interesting. Uh, I mean, yeah, you get the passive coins while you're carrying it, but I haven't seen any players timing it intentionally, so they know that the next coin is coming up. They wait to deliver it. That kind of thing. Uh, really nice play. Also, sometimes you just hesitate to cap because you want to be sure. If you if your team is losing your base, you might want to just leave with the MacGuffin, come back later. Yeah, we've seen some matches earlier where you had a specific team uh, who might just have trouble defending. Like they might be able to attack and get it home. But holding it just wasn't happening. And if the enemy team is, is over committing to taking your base, you can just sit in mid. You can even sit in their base enemy and rack MacGuffin. up those points. And if you can sneak across map, all you got to do is touch home and you cap those points. Sometimes that's an easier thing to do, hide and touch base, than actually defend the base in a consistent manner. It just depends on the, on the matchup. Yeah, totally. Nice direct rocket there from Sane as he caps the MacGuffin, gets a double kill. And pushes the third one off of the base. Very nice play, I'm saying. But uh, yeah, we've seen games where um, that's the only way to score points is you hold the MacGuffin, get those uh, coins in the bank, and then deliver them, and then you're going to lose it right away. But at least you got the coins. Yeah, I mean, meanwhile, you know, speaking about back and forth, BMG had a big lead here in Smiley. Enemy MacGuffin. Uh, coming back, getting it home and defending it for quite a while there. I mean, getting up to 35 points. Still a bit of a, le of a lead here for a BMG, but showing a little bit of life there. Um, and now's when, now's when things get a little bit messy with controlling the power-ups, right? Like when you go back and forth between attacking and defending and all of that, it's not unlike CTF and that it's easy to lose track of those power-ups because you're not really fighting around them. Got to keep those timings though, and that can make a big difference. We do have that power-up spawning right now as well. Oh, big kill. Everybody on Smile goes down. And Brick now running around with this triple damage shoddy. Oh, he almost takes a melee death and he does go down. There is someone out there in this game running around with a hammer, trying to get hammer kills. I haven't been able to figure out who it was, but I saw it close. Oh, and he goes down right on top. So Saige with a triple kill with the rail. I didn't get to see him to see if any of those was uh, a two and one. So overtime, if they can get one more kill here, that may seal the deal. Overtime. Looks like it might be. And there you go, round over. So first round, BMG coming back and with the counter attack. I mean, he took a big lead early on. Smiley came back and he put 35 points a non-stop on the board and then I uh, just couldn't break that defense at the end. One, 
Nice little surprise shotgun there from Griffin again. That's the second time this game I've seen him crouched at a corner just waiting, and then he hits a hundred damage shotgun. Although Griffin is now pushed out of the MacGuffin spawn, he gets rocketed down to 22 health. Oh, Sidegib killed himself there. He's in position for the red. I think he was trying to throw a rocket down on him, accidentally killed himself. Didn't see who ended up grabbing it, but certainly it was not him. So in any case, first plant here goes to BMG, uh, just like the last round. Got out on top and to an early lead. Enemy MacGuffin. Attack their base. Incoming Vindicator. Vindicator coming up. They probably want to get Sane in on this. Uh, he's got a nice position for it. And oh, and he does. Yeah, he basically just oh. snuck in behind. Just sat there and point and clicked on their face. All of a sudden... Power up is his, MacGuffin is his. In a couple more seconds, they actually knocked him right off. Oh, they got him again. Nice defense there. Good awareness. Not giving up on the play either. So Brick now playing Instagib, just defending with that extra damage railgun. He gets a ton of damage output, but they're still going to get that MacGuffin moving. This game mode becomes so dangerous when everyone has the pincer. It's like you could die at any moment. It's hard to get armor stacks, so people just start disappearing. Yeah, I mean, we see full team wipes like right there. We just saw um, a full team wipe by BMG on Smiley. I mean, all of a sudden, everybody's respawning. That's a great opportunity to get that MacGuffin across the map. We're seeing both teams have trouble capping, though. It's true. Uh, it might turn into one of those games we were just talking about where you get most of your points by holding the MacGuffin for a while and then just delivering the 10 points. Oh, he's got a clear path there and nice job with his teammates. Uh, double teaming aid getting the kill. And so now it's uh, it's Smiley's opportunity to put some points on the board. So far, this is almost a carbon copy of the last round. It's a little bit slower paced. But as far as the scoring goes, if you get a storm in here, they're going to take it out another full Enemy team wipe. MacGuffin. And uh, that will get the MacGuffin moving, and now they're going to have an opportunity to try to get it capped and uh, mount some sort of defense. Wow, Brick coming through the teleporter hot with the rail or pincer, and he's going to hit that point blank shot. That was really nice. Just the, the way he's choosing his path here is really interesting. Uh, it indicates to me, like, yeah, they're, gonna, they're, they're looking at mid control as opposed mm -hmm. to their base. And they're going to look to pick up some pickups, maybe the power up. Okay, he slammed that home. Now he's racking, racking up the points. They are going to have to worry about Vindicator coming in, though. Griffin's got that up top. Oh, he's finding a completely open base. So interesting move. It looks like uh, BMG maybe had, had problems rotating back around to their base after they tried to control mid like that. Mm -hmm. Although even Brick, who was on the point, he just left as well. So... Uh... Yeah, that was, that was a shockingly easy grab there and an easy cap just going across the map. So BMG may be a little bit out of position. They are counterattacking very quickly. Power up is extinguished. They're not going to be a factor, but they're right back scoring points again. Approaching 70-50 on the scoreboard. This is getting really close. Yeah, and keep in mind, this is map point for BMG. Yeah, no. With a shotgun. Cleaning up. Enemy MacGuffin. Team MacGuffin. Id with some nice shotgun play. He's going to support his teammate with the MacGuffin. And Brick makes it out alive. As a result, again, Id with the shotgun. Yeah, as someone who primarily played cover in CTF in the past, I really appreciate sometimes plays like that from Id, watching someone chase their teammates. Uh, MacGuffin runner and cutting off enemy enemy players and all that. That was some brilliant play right there. Slams at home. They're getting now close to sealing the deal here and trying to force a map three. Oh, wow. nice rocket rail combo by it. Just all kinds of damage and another oh, hundred another damage rocket. Direct. He's on fire right now. And if they can get one more kill, they will seal this map and force a tiebreaker. There it is. Wow. So we're gonna see wipeout. Remember, remember, they were one round away from winning the first map, right? They went up big early on. Smiley came back furiously to force, well, I guess to take the lead. Um, if they, if they were, if they sealed the deal there, 
this match would be over. But because of that comeback, now we're seeing a tiebreaker here. Map three on Wellspring. Uh, Wellspring. Wellspring, yeah. But, uh, since we have a couple seconds here, just to recap for everyone in the chat, wipe out this game mode here. Uh, when you die, you do respawn. You can respawn as many times as you want, infinitely. But each time you do, your respawn time goes up. So the first time you die, you come back in, let's say, three seconds. Second time, it might be ten. Uh, I'm not sure what the exact numbers are. But basically, you score a point when the enemy team is all dead at the same time. So eventually, one team will score. And uh, it's a great fun mode to play. Another big variable here is that everyone starts with full health, full armor, and all weapons in this mode. And there's no self-damage. So if you played Quake at all, similar to Clan Arena, with uh, a little bit of a twist on it. Nice. All right, so Griffin, the last one to ready up. Looks like they're going to stick with the same roster. Both of these teams have four players on their roster, but it looks like we're going to keep the same lineup, and we are live. So here we go, map three going on. This will be your tiebreaker. This will determine who moves on to the grand final against Team Liquid. Big, oh, big fight coming out of fight. top water. Yeah. yeah, that top water area... We've seen in earlier matches, if, if a team tries to flank behind the team that's holding it, things can get messy in a hurry. One frag on the board early on by BMG. And then teams kind of back up to their corners. See Yinem healing up. Team Smiley has the top area on full lockdown. Let's see how BMG pushes in. Yeah, um, BMG like tried to flank damage. behind and Yinem caught him with a rocket jump, or with a rocket on his rocket jumping and really did a ton of damage. Saigib gets the finishing kill, but right now, BMG is very low in HP. They have to be careful here. Wow. One interesting thing about this map, there's not a lot of places to really safely heal. It's, it's a relatively, it's a quick map to traverse, I should say. So you're always Absolutely. taking a chance. Anytime, oh, the double rail there by Griffin was beautiful. You see them healing right now, and that's really the key. It's not so much as fi about finding a secret, you know, hidden spot to heal as it is about getting teammates to cover you. <laughs> Griffin with the teammate boost with the melee. I'm not sure if he told Sane he was going to do that, but he did it. <laughs> I've been waiting to see a teammate launch, or someone launch their teammate with a hammer, like tactically for a purpose. <laughs> wow. Yeah, just like that. A couple of kills and... Three instant. It was tied up three to three and went six to three. And there's the first round. Smiley taking the lead. I think for the first time. I feel like they've been fighting their way back. Both maps already in this matchup. Look at the blaster spam. Brick ready to take the teleporter. He's waiting for the call. And he is about to flank. Goes through the teleporter. Hits 14, 30. A few rockets. Decent damage. Yeah, and, same, uh, same meanwhile. He, he came around behind. He actually did a great job of tracking through the smoke. So, uh, actually, Smiley getting the best of that one. Two quick kills on the board. <laughs> Another big oh. fight at top water. Yeah, that's kind of a fake egg hunt right there. Um, they got a couple of first kills, which only take about three seconds, like you said. We have seen matches, uh, rounds, I should say, end in, in Wipeout in less than... 25 to 30 seconds. If teams get hyper, hyper aggressive, that can happen. Oh yeah, totally. And uh, at that point, it's almost too too many variables to consider. So you're kind of making it a little bit RNG if you go too aggressive. If your team dies all at the same time, you're going to lose that point immediately. Wow, and just like that, it looks like BMG getting split up there. They weren't really... I don't know, they weren't prepared to come in with a, with a, uh, a deficit like that. And now... They're halfway towards being eliminated. They gotta be careful. Remember, they were one round away in that first map from taking a map lead that with that second round win would have been that they were gonna be in the grand finals right now. They could be getting ready to play liquid right now. They gotta they gotta get their heads back in it and, and slow down this rush from Team Smiley. Couple of grenades coming around the corner. That'll do uh, a lot of work. There's the rush, but they fight back, so a pretty even trade there. Oh, and one thing we see a lot on this map is teammates body blocking through a pincer, rail shots. Oh, he's got to be careful. He's got Siphonator, but he's the last one alive. Gets caught in midair and gets taken out. But his teammates do have time to spawn, and we'll be back to 3v3 now. 
BMG with no armor, they have to be a little bit more careful here. But they do have a 3 to 1 fragment. Griff is finding the angle, but secret enemy around the corner. You will manage to kill Brick after being ambushed. Yeah, so this is a dangerous spot here for BMG. They've got two very, very weak players for 10 seconds. And while it technically is 2v2 and it might look like it's dead even, that extra little bit of health on Yenna makes a huge difference. And you see they're both healing up up top. Playing for that 3v3, BMG has a two frag lead, which basically means they have a little bit of an advantage with the spawn timers. The uh, Brick is the only person on BMG who had a healing weevil as he just respawned, but he wasn't able to get to any of his teammates to heal them up. Uh, it looks like we're gonna have another 6v6, all players alive, and full armor on Team BMG. Yeah, we're dead even on frags here. A little bit of extra armor for BMG. Oh, getting caught out in the courtyard. That's a tough spot to miss a rail. You get punished pretty hard. So 2v1, but it looks like BMG might be... Uh... No, they're not going to heal up. They're going to try to be aggressive. But now it's going to be 2v2, and they're going to have... Well, they're going to be about dead even on health and armor. Surprised. Uh, maybe they don't have any healing bubbles right now. So Sane, meanwhile, is going to heal down low, and that's going to be uh, a little bit of an advantage now if we get back to full strength 3v3. Oh, but meanwhile, Smiley takes all kinds of damage. The grenade kill there on Yenum, that's going to make it now 3v2. Now, still not a ton of health on the side of BMG, but you certainly got to stick together. Team Smiley knew that uh, that was going to be all down to Sane, so Sane was already hiding in advance, <laughs> so they must have good communication on that. Um, and again, we're basically tied for another 12 seconds here, but huge respawn time there on Brick. Yeah, and it's interesting because there's actually one extra frag on this side. Well, now we're tied up. There was one extra frag on the side of BMG, so it must have just been that Brick had been, uh, you know, dying extra. Saigib going for the triple. Oh, we got He's one on one here. Saigib being chased. Trying to get away. He's only got one second left. Oh, and at the very last second, he just survives. Yenim's going to survive. And he's got a couple of 15 seconds. So this is a bit misleading right now. It's one on one. It's about to be two on one. But then in 10 seconds, it'll be three on one back for BMGs. Oh, nice job with the rockets. And he's not going to have much time to heal himself back. He can they survive really for just a couple it. more seconds. And here it is. That's what I was talking about. There's a bit of a trap. He goes down, but now it's 2v2. Now it's 2v1. Big advantage swings right back to BMG. And that's why if you're playing, you got to keep an eye on those respawn timers. you got to know what the situation is. Big damage by Sane, though, to get out of there. Mm. And even though he has Siphonator, he could leap some health back up. You probably don't want to fight in a 1v2. You don't get the armor back by leeching. Oh, and, he falls oh, off the map and... Hi. They actually rail him out of the air, but I guess they I guess they shafted him out of the air. But yeah, one round now. True, actually, if they didn't kill him in the air there, uh, his teammate might have respawned in the one second that uh, was left on the clock. That's true. Uh, the, the kill volume is a little bit down below there. And this is kind of more of a traditional start to the round. We're used to seeing one team take the top of that dojo area in mid, another team take the top of that water area, and just sort of hurl basketballs at each other for a while until something hits. Wow. Griffin died to Id. I have no idea how Id survived there. Yeah, he's alive here. Oh, he's got to be careful. He goes down, and that's not going to be an end of a round or anything, but that was basically a free kill he gave up, and that could come back to haunt them. You never want to give up a free kill and wipe out. Nice. Rail there by Brick. Kills going back and forth, and we're back to a hectic fighting going on. Sane throwing rockets behind him. Nice use oh of God. the Wii ball there. Oh, he's just desperately trying to get away, and he can't quite do it. We are tied right back up, and Team Smiley, no strangers to the comeback. And we're at first of four, so still uh, two rounds needed by either side. Watching Id here at lower water. He hits another direct grenade. That's four direct nades since uh, we started, since I joined and started watching these games here. 
Um, he's hitting a lot of these mids, and I love it. Yeah, I mean, they're they're kind of all or nothing. You're going to do a ton of damage if you hit someone. Oh, and the body block on the rail right there going to cost him a hit. It's going to be the last one alive. He's going to have a teammate spawning pretty quickly, though. And looking again, it's two frags for Smiley, zero for BMG. Though the Smiley players are a little bit weak, they seem to be healing. So if they can find them, yeah, you've got a bunch of bubbles coming down. they got to be careful. They get the kill on Brick, though. Position is oh, called there out is the, here. There's the knock it off does. the side of the map. Seen last alive. Respawn times are pretty low, but I think the respawn time advantage is still in favor of BMG here. Uh, Saigib, hang around. This outer area is so dangerous because you can get knocked off with an explosion weevil or projectiles. We saw it in the wipeout tournament, the get cracked uh, wipeout tournament. Someone being knocked off the edge. Yeah, even just by uh, by by shaft, if you get popped up in the air, you can push someone right off the map in a lot of different angles on this map. All right, that was a big pick right there. So you got a 3v2 for a little while. If nothing else, it'll give them the ability to eat into that armor. There's the flank. Wow. Ooh, they do trade kills there. Not, not necessarily what they wanted. They do get a kill, but uh, Yenim's going to be on his own, but looks pretty healthy. And they're going to have... This is another trap right here. He can stay alive for 10 more seconds. They'll actually have a big advantage. Pushes into the mega health room here with uh, just the pincer out, and that's going to cost him. Zane is already in position to hide. Yeah, and that's fine because now they're basically going to have a slight advantage on the armor for about 10 seconds, and then they'll be even afterwards. So if they want to be aggressive here, they can. If they want to be passive, it looks like they're going to opt to just max out their health. And yeah, BMG actually has a little bit of an advantage for frags to two this round. So the, the spawn timers will start being a factor pretty soon. Uh, that said, again, Once Smiley again. does have uh, the health advantage going into this team fight. It's true. Brick is the only player on Team BMG who has a healing weevil available, and so he could meet up with his teammate here and potentially heal him up a little bit. It needs some health. He's only on 82, but uh, it's hard to coordinate uh, to get to your teammates safely. Nice rocket jump into a rail from Id, and he looks for a second one, but he's currently in a 1v2, and he knows it. He gets double Ooh. pincered. Yeah, Sane hit a nice shot to do that initial damage, and teammate finishes him off. When you go into the open on this map, you can just take so many shots immediately. Yet I'm currently, uh, next rail is going to be 85. Misses it, though. Nice try. So, uh, situation here, BMG has about 25 seconds to be aggressive. You got Yenim down, and here we go. This is going to be a pretty long egg hunt here. Sane's got 200 health. But 15 seconds is a long time to survive, especially on a map like this that you can move around so quickly. He needs to try to single out that one player with low health. There's one kill on Brick. Gets Ooh. another around the corner. If he can finish this one off right now, that would be huge. He will have a 2v1, though, and just like that, it flips the advantage around. So he'll have a teammate for 24 seconds, and then he'll have another one for another 15 or so seconds. It was pretty crazy how he turned that into a 1v1, but then also his opponent... Oh, here it is. This is going to be the end of the round for sure. Or maybe not. Nice escape there. Yeah, still has 114 HP dropping grenades behind him. Needs seven more seconds. It's going to be so hard with three people hunting him down. Oh, and they've got him in the corner. Three HP. He heals himself with the rocket. That rocket was massive. And another one behind him, but he lives to at least give his teammates time. So you see now, uh, now Smiley's going to have to heal up here rather than being aggressive to try to finish things off. That was super insane from Id managing to survive. If he didn't hit any of those shots, if he missed any of those shots, he wouldn't have leached enough health to survive. Yeah, that big rocket to go from what to get like 50 health back, and there was like three HP yeah. and he went to 53. Massive. That allows Saigit here to just hide, and all of a sudden it's three v three, and they have the armor advantage. They can push this. Oh, but Saigib gets caught with crossfire rockets coming in. He's going to go down, and now that's going to be a minute respawn time. That's going to be a huge problem for them. Yenna, meanwhile, only 14 HP. If they can pick him off, this would be a good 2v2 situation for BMG to try to finish this thing off and take the round lead. There's been a lower water. Yenna looking for a flank, oh. but then all 
They go for his teammate. Now only 14 HP. This is very, very scary. And this is going to be a long respawn. 30 seconds. Enum here going to have to pull a rabbit out of the hat. A rabbit named Id. You got to hit that direct rocket for the 50 HP. Oh, there's All the right. first kill on Brick. That'll get a one-on-one. -on -one. He still has an armor disadvantage, and there's the shot from around the corner. Unfortunately, he was looking right. He came from the left, but uh, nice job finishing off that round. And BMG now one round away from taking it. And of course, just to remind everybody, the winner of this map, which is uh, this map is best of four, will be moving on to face uh, Team Liquid in the winner's bracket finals, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, Grand Finals coming up after this. Liquid has just been cold lamping. I don't know what they've been doing for the last hour and a half or so, but this is the advantage you get whenever you uh, go undefeated through the top bracket. You can take a nap, you can scritch your cat, you can eat, eat dinner, whatever you need to do. He yeah, with a nice blind rocket through the smoke, finds a direct connection. And he actually finishes the kill in the end. Yeah, the trades though, back and forth. Right now, three kills apiece. Oh, bad placement of that heal. It's so dangerous to place it down low. Griffin now is going to have to stay alive for just a few seconds, and then they'll actually have the advantage. Nice movement from Griffin as he moves down into the brickwork uh, hallway. I don't know what you call it, uh, but he fired some nice pre-fire rockets backwards uh, at weird angles, but I thought they might actually connect. Yeah, basically just predicting where if someone aggressively chases him. And that nice rocket, so he got just pinged with a little bit of splash damage there, but it was enough to make him stop and have to heal. And uh, that could be that could be huge, actually. He gets one kill off, kill off it. He goes down. 2v2 now, but super, super weak. Sane's got 23 HP on the run. And they're both low here. The worst case scenario is that they heal in the same bubble and eat a rocket. But... Uh... Seems like they're going to be left alone for the minute. Oh, almost get railed from behind. I do like that play by Smiley, though. Some teams would have been hyper aggressive seeing they have one player left, but you'd rather fight 3v2 with everyone at full health than 2v1 with a super weak player. Absolutely, especially on match point here in the semifinals of a tournament. You want to err on the side of caution. Unless you have a distinct advantage, then you might want to go for it. Sane, once again, last one left alive. He's just going to kind of be hiding. And this is a, a time I'd like to mention that I do have a res or I do have a stream delay <laughs> on my stream. So they can't stream snipe. Same. Yes. So plays like that. Ooh, nice job taking him out. So now we're looking at Yinum trying to stay alive. 15 seconds is going to be doable. And he's got a, a couple of uh, weak-ish players facing him down. So... If he can bait them out one at a time and kind of corral them, he can make this happen. And they go 2-1. So nice job by Yinum staying quiet. You see him crouch walking there so he doesn't make any noise. So 3v2, but again, those those three players, one of them's basically half health and the other one's even less with no armor. And now it's about to be 3v3. And if they can get to this 3v3 without taking any, any kills, oh, and they can't. They're going to get a kill on Griffin. That's going to be tricky. So now it's going to be 3v2 for a minute. Griffin accidentally threw his heal weevil at the opponent, so that was definitely a little bit of a panic moment there, but uh, what can you do? Yeah, I mean, you. like anyone else, I'm, I'm sure everyone kind of had to tweak their binds a little bit for this game, something I'm getting used to as well. You didn't have a healing weevil bind in uh, Quake? <laughs> I was just preparing huh. for it. it was... everyone did. <laughs> Ooh, double kill there coming out. They've got him into a two-on-one situation, but he will have the first teammate respawn. Oh, and they take him down. I got kind of stuck on the stairs there. It was a little bit awkward. So here we go. Last round of the match. This one would be winner take all. Winner goes on to the grand finals against Team Liquid. Oh, no. That's not how you want to start. Yenem in a 1v3 finds himself out of position. And he goes down. He eats a direct rocket, though, in response. So that might be an opportunity oh, for a big comeback. big push there by BMG. And the answer, these teams are just trading blows here back and forth. Actually, finally slowing down Brick in a tight hallway fight here, but it turns oh, into a one beat. Rocket there went right past his opponent. That's a tough one. It's really hard to hit direct rockets in this game. 
So these two teams, I'm actually kind of surprised at how aggressive they're being here. Remember, this round determines this entire match. Lower bracket finals, an opportunity to go to the grand finals, and they are just going all out right now. Ooh, BMG. Did last one alive. Not... Oh, he almost got the ambush. We could have rocketed him from behind. He can do the rocket. Oh, this is a tough spot for him. Knocks one off. Bit fortunate there. Going to do some damage and stay alive. Great smoke right there. I presume that was his. And now they turn it around. They've got the egg hunt on Sane. And that is wow. the game right there. Sane. More like insane. That was... Uh, wow, 25 kills on Saigib. He's been carrying their team through every game that I've been uh, that I've managed to spectate. He's, yeah, uh, and you notice board. and you notice though his damage is actually less than it. So that's kind of you know what we were seeing on some of the prior maps is he's kind of just you know playing that sweeper role. You know his teammates are probably being aggressive and maybe calling out weak players, and he's doing a great job of flanking, catching them from the side, from behind. Mm-hmm. Totally. But there you go. So I'm gonna head out and show the brackets. Take a quick look at that. Yeah. And uh, see what got us here. So Team Liquid, hopefully they're still around. Hopefully they didn't fall asleep. Uh, it actually wasn't that long of a layover. So because of the way that we structured this tournament, went best of one through the first three rounds of the lower bracket. It's not been that big of a wait. And uh, the final two matches here that are coming up are both going to be best of three, correct? Um, so it'll be best of three to start with. And if, um, if, if Liquid wins the first best of three, it'll be theirs. If they lose, then it'll basically be their first loss and they'll reset it. And then it'll be right. best of three for it all. So potentially could see as few as two maps or as many as six. So if you're trying to decide when to go eat dinner, just go, just go uh, throw some pizza rolls in the oven now. And be back with us in five minutes, and we'll be ready to go for the grand final. True. Oh, yeah, we are taking a uh, quick break right before the grand final, right? I believe I so. so. Um, I'm actually I'm showing the bracket right now. Just to reiterate, it is updated. we got Team Liquid versus BMG. The grand final coming up. Give you a quick look at the players here. So definitely an intriguing one. And BMG, a team that... You know, I, I think looked dangerous coming into this bracket, but it's always hard to tell how new teams are going to gel like that. And it looks like they've been doing a great job. Mm -hmm. So uh, how did the games go, uh, by the way? I haven't, I didn't get a chance to watch uh, any of Team Liquid's games um, so far. But uh, I'm sure a lot of people were waiting to see uh, Rappa playing. We saw DeHang playing in the last Get Crack tournament, and that was uh, very exciting. Well, we'll uh, put we it this way. Liquid's last three matches all ended two to one. And uh, I think the first two, yeah, the first two, they actually lost Extinction. Team Smiley is the first team out of those last three matches that they actually beat on Extinction. And they had to come back from that. So call Team Liquid Team Heart Attack because they've made it very, very close, but still come out on top. So, you know, coming through adversity like that, though, they got to be feeling a little bit more confident now, too. So even if they get challenged by BMG, um, they're probably going to feel pretty, pretty good about it. I'm very excited to see it. Uh, make sure you don't miss it. If you're waiting to watch this game coming up, make sure you tell your friends uh, to join and watch the stream. Uh, either twitch.tv slash press OK or twitch.tv slash con X5. And we'll be coming back. I have confirmation here that we're taking a five minute break. And the prize pool up has been updated. First place is going to be $240. Second place, $120. Third place, $40. And uh, donations are still open. If you'd like to donate to the prize pool, uh, I will post the link in the chat and you can go do that. Um, or if you have a command on your stream that you want to do. Yep, GC Normally, fund on mine, I'll throw it out for everyone. Just like you said, community sponsored. So people throwing in, uh, you know, whatever you got into the prize pool. But yeah, so taking a look at these brackets real quick. One thing I did want to point out is that um, so Team Smiley actually knocked BMG down into the lower bracket. A couple rounds later, they end up fighting back in a grudge match. BMG comes back to beat them to get their revenge. What that also means is that BMG has yet to play Team Liquid. So a lot of times you get into these grand finals and it's a rematch. This is not a rematch. It's one of those odd situations where due to the way the bracket played out, these two teams is the first time they're playing each other. So 
It'll be uh, very interesting to see what happens. True, yes. Um, and, I mean, that could arguably be an advantage for the team that's been waiting in the winner's bracket. I mean, they could be spectating the games, of course, while they're waiting, and they... Uh, whereas BMG has been playing this entire time, so... We'll see how it plays out. I think it'll be very interesting and oh, absolutely going to be an exciting game. Uh, but yes, we're going to take a five minute break and then we'll be back with the grand finals. Team Liquid versus Team BMG. And I will catch you after that. And by the way, shout out, we had a couple new follows and the sub. Appreciate that, Dion. I was caught up in the intense action of the video game experience. But don't think I'm not looking at chat. I'll see y'all. So shout out to those of you. We're almost at the seven hour mark. Appreciate everyone that's been hanging out with us, including my cat. Shout out to my cat. If I knew it was going to be uh, this docile all day, I would have set up the cat cam ahead of time. So we'll get that going next time. <laughs> Dang, didn't know you had a cat on stream. I've been watching the wrong stream this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I usually do. I, so I, I actually just moved. This is my first cast at the new house. So I didn't get quite everything set up. Uh, but yeah, webcam. And I'll point it right at the cat, and next time we'll just have... Cats are money, man. I'm just saying, that's... Nobody really tunes in for me. They tune in for the cat, and they, they let me know about it. So uh, he's the money maker, which is kind of nice, though. So at the old house, we're actually paying pet rent. So he had to earn his keep. This one, uh, we actually own it, so we don't have to charge pet rent, but he does need to pay a share of the mortgage. <laughs> That could be really tough. Um, I mean, congratulations on the new place, but I know uh, from streaming, like when you change your setup, it can be really tough to get everything exactly how it was. And uh, especially with sound, <clears throat> I know a lot of streamers uh, struggle to get their sound and audio right. Uh, once you change it, you gotta fiddle yeah. with it for <clears throat> their hour and a half. Yeah, the benefit I do have of this place, hey, just got another sub kit. Last, hey, what's up, Last? Where have you been, man? But uh, 
But yeah, you know, getting to move it. I, I'm just happy that I haven't smashed my face on my mic yet because the mic stands in a completely different location. Um, don't want to bleed on stream. All right, so it looks like we got players in the server. Um, I, I told them we'd let them go and we're know when we're ready to go. I'm pretty much set up here. Me too. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, cool. You, you can go ahead and type if you want to say that we're ready to go. I will just uh, take another sip of my water and settle in. So anyone just joining us, this is the grand finals. We got Team Liquid coming undefeated, but just barely. A couple of three map nail biters leading them to this point. BMG on the bottom. They'll be uh, in green on my stream. And of course, I'm being joined here by Press OK. And uh, yeah, we're going to be Game kicking off right now. First game mode, of course, is going to be Extinction, as it has been for the rest of this tournament. Uh, each player has three lives. Lose them all. Other team scores a point. Wow. Yeah, nice, nice rail there. A couple of quick kills. So you kind of wonder, when, when Liquid's been um, had this much downtime, I don't know, have they been warming up? I don't know if they've been practicing. We haven't really been keeping an eye on them. Uh, but you, you kind of wonder if it takes, if you, if you come in sleepy, if you come in a little bit slow. But they look very sharp already. Absolutely. Although they have lost position on the power up, which is going to be spawning in 30 seconds here. Uh, they have enough time to get it back, for sure. Yeah, it looked like they pushed over, wanted to grab that second red first and foremost. Waz has kind of pushed out on his own, though. He's in a position where he can actually see the red, and, and I think they're splitting up now to try to cut people off. Oh, and there's a nice kill on, on Id. Wow. And uh, six lives oh, down. Waz actually... EMP. Misses the rocket jump, goes up and dives right into the Vindicator. That could be a huge turnaround right there. They give up the power up and a couple of kills. Huge uh, life difference on the team is now whittled down to just two lives. Although Saigib last a life, he has Vindicator. Oh, wow. Mega health was about to spawn too. Yeah, he, he died, died right on top of the Mega. Really unfortunate. Thanks, yeah, chat, for two. letting me know I did catch up with the uh, with the scene there. <laughs> BMG spawning in the power-up room, and that means they're going to get the mega health and not much else. But uh, they do have advantage if they want to hold the power-up room for a little bit. First frag is going to be Waz on Brick. Rafa gets a kill on Id. ID. Uh, that's another few quick frags for Team Liquid right at the start of a round. Waz with a nice pincer shot there, follows it up with a second one, and that's going to be another kill. First death for Team Liquid finally happens as the hang goes down. Yeah, I mean, they've been the first 30 seconds of every round, and we've seen this in their pre prior matches. This is really where they shine, just getting organized in those opening moments when everyone's still trying to organize and get their weapons under their belt and everything. They've been churning out kills. They've been very aggressive, and it's been paying off. Hey, your stream's on BRB. Uh, it's not anymore, thanks. Alright. Rafa with the... Oh no, he goes down. Rafa had the Vindicator power up there where he takes reduced damage, but uh, if you have low health, any amount of damage is still going to probably kill you. Waz picks it up and then he gets the red armor, so he's got a nice stack and he's going to be able to survive for quite a while here. Huge life lead advantage for Team Liquid, of course, uh, as you can see at the top there. Oh, a couple Waz. rails in a row by Waz, and we are all the way down now to... There it is, Saigib hiding in a corner. I was like, where is he? He's over by the red, looking for it to spawn, but he's going to have to give that one up. And this is the interesting situation you find yourself in, where you don't want to give up uh, a pickup like that uncontested, but you try to contest him and you go down. Game starts in three, mm. round three, two, <laughs> one. Fight. Let's see if uh, Team BMG can maybe try to preserve their lives a little bit longer because that's two rounds in a row where they've lost a lot of lives right at the beginning of the round. And, yeah. And uh, that comes to you later. I think they're going to want to slow this one down. I think it would benefit them to just say, hey, let's choose a spot. Let's choose a weapon even and get three of us there and then play from there. Mm -hmm. It's important to have a good plan at the start of a round before all chaos breaks loose and then you have to adapt. Mm. And yeah, I mean, uh, Liquid just completely descended <laughs> and sweeped them out. So one death apiece for everyone on BMG already. All 
Although the life uh, difference is a lot closer this round. Let's see who's in position for the Siphonator. It's going to be the first power up. Ooh, Siphonator gets grabby. He's the last one alive. He's going to be running away. Or last one, I should say, on it. Running away, but he will be able to pass that along. So they're going to try to get some heals with it. And uh, this is actually the most vulnerable Team Liquid has looked in this match. Totally. BMG are up by one life now. Uh, they could potentially heal each other with the Siphonator power up there. And uh, power up itself could ensure another kill. Up by two lives now as the hang goes down. Rafa last alive for Team Liquid and he gets 3v1. Tough spot to find himself in there at the end of the round. It's going to be the first round on the board for Team BMG. 2-1 to one is the score for Team Liquid. Watching Waz as he spawns on the Mega Health and gets Shaft and Blue Armor. Nice start for Waz. Yeah, so I'm following Id right now and a pretty slow start to the round for him. And again, I, th I think that actually plays into their hands. I mean, they've actually got a quick lead here early on in this one. And even the players that are alive for Liquid are weak, but a full team wipe there. As Liquid just destroys them, comes through, and that's just going to reset them. And that's the thing in this game mode, when you die, you also lose everything. It's much like TDM. Waz Ow. tried to rocket jump and killed himself. Oh, no. So the scoreline is basically even in lives here almost. And uh, Rafa has got good control over the power-up room. Uh, with the shaft, finds a second one on the teleporter exit. Wow, that rocket did no damage. Strange. Oh man, so already a, a lead again, another round where lead goes to BMG, and this is this is map point for Liquid. Oh, and a huge grab of that power up right in front gets the kill, and now we are one player apiece. Two lives on each team, both on one player each. Nice spam from Waz with the Vindicator is going to hit get a single rocket kill. And he's going to find Mega Health on top of that. So this is going to be quite the Vindicator spree if he can keep it Ooh. up. There's another kill, and that is on a living player, so that life is very valuable. And uh, his stack continues to increase. Power up ran out now. Defeat. Yeah, it looks like they got the kill. Didn't even need the Vindicator to get that kill. So first map by Liquid and... and Again, uh, they've had troubles. They've been struggling with Extinction up until this, this match. And so the Grand Finals is a good time to turn it on. Absolutely. And uh, so, of course, the losing team gets to pick the next game mode between Wipeout and MacGuffin, if uh, I'm not mistaken, and the map as well. That was a really nice Vindicator spree there uh, by Waz on the last round. Uh, it really kind of was the nail in the coffin for the uh, life difference that was pretty close otherwise. All right, so this is this is tournament, I don't know, map if you will. <laughs> they just need one more map one here to, to seal the deal. It's mode point, if you will. <laughs> and, and I'm a little bit surprised. So this was BMG's choice, right? Mm hmm Yeah, Liquid's looked very, very good in MacGuffin, but they've looked really good on Marina. So we'll see what happens uh, on a different map. Oh, Dehang getting the red armor spawn. That's going to give him the ability to be very uh, aggressive early on. He can pick up whatever weapons he wants and... Decide what he wants to do with it. I think he's probably going to back up. Look for some weapons. If he can grab that MacGuffin with that remaining armor, it'd be great, but he does get flanked. Well, the stack advantage he had is lost. MacGuffin about to spawn. It's right in the center of the map on the low ground. Saigib is going to find himself a red armor right before MacGuffin spawns. Ooh, all three of Liquid players right in front of a double kill here. Looking for a third. Can't quite get it, but does a ton of damage. Enemy MacGuffin. So after all of that, Rafa still ends up in his, with it, in his hands, and Liquid likes to pass the MacGuffin. We've seen that from them all day long. Vindicator. They all go down, though, so Dehang, though, does Enemy scoop MacGuffin. up Keg, and it looks like they're going to be in position for the Vindicator. Uh, 
he gets uh, he doesn't get the power up but he wins the power up for his team on top of that and it actually goes down it's loose on its spawn waz with one health is going to recover the vindicator but it goes down again at the top the hang finally picks it up they need to get in position to make use of this as soon as possible yeah that's that the thing is, is they've been fighting over this vindicator but meanwhile points are on the board for bmg mm -hmm. getting the vindicator here will not mean too much if they can't capitalize on it to get a kill and uh cap but, uh, in the yeah. end oh the rocket jump by Sigib going right into their face that might have just been a ploy to just get a couple more points on the board just to turn them around. But in any case, 37 points on that hold. And they didn't really have to do a whole lot of defending. In fact, it's still live. So, okay, this time they did circle back and defend. And there's going to be to hang in their face. Sitting right on the point. And he goes down. So, so far, a great defense here. Mm -hmm. Excellent positioning there from Saigib. Uh, Rafa. On the run, he gets caught at the rail in 1v2, manages to get both kills. He has one health. He goes down, but Hang recovers the MacGuffin, so he's going to be able to cap that. Uh, or... Almost. Nope. Brick grabs it, and he's on his way out. Finds himself with 50 health, picks up the RL, but he won't be able to get in there, so he's going to have to take the teleporter. Oh, it gets cut off. That's a smart cut off there, knowing where exactly he was going to go. So that basically just erased all the points that he may have banked if he could have uh, gotten to the cap point. That said, still a big lead here for BMG, and they do manage to get it in there. This Vindicator could be their opportunity to seal the deal in this round. Rafa's going to go for the for the MacGuffin, so he's not even going to go for the Vindicator. He's just going to get the MacGuffin moving. Now the question is, what does he do with it now? Oh, gets railed. Similar story on the power-up side. Brick picking up the Vindicator, and as I was thinking, what is he going to do with it? He gets railed and goes down. Red and Mega both went to the Hang, who now has that Vindicator. This could be a big run for him. He can keep some shaft ammo in his hands. Two quick really kills. Nice. He should be able to cap this. Let's see which way he wants to take it. I'm actually surprised, though, that he didn't have his teammate capping that while he was defending it. But in any case, they do get it moving. Um, and none too soon because the next time green, next time I should say uh, BMG caps that, they're pretty much going to be in sudden death. And they do get it moving already, so Saigib touches it and we've only got a few seconds left to hold and take this first round. Big shotgun blast coming out. It comes out from the side. They are just waiting. They get one quick touch. Oh, nice job with the chapter, and that may do it. There it goes, round one. Solidly going to BMG. I'm going to look at the scoreboard here. We've got uh, a kill lead. Not that kills are a determining factor in this mode, but we got a significant kill lead for Team BMG. Uh, also, their damage output seems to be higher as well. Yeah, I remember this was their uh, both mode and map pick. We've seen Liquid do really well on Marina in this game type but we haven't really seen them play this map as much so maybe there was a strategic move it with a really nice position and he's got an 85 damage rail ready to go for this mcguffin spawn misses it mcguffin recovered and taken towards red armor by team liquid yeah waz gonna look good now with that extra armor he can eat these rockets and maybe get a kill when teddy just runs away but He'll be in position to at least slam it home and get a couple points on the board. But he I really had trouble defending has Liquid. I think that's been the difference in this game so far is BMG, whenever they've gotten at home, have held them off. Even if it's just 20, 30 seconds at a time, that's big chunks of points. Enemy vindicated. Here spawns. Brick picks it up. He's got 82 health. He's got a shotgun. That's the weapon you want to have as you're leaving the Vindicator spawn area. Uh, let's see how they use this Vindicator to get points. He's poking in with a pincer. Looking around. Um, I think he went to the wrong base. <laughs> yeah, he did, actually. <laughs> I said he was poking in, and then I realized he's uh, poking in the wrong base. Well, he cleared the so base with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just like I was saying, they've had trouble defending Liquid, coming up with a huge defense right now in this round. Wow, 
really strong play here from BMG. Even though they're down by uh, 60 points at the moment, playing it really well. Nice pincer shot from DeHang. Guffin loose near the base. Rafa hesitating to go for it. Yeah, I mean, very good decision. It is a little bit more of a uh, methodical approach here by BMG, but they're, they're gonna pay for it. They're actually not gonna get anywhere with it. And uh, Liquid has completely changed the complexion of this game in the second round. True. Although Waz forced out of the ideal path that he wanted to take back to his base, finds himself uh, jumping around the map. 50 armor is not bad. Finds his way back to the base and caps. Yeah, and keep in mind the first two rounds, they basically trade sides, right? That's very true. So uh, do you think that maybe the one base is the reason for the win? I think that this I think this capture point is harder to deny. Because you can go, you can fly straight in there and just touch it, right? Whereas the other one, you might get caught up on that, uh, that ramp jump to get up to it. So you mm -hmm. have to rethink, you have to be a little bit more uh, thoughtful with how you approach it. Totally. And the uh, jump pad is deadly on the other base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Both jump pads, actually. And there you go. Round over. A hundred to nothing. Liquid coming back in a big way. And so here we go. Map point. Game starts in three, round three, two, one. And actually tournament point now for Team Liquid. Very true. I just remind everyone that uh, on the third round of MacGuffin, if it goes to a third round, you can choose either base as your home base. So whichever one you deliver the MacGuffin to becomes your base for the rest of the round. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see in a round like this if they've already talked about that, if they said, hey, this is the one we want, y'all. Mm -hmm. So Brick right now has some good cool armor. He was trying to flank. Still has some armor if he can get, get hold of this. So Aid with the 100 armor, he's going to grab that. Where is he going to go with it? Looks like he's heading towards base A, which is the base that has not won around in this matchup. That's true. It looked like he hesitated for a second there, too, and he wanted to go to the other base, but we'll see how it plays out. At least he's got a 2v1 fight here. Yeah, I mean, you certainly, you'll certainly you take 15, 20 points on the board uh, over base selection, I'm sure, either way. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the math would add up there. 15 oh, points. Oh, and Vindicator on top of that. This could be a huge opportunity for them to come up big early on. And remember, this is tournament point, but this is also map point. So if they can take this round, force a map three, they can try to reset the bracket. Mm -hmm. And I think if they keep suiciding into the Vindicator, that's going to cost them another 30 points on the board because they really need to regroup and plan an attack here. Another death on the board as Id with the Vindicator is just melting. Yeah, I mean, this is a little bit... Uh uncharacteristic for a team as experienced as Liquid. It's just kind of like churn on in, right? Run into the buzzsaw uh, one at a time. I mean, ultimately they're going to get it back and it basically costs them, like you said, another 20 to 30 points probably. Hmm. Although they have control now. Seems like they've got a plan here. Laz carrying MacGuffin. He's in a 1v, or a 2v1, 3v1. Yeah, one of the so advantages, whenever whenever the other team is defending their base, that does give you time to get back control of the pickups in, in mid and get your mega and red armor, everything, the timing back. Mm -hmm. um, so meanwhile, they are racking up points. He's going to be able to bank right here. So 10 points almost immediately. They're going to have to defend this for a while, though, to pull back even, um, which they did prove last round they could do. I mean, that's the thing. The like, first and second round were complete opposites as far as how these teams played and how things played out. Mm -hmm. But as you just said, when you are uh, in your base, you're not picking up as many items, so it's really tough to get that stack back. And uh, you have to maintain the HP you have in order to defend with it. Big fight on the high ground. Enemy Meanwhile... Team Team this is going to be big points on the board for Team Liquid. Yeah, I mean, Liquid's close game. to tying this one up. Yeah, exactly. So the first round, we saw BMG doing a great job defending and Liquid having trouble. Second round, they completely turned the tables and now one side and then the other, and we are dead even. How often do you see that three minutes into a MacGuffin round? Yeah, this is an incredibly close game, and Brick does not want to commit to uh, carrying the MacGuffin into their base. He's actually taking it back to the enemy base, but he does definitely does know that it's not his base. He's just <laughs> trying to formulate 
a strategy here. This is actually kind of 300 IQ. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a situation where I don't know if they're waiting for a specific power up spawn. Like, I don't know if he's going to cycle through Mega or if he's just saying, hey, I'm not, I'm going to wait till you clear out base and just stack these points up. It's like, I've got, oh, there's the Mega. So now he's got to feel pretty confident about his, about his ability to get home and bank those points. Yeah, absolutely. And he definitely has 10 points in his pocket from holding it for that long. That was a really nice play from Brick. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those plays that we've we've talked about, like, hypothetically, and it's kind of a risk, but haven't really seen it done as methodically as that, as deliberately as that. But it paid off. I mean, they're already up to 90 points, and remember, this is, uh, this is map points, so if they take this round, they'll force a tiebreaker. And here we go, last few seconds. Liquid's running out of time. We're up to 99 points. They've got one on. He goes down. No, they pick it up. Okay. 99 points on the board and Liquid has zero room for error right now. True, and they have decent stacks and control. McGuffin in their base. This could be a comeback. We've seen some crazy comebacks already. But, uh, yeah, really it looks tough. like there was a pretty good clear control. right there though. So, so here we go. They're going to try to slam this home and, and pretty much just need one round of kills. You got vindicator coming up are they going to circle around and take the vindicator first that could be huge if they can get it Enemy vindicator. it is kind of out of position he went for the blue i thought he went you know he's looking for the red went for the blue but not for the vindicator that left the vindicator for waz to take and only 100 hp but their base. Overtime. but where's uh, team liquid right now yeah i don't know waz was out of position here he took the vindicator and then went back for the red nobody was in position to reset the timer and liquid kind of got lost in the last minute there and BMG made him pay. Mm -hmm. that so was, that... uh, I mean, it is, has been a really good flag carrier or MacGuffin carrier. Like uh, he has the ability to just disappear and you don't know where he is. And then suddenly he has capped and you're already in overtime. But uh, definitely, like you said, they didn't have any room for error. And so the one error was um, just not watching the enemy base. Id snuck in there, got the quick cap, and that was it. So that's going to bring us into a third game mode here, which is going to be Wipeout, uh, Loser's Map Pick. And then if uh, BMG win this one, there's going to be another best of three since they came from the Loser's Bracket. If I'm not mistaken, that's uh, the case. Yeah, they'll reset the bracket. We'll do another best of three, same format. Now, one little wrinkle there is if they go to a second best of three, they can't choose any of the same maps. So that's where something like that MacGuffin choice gets interesting because on this map, which we're not going to see here right now, on Marina, um, we've seen Liquid be very dominant on, on MacGuffin. So interesting, you know, it could have been a strategic choice there for BMG to choose uh, Sunken instead. Looks like we're going to be on Furnace. Yeah, I could imagine uh, definitely Marina over Sunken. Like, Furnace. if you have a strong team, Marina is going to feel like much more of a stomp. It's a little bit... Oh. Uh, I just got... Huh. Invalid version. Furnace. Uh, do we need to restart, restart. our games yeah. and do an update? I would guess that is the case. Let's just uh, verify. Yeah, everyone left, so... Huh. I'm going to restart the game. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Take a wild guess that that's what we have to do. If not, we'll see. All right, well, bear with us, y'all. Yeah, there is an update. Mm-hmm. All right, relaunching right now. I'm I wish so I was re-dinnering. <laughs> I've got that slow Canadian internet. I I am on fiber now. One good thing about the new house. Nice. All right, so I guess we're gonna look for then a new key for the uh, for the new lobby. So that's a good point.
Um, again, one last time, I just want to shout out to our sponsors. This tournament was sponsored by Prevail Gaming. Um, and thank all the donators. We got Azerite, everyone on the Prevail team, Lady Drac, Skiz, Blindlight, and Dradic. Thank you very much for supporting the tournament. All the donations went to the prize pool, which is going to be divided among the top three teams, top three finalist teams. All right, it looks like other people are rejoining the same key. I just posted that in, in Discord for you. Yep. Yeah. So if you wanted more drama, how about an, a game update in the middle of the grand finals right before we go to the tiebreaker map? Oh, I'm sure it was just some <laughs> small minor map tweak that doesn't make a difference. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the days back when you were playing, you know, Counter-Strike or whatever at LAN events and Valve would force an update and everyone would have to wait for like two hours while every single tournament PC got updated. <laughs> So while we're waiting for people to reconnect, we've got Icarus TTV in the chat who is asking how far into the tournament we are. Uh, this is the grand finals of the tournament. Team Liquid versus, uh, I never remember the acronym unless it's on my screen, BMG. <laughs> yes. I've been keeping my cheat sheet on the side with all of the all of the team names. Me too, but I've got seven windows on my second monitor and it's insane. <laughs> yeah, I need to put, I need to get a third, honestly. Yeah, same. It's impossible to cast from home, I guess, without a third. Um, but again, shout out to uh, you and me and all the other streamers and everyone who's helped organize the tournament. It's gone pretty smoothly overall. This is a community-run tournament, and uh, there was a lot of hard work put into it. Thank you to uh, Force on the Discord, and he's probably in the chat, and uh, everyone who has contributed to this. And of course, all the players. Uh, these are fantastic players, and it's really a pleasure to watch all of them. Yeah, and, and I mean, a big a big tournament here. Lots of, uh, we even went to best of three early, so keeping this going, um, keeping things rolling. This is a tournament that easily could have ended up taking like two days if people weren't on the ball. So really appreciate the players sticking with it. Um, we are approaching, we're a little over the seven hour mark for my stream, so... We have been at it Furnace. for a while, but uh, here we go. This could be the last map, or it could be the, the one that resets the brackets and sends us back to another best of three. So I, I don't know if it's just my perception. It seems like Furnace is almost everyone's favorite wipeout map. Um, we definitely see Wellspring picked by some teams, uh, but I feel like a lot of people are, are really big on this map. And I wonder if these two teams are on the same page because you sometimes wonder like, do you pick to your strength? Do you pick to an opponent's weakness? True. Um, I, from personal experience and also tournaments that we've seen, um, Furnace is, Definitely the top pick map, you're, you're right. I think it probably lends itself to the fact that it's big, but it's not um, cluttered, I guess. It's a lot of nice angles to find, for sure. <laughs> All right, we are live. Here we go. Third map tiebreaker in the grand finals. Remember, it is tournament point for Liquid. If they win this map, it is all theirs. If BMG can win this map, they will force a reset bracket and we'll be playing again on different maps, which could be an interesting ripple here. Indeed. Team Liquid uh, will be the tournament winners if they manage to win this map. Nice pick from Waz from the Blue Room he is going to uh, equalize the game. 
Wow. Saigate with a nice falling rocket down by the teleporter. Yeah, we see great teamwork here. So Brick and Id double teaming. You, you saw the rocket jump. He basically just flanked all the way around him. And, and that's one thing these teams, by this point, you know, the teams at this level all have very good communication. They're going to be on the same page with their calls. Oh, to hang with the Wii Ball boost. Mid-air rail is going to have another chance at a rocket. Those rockets can be deadly whenever you have the siphon. Wow. And, and just like that, survive. turns it back wow. around. Now it's the last one alive. Only 66 HP. He's going to be in kind of, a, of an obvious spot. So I'm actually surprised they haven't run anybody through there yet. Wow, Rafa, that rocket almost connected. It was such a nice prediction rocket. Yeah, now Saigib. And what's ended up happening here is just, the, I don't know if it's on purpose, but they're turning the corner, they're attacking players right after the siphon ends. So they can't even heal themselves. Oh no, this is really bad. Brick was actually spotted there from green uh, or from blue, but he thought he was hidden. So that could have gone much worse. Yeah, no damage on Brick so far. He's going to circle around, try to meet up with a teammate. I mean, right now it's 2v2 for 15 seconds. This isn't the worst position in the world for BMG to be, given that they're down two frags. Oh, and there it is, only down by one. So they have an egg hunt. It's kind of it's kind of not real, honestly. There we go, back to 2v2. But eking their way back in. They just have to stay. Oh, and there we go, another kill on, on Waz. And now they're going to have a 2v1 scenario. And uh, let's see where to hang decides to go. I feel like that grenade would have worked in Quake, but it just didn't bounce. Nice rockets from the hang as he juggles into a rail. That's going to be oh, enough. Oh, double but... rail takes him out. Ghost busted there by the pincer shots. Never cross the streams. <laughs> so just like that, uh, we're only, remember, we're only playing to four rounds. So first round going to BMG up early. Of course, anything can happen. We've seen Liquid come back in so many game modes already today. Lots of trades coming out. Gotta hate the smoke, the smoke weevil in the blue room. <laughs> it's yeah. gonna be chaos every time. It's like there's a fire in the club and you just don't know where to go. <laughs> so dead even three to three frags so far. So it should be pretty even on the respawns. You do get a pretty big one there, 3v2. But the two players are fresh spawns. They have full armor. Big damage count output there by Id. They do have one person locked down. Oh, and the double rocket. Siphonator versus Siphonator. Waz comes out on top of that one. I think Waz be... cleared the team right there. I think he got uh, all three kills, if I'm not mistaken, because he hit the rocket with the double kill and then the finisher right there. Big, big round there by Waz. <laughs> yeah, it just looks like a rave with all of the shafts bouncing around and then all <laughs> the laser light show in the smoke. Oh, nice rocket by Sidegib catches him healing. Uh... Wow, nice fadeaway rocket from DeHang, who was healing in lower pipes, and then, uh, wow, he's even shooting through the pipes. I yeah, that grenade that. right there, like, so precise. It's, and if you miss that, you might very well smack yourself with a grenade. So a lot of confidence in that shot there. True, although this is Wipeout, there's uh, no self-damage. So worst case scenario, he launches himself across the map, because the grenades have insane knockback for some reason. <laughs> It hiding in this corner. We've seen a couple of people get caught in that corner before. And that's the thing. This is a map where there are... Ooh, nice turnaround rail there by Id. There's actually a lot of places you can try to hide to heal in this map. But if they're predictable, then people are going to be searching for it. It's true. And uh, it's almost one of those uh, rock, paper, scissors types mechanics where uh, the spot that seems the safest actually becomes the least safe because it's the first one that gets checked. Rafa's super low here, unable to find a healing weeble from a teammate. And there it is from Waz. That's going to keep him in the game a little bit longer and preserve his respawn time. Oh, they got him back in the blue room. That's a tough, tough place to fight your way out of. A lot of teams like to hole up in there, but if you're on even numbers, ooh. <laughs> 
Really nice play from Rafa, actually. He rocket jumped to his own death, but it was intentional because uh, he just wanted HP for the next wave of BMG players that he had to fight. Yeah, I mean, remember, it's all a timing thing. It's not necessarily about... Uh, it's it's all about killing the entire team at once. So there are times when you, you might actually just be okay being kind of suicidal and giving up a death in order to reset your health, especially if your timer is really fast. Totally. And even though it's a fairly new game game mode for most people, the uh, just having that gamer instinct, knowing when what feels like the right time to die and respawn. <laughs> We've seen the, the action slow down a lot here. Saigib is just in the corner. Oh, wow. nice. It's a second rail, too. That's nice. Yeah, big damage coming out. Rafa running around, almost dead. There we go. They take him out 2v2 right now. But this is actually going to be a pretty good advantage for BMG health-wise. They're going to heal up and... Uh, Probably a smart play because they've got the advantage. The hang's going to be down. Oh, they've got one more shot. Oh, my God. The turnaround oh. gets the kill and heals himself. The hang should be dead, but instead he's healing. One on one now. He's on fire, but down to 16 HP. One shot could do it. He needs to survive for another 13 seconds. I think he knows that the odds are quite low. He needs to leech something, but hitting that rail will maybe seal the deal. Oh, and there it is. Oh you saw the rocket God. jump out. Great reaction by Brick. And he knew he had nothing to lose because his teammate had come back, right? They had two people left, so even if they traded there, even if he had lost, it would have been fine. Five. So huge round there to take the lead. These rounds are just elongating now. These teams understand what's at stake. Again, third map, tiebreaker, and the first best of three. Liquid can still come back and win the tournament with this, or they may have to face him in another best of three. Uh, that entire round was really insane for Dehang. Earlier that round, he had a nice uh, direct nade vertically. Uh, if someone wants to go and clip that whole round, that would be super awesome. Uh, I caught most of it from Dehang's perspective, I think. The weapon combos from this level of players are just so insane. I mean, you peek out, if someone sees you somewhere, you know, you're not taking one shot. You're not taking, like, a little bit of splash damage. You might take a rocket and a rail at the same time. You might have two people on you with shotties. Absolutely. So BMG with one more frag. Two more frags so far in this round. A little bit of a lead in that case. What can they do take, with it? Taking a quick look at the scoreboard here while... Uh, oh, it looks like we might get some action in the blue room, actually. Yeah, it looks like nice Liquid nade. healing in the blue room. It, it seems like such a great place to hole up, but if the other team knows you're there, they can just dive in and erase you. There's no room to maneuver. Pretty That's even true. trade there, but up to a, a star, actually I should say still a two frag lead for BMG. Uh, two quick rails by DeHang. But he's going to be on his own for 22 seconds now. Caught with the rail out there. But he's leaking. Yeah, he just gets Not double enough. double shafted down. You can beat a shaft one on one with a siphon. 2v2, though, you're just going to get melted down to butter. And it is now match point for BMG. If they win this round, they will reset the bracket and we'll bring you three more rounds. Or I guess three more maps, I should say. Mm -hmm. And entirely original maps, right? Yeah, exactly. We will not be repeating maps in this match. All the flank on Brick. He's going to go down. Laz with a nice shotgun blast. Last player for uh, BMG. Fell back into the blue room. But uh, all their players are alive now. 3v3 again. Yeah, it's so hard. Again, when you're stuck in the blue room, you just don't get to dictate the combat. You're reacting at that point, and such a death trap. Now, this is a bit of a trap here for Liquid. They've got him 3v1, but everybody's weak. And if they can't multi-team, if they can't triple-team them, this could be a, a Dark Horse situation where they take out all three. There's one. Oh, he did lose that Siphon, but now a 2v2 heavily in BMG's favor. If I'm Liquid at that point, I think you probably have to, have to go against your instinct and go heal. Absolutely. Or one person um, rushes in and dies immediately, so you get that respawn ticking. And then come back with full HP and armor, so you have some insurance on the board. Yeah, still a slight advantage here for Liquid. Six kills to five. Oh, the double team Shafter. They're going to melt down to hang. 
Oh, and they just, the Venn diagram's so tiny. And he dives in and eats double shaft, and that'll be a win for BMG. Oh, wow. And they're going to reset the bracket one more match, one more time. So we've got another best of three. The bracket is reset. It's yep, crazy, and they cannot stuff. they cannot repeat maps, remember. Mm -hmm. I guess we're going to be just staying in the same lobby? or I think so, yeah, and we're going to be going right back to Extinction. Um, so I think we played... Oxide this time? I actually yeah, forget. Yeah. Yeah, it was Oxide. Uh, people in the chat love the Venn, Venn diagram. I was thinking, like, there was only enough spot, uh, enough space for one person to get the double heal there. And that was so funny. Yeah, I was wondering if you could fit two there, if they were just kind of dump, you know, bumping up against <laughs> each other like they're in a subway or something. <laughs> so I think they're still dis uh, going to need to discuss kind of what happens next. Mm -hmm. Uh, admins are in uh, voice chat together, so I'm sure this will be sorted out in a second, and then we will have second best of three, winner takes all for this tournament grand finals between uh, Team Liquid and Team BMG. And it has been a great tournament so far, every part of it. Yeah, it's, it's been kind of amazing how many close matches we've seen come out, and and not just close, sometimes you play... You play uh, I don't know, a game mode like, uh, like, like, uh, what should I say, like Wipeout. It's kind of easy for two teams to have a close ish match in Wipeout. Um, unless you lose in like 30 seconds, it's really hard to just get completely wiped out. So you get a couple teams reasonably close in love, and you're going to have some close matches. But to see that both for like McGuffin and even for Extinction, and how close they've been and how many third map matches we've seen, yeah, it's been a really exciting tournament. Mm hmm. Now, do you think um, part of why it's been quite exciting is that the game has been out a little bit longer now. People have had a few extra hours to play at, you know, whatever time is best for them. Uh, is that a factor in the practice, do you think? Or um, maybe... It probably, it probably depends. I mean, honestly, in early in a game like this, you're always going to have that, where some people are kind of outperforming what people would expect, and some people are underperforming. Um... Mm -hmm. You know, like not to not to judge anyone on that level, but someone like Rafa, right? Someone might come in and say, "What Rafa didn't just dominate everyone in every single moment?" You know, well maybe he hasn't been playing as much as some of the other folks. He's been, you know, having other things going on, right? Like maybe he hasn't played in the closed betas. So that can play a factor. Um, they clicked in, but okay, here we go. Yeah, we're live. We're gonna be on Icefall for Extinction. This is the the real grand finals, the grand grand final. This best of three will absolutely decide it. We will not see more than three more maps played. And this uh, is where those eight. map choices come into play. I mean, again, remember we played Oxide last time, so this is now the choice here, and there's no decision to be made. So whether one team favors it or the other, this is what we got. Absolutely nice teamwork from both teams. Uh, currently in life lead, Team Liquid. Um, and the stacks are about even, so it's really going to come down to positioning and uh, taking good fights here. Everyone's HP is dropping like flies. Yeah, I mean, you do have the first uh, elimination, though, on Liquid. Vindicator coming up, and Vindicator is just so critical here. Oh, nice fadeaway rocket by DeHang. We'll see who they try to give the Vindicator to. Looks like it goes down. DeHang's going to end up with it in his hands. We got one I think person he fired left alive. that rocket before he picked up the Vindicator, and then it did 119 damage. But <laughs> not sure. So Vindicator plus Red. He's just running around with a machine gun, melting fools right now. <laughs> he still he still has the shaft up, and now he's going after the ghost. But he he needs to try to find that target player. It and Brick go down, but where is Psygib? Can he find him? Oh, he does find him, and Psygib takes him down. 
Vindicator had been over those, so great timing there. Nice try by Saigib to escape there, hugging the wall as tightly as he could, but he was unable to make it out alive. Interesting to see Brick actually took the red armor there. I'm not sure if he realized Saigib was right behind him. Uh, sometimes it can be good to stack items or power-ups on the ghosts, you know, let them be aggressive, especially um, if, I don't know, if your um, life leader feels like they're in danger anyways. Yeah, so to hang now uh, with two two lives right alongside Saigib, we're going to go on board on my side with Saigib with Sai and see what he does. He's holding down the red armor room here, although he is alone right now, which is the scary part. Oh, yeah, we saw three liquid players around that mega. He's going to get away and get that red, but he's going to have to be on the run quickly. Probably going to circle around and grab those double health packs around the corner. To hang on his last life, taking a little bit of damage there. I didn't catch uh, what was happening, but uh, taking another pincer shot from the pincer room. And uh, certainly he's a little bit scared here of his current HP and last life. Yeah, and this Vindicator is going to be so important now. I mean, this this round has lasted so long, you got another one popping, and you have to get your teammates to it, which means the Hang's probably going to be all alone. Enemy Vindicator. Vindicator going to id on 46 health. Nice pincer shot from id is going to get one kill, but it's not the one they need. There's another pincer shot on another ghost. Yeah, essentially he's just defending, uh, defending Saigib at that point. Interesting that they seem to lose track of the red armor spawn. Uh, could be just the fact that this is uh, the second best of three, a lot of pressure in the grand finals, and maybe if you lose the timing once, it can take a lot of work to get it back. Yeah, we have seen zero uh, key lives lost in the last couple minutes here. This team's oh, and there's a turnaround on Waz, but they're gonna try to they're trying to turn around. Okay, everywhere everywhere Saigib goes right now, he's got ghosts looking at him. He's doing a great job of keeping him at bay. But he just takes a shot there. Another shot. He's down to 51 HP. To and there it is. They chased him down around the mega health. So a four-minute round to kick believe... things off. I can't believe that last minute that the hang survived. It was crazy. He was literally scraping by on 25s and taking damage every time. It's, uh, round two here. Big fight coming out in the mega health room. Wow. Really nice play there from Waz, and he had a good use of the slow weevil, but it just didn't work out. Yeah, so kind of surprised to see the aggression here. The hang diving in there, but down to 21 HP. Both teams just kind of like diving at each other right now. Kill after kill popping out. This might be, you know, we're 30 seconds in and we're already down to two, two, twos, one, one, two. Yeah, this is crazy. Like, is the MacGuffin about to spawn here, or what? Yeah, Everyone's exactly. Just this kind of looks in. like the, no the MacGuffin spawn, yeah. <laughs> oh, Mega does go to WAS, so Liquid really, really wanted that power-up, and they did get it. Um, but more importantly, they got the kills around it as well, so they're going to be in great position here to try to take this round back. Vanguard spawning here. WAS in position to take it, he's going to get it, and he's got 100 armor on top of that. He's almost ignoring the ghosts. He just wants to go for those life leaders. He's rocketing to hang just in case it was actually Siphonator that he had. <laughs> I mean, maybe he hadn't tried that before, right? We're still we're still learning this game. <laughs> There's always That's mechanics true. to learn. Uh, yeah, Waz's gonna be in pretty oh good shape there. Catches side give, gets the double kill, and he's gonna be Unstoppable. nigh on invincible for the next few seconds here. So, Team Rocket jumping around, not afraid. Also not finding anybody though. True. Really nice play from Waz there earlier where he ran into a room with um not protection whatever it's called. Vanguard. And uh Ooh. Vanguard, yes. And then he, he focus fired the life leader. It was really nice. He just smelled blood in the water and chased it down. Nice play there from Waz. Yeah, and he also finished off the round there with his rail. Now again you get caught by that red armor, there's nowhere to go. And he just waited, 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 then popped him out of the air with that rail. Point and click. Raz is going to be first one down there. He took a lot of damage real quick. 
So Waz here was just sort of playing very, very defensively. I think maybe he was waiting for his teammates to feed him information. Kind of just crouched down for like 10 seconds. I, I think they're really trying to slow this one down. They don't want to give up. Kind of the opposite. This is basically the opposite of the last round at this point in the beginning. Um, that said, though, lots of kills coming out in the last 10 seconds. So right as I said that, they proved me wrong. <laughs> That's how it always seems to go. Rafa gets a kill, and he gets out with three health. Oh, Saigib uh, getting a big kill there. Wow. He's still on 13 health. Hitting pincer shots left and right. 28 health. Saigib right Using now is... Uh, playing real sweaty, I can tell you that from the way he's popping around. He is looking to start a fight right now. He knows this is a great <laughs> opportunity for them to take control of this round. There's one shot. Taking down Rafa. Only two more lives to take out. Wow, nice combo there. From a really tough angle, too. Uh, wow. And just like that, BMG finishing it off strong. One more round away from taking a one map lead over Liquid in these grand finals. But Liquid, I, we've seen them come back so many times in so many matches. You certainly never count them out. I still feel like Liquid does best when it becomes that brawl early on in a, in a match. And they just kind of, they're in the chaos and they're just, oh, it's just frag to frag. And it's just True, pure uh... fighting ability. I agree. It's it's not only combat ability, but probably more experience with uh, comms and just their general team fight sense in a close quarters. Oh, did Brick? I think Brick just looked right by. Okay, there we go. It's like for some reason he didn't jump down and take the mega health. Did he grab it? Maybe he did. That was a, a weird exchange right there. No, I think Dehang got the mega health. That was weird. I think maybe he was just a little bit distracted. Like I say, uh, fatigue and nerves gonna start playing a factor for some of these guys. And now to hang, super stacked up. He can definitely go after this Vindicator right now. And he is in position for it, but it's taken right behind him. Yeah, kind of surprised. But three kills by Rafa, just erasing Team BMG. They've already got them down to one player left. Rafa getting the mega health, very nice. Uh come up for him while he has Vindicator, but a uh, nice rocket there from Brick is going to end that spree. Waz recovers Vindicator, and he's looking to make a move with the last few seconds of it. Uh, but he doesn't manage to find anyone here. He's going into the LG room and uh, doesn't go check red. Oh, he is playing dangerous games here. He comes up behind Rafa, but he was down in that lower area where if somebody catches you, you're just going to get annihilated, get stuck in the corner. But now he's looking pretty good. He's got 143 armor, 100 HP. If they can get a mega health on him, they will be in great position to defend him, but they still need to come up with some kills as well. Totally. Actually, that hallway that Id just walked through seems like a, a really safe option that no one has really explored so far uh, for hiding if you're the life leader. Uh-oh, here come but the rockets. Down at 42 HP. He's getting chased down in mid. Needs teammates to come around, and they do with the double rail. Insane. And actually, Dehang goes down there, so now we're on one life each for each team. Brick just uh, got a quad frag and taking out that, <laughs> taking out Dehang. And uh, yeah, like you said, one at a time now, Brick on a roll. We're going to stick with him for now on my screen. Looks like he's just begging someone to find out, to point out that last runner. <laughs> Waz ending him there. And yeah, I mean, dead even. You look, I mean, you think you got a, uh, Dehang has got the mega health. That's really the only advantage. Oh, and he picks up the red. Losing both pickups, that's going to be a big problem now. And this Vindicator could decide this, decide this round and potentially this map if BMG can close it out here. Looks like DeHang's in position for it. He's going to pick up the Vindicator. Tries to hit a pincer through his teammate. Doesn't quite make it, but he follows up and finishes off the Ghost with uh, Vindicator Shaft. Gets another kill there on another Ghost. But where is Rick? It's actually, oh, he finds him peeking for red. I was saying it's actually a pretty good job by BMG of avoiding him, kind of baiting him into ghosts. And they took him down to less than 100 health. But he turned that corner and he just he just caught them peeking right at that red armor. So, all right, map point here. Someone's going to go into uh, the second half of this match with a big advantage. Oh, 
a side game, just killing out everyone, even. including himself. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do, though. I mean, two for one's a pretty decent trade, I suppose. Rafa caught out in the red armor room is gonna go down before the item spawns. Waz rocket jumps for it, picks it up, but he goes down as well. Yeah, that was great shaft work there. Just waited for him. As soon as he heard the rocket jump, he just lined him up. And then at that point, he just held the button down. You don't even really need to aim at that point. <laughs> and, uh, slight life advantage for BMG. Although, nope, never mind. Three lives each, but it's all on it. Yeah, he did grab that red though, so they've been controlling that. Vanguard's going to be coming up soon. I'll be interested to see if they try to grab it. Looks like he's going to back up. You see pings coming nice out. Rocket jump. Ooh, eats a little bit of rocket damage in the nice Ooh. rail to finish him off. It's still two, two, uh, two, I guess, lives apiece for these two teams, though. So dead even again in this last round of this one. But the deciding factor might be this very stacked to hang with um, Vanguard. And when I'm peeking at the storeboard, I'm noticing actually a pretty significant total damage advantage for Liquid. So coming on strong here. I think that plays into what we were talking about, where the beginning of those rounds when they can force it to just be a pure fragment competition. Oh, big kill there by Id to protect himself. That 50 HP that we talked about. Oh, and he's got a one-on-one -on -one here with the... Oh, and he goes down to Dehang. Dehang's shaft takes him down to one life. Saigib yeah, trying to answer right back. He goes down to hang with a double kill to defend himself. Perfect. Defeat. Wow. And that defense, Liquid... Coming back in, taking map one. So again, a tournament map or tournament mode, if you will. But we will have a choice here. So now, if you're BMG, you know that if you choose MacGuffin, you have to play them on Marina, who we know that where we know they're strong. They might, they might just decide to go wipe out next. Yeah, I think that would be a pretty safe bet. Um... Oh, I have to restart my game again. Me too. <laughs> Wonderful. Interesting. It didn't actually send me an update. Me too. <laughs> That's odd. I wonder what happened there. I wonder if there was something like an anti-cheat update or something as opposed to a game update. I'm not really sure. Potentially, it does update all the time, or maybe the uh, server that we were on was just getting the, pat, uh, the patch. No, that doesn't make sense, because we were patched. I don't know. Yeah, so they, they may have to... Lobby key is invalid, so we're going to have to find a new one. Gotcha. So that'll give them a little bit of time to think about it. Um, again, mm -hmm. some decision making uh, to be to be done now because now they do have to beat them in both game types at this point. If you're BMG, you got to win two games. You got to beat them on Marina, uh, on MacGuffin, one way or another. So maybe you just go ahead and say, let's do it now. True. Uh, you might as well get it over with, you know, especially if you play Wipeout and you, you don't want to wipe yourself out, tire yourself out <laughs> True. before uh, playing your opponent's on their strongest map and their strongest mode. Uh, we've got a new lobby code. Gotcha. Custom games joining in. Invalid lobby joined. Invalid key. key. Yeah. Uh, sh hopefully no one can read that. We might have to make another one anyways. I think I just leaked it. <laughs> I pasted it into the wrong box. Oh, gotcha. Well, that's fine. That one's oh, we invalid got anyway. New one. Perfect. Yeah, just double check the key. So click the right box. Pasty, pasty. There yes. we go. Learn to take my time with that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Dehang is like totally owning. Going back to what you said um, about player performance and expectations, I think it's totally possible that Dehang's been playing this game a little bit more and he said, you know what? I got this. Don't worry about it. We don't need to practice this as much. <laughs> I'm just straight up going to carry because he is owning. <clears throat> I mean, we have seen uh, him stream this game a decent amount. So, like, he's he mm. has been playing. I don't know how much someone like like Rafa has been playing before. Um, 
Maybe a lot, maybe not so much. I really have no idea, honestly. Yeah, unfortunately, I haven't been able to keep up with it 100% because I've been playing myself 24 hours a day, as uh, viewers know. Ooh, so Psygib. Yeah, it looks like... Uh, so, yep, that's the exact conversation we were talking about. Are they going to do MacGuffin and Marina? Looks like they're going to. They want to oh, play MacGuffin are, so first. Wow, getting it out of the way. Honestly, if they can win the uh, Marina, I think they have a great chance in Wipeout. Whereas the other way is less certain, so you're absolutely right. Yeah, I mean... I and this is just subjective, but I, I have, you know, I couldn't cite the numbers or anything. I just, I feel like Liquid has just been extra dominant on this map. Um, I also think this is a map being so wide and flat and you constantly, like you're rarely getting flanked from behind on this map. It's sort of a really straightforward, a linear attack versus defense map. Um, someone like mm -hmm. hang with his just superior shaft. I mean, his shafting ability on this map in particular has been uh, exceptional. And I think that's played a big role. So one thing I do love about this map is uh, the difference, the noticeable difference between spawning on the red side and spawning on the shaft side. Uh, let's see if Team Liquid gets that shaft spawn with the Mega Health. It looks like they did. Maybe. Yeah, we saw Red Armor get grabbed along with that rocket launcher, but trying to get out of the room and, and to hang right there immediately getting the shaft kill. <laughs> you were totally right. That was like 60% uh, LG for a while. Or shaft. Everyone's low health. This is going to be a chaos on the MacGuffin spawn. Yeah, not unlike what we've seen before. Waiting for that second red armor spawn before even grabbing it. Oh, they grab it and they throw it up. So uh, nice move there. We've seen Liquid oh, nice. really comfortable passing the MacGuffin, especially on this map. It almost reminds me of Bombing Run from the UT days, UT2K4 days, where you just got a teammate waiting in a corner and you toss it right in their direction. <laughs> Rick here going to really wait nice for prior. this red, and he's got it. Great teamwork. Letting his team teammates come in and kind of clear a path for him. Mm -hmm. Rick again with the calculated cap. He almost gets there. Decides to turn around and walk into the Vindicator instead. That's unfortunate, but uh, Hank killing himself to pass off the Vindicator to the MacGuffin Carrier, who is Rafa, taking the lower red path, and he's definitely going to be able to cap here. But will he be able to hold it? Ooh, wow, that just was barely actually got it. And to hang with a double shotgun kill. Still has a little bit of that power up left, it looks like. Yeah, still a little bit of juice in his machine gun there to do 45 damage or so free and he's got the implosion weeble in his pocket let's see what he can do with that maybe uh keep him off the point maybe keep himself alive yeah that's pr that's definitely my worst weeble as far as knowing when to use it i know you can boost yourself uh but yeah like i could say pulling someone off the point if they're trying to grab it even denying someone a cap would be an interesting use of it Ooh, players just trading blows back and forth and they get it moving, but unfortunately, they're, so they're throwing this, and there's nobody really there to pick it up, and that's the big problem. <laughs> Waz backed into the MacGuffin, thought he picked it up and tried to throw it, turned around, and there was actually an opponent behind him who had picked it up. Just stole it out of his pocket. That was hilarious. A beautiful movement here by Saigib just flew across the map. And so the, the downside of this map, whenever you grab that MacGuffin, you know the enemy team is between you and your, your base because they're all going to spawn in mid. So you know you're going to have to either fight your way through or avoid them. In that case, just pure speed just flew right past so quickly they couldn't even get a shot on them. That's true. I feel like you have to either go really, really fast or pretty slow and calculated. Uh, we've seen a lot of fakes. In fact, uh, Brick does a, a lot of really nice doubling back with the MacGuffin. Uh, let's see if they can make a straight shot run here, Rafa. They're going straight for the Vindicator power-up. Yeah, probably a smart play. We ended up seeing it. Who picked it up? Rafa's got it still Rafa. up top with the with the shaft. He's going to plant it at home. And, and interesting move. Why isn't he picking up that health? Okay, he was giving me a little bit of anxiety. Scaring me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> There's another 50 health nearby, but I guess he feels like uh, 80 was enough. And he's just going to hold on here. Finds the 1v2, but he loses the power up, and that could be uh, costly depending on how this goes. 
Id picks it up on the last second of being on the point, and he's gonna fly across here. Not as quite, not quite as fast as Psy Gib, but. Yeah, I think he got into a situation where, uh, like we were saying, he knows the enemy team's gonna spawn in mid, so he just wants to kind of weave his way through, get it home, and if they can defend this for, for just a couple of waves, they'll be right back in this one. Liquid kind of got off to a fast start, but... And you see the nice pass through the window, and that, that's really what's been setting Liquid apart, is the ability to, to get that MacGuffin moving and throwing it directly to teammates, not just throwing it forward and then running to it. Like, someone is ready for it every time. Absolutely. I would be really uh, curious to hear what their, their comms are and voice, what their callouts are, because it sounds like, uh, you know, they've really got their comms honed in to make it efficient, because they're passing a lot of information back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that is what you were talking about earlier. Um, that is why um, Team BMG picked this map and this mode. If they can win this against such great passes and such great comms, then they can maybe win anything. And it looks like it's going to be round one in favor of Team Liquid, who uh, managed to hold off on the point. No armor to their name. Yeah, so tournament point again. This round, if Liquid can take it, they will finally take home the tournament. That said, again, anything can happen. If BMG can take this round and force a third uh, tiebreaker to sum up time, it'll be on Wipeout. Anything can happen there. All right, so first pickups got grabbed. Everyone taking damage. It's got a little bit of armor left. We've seen... Uh, Yep, second, second red spawn's coming. Two liquid players over there. They're going to try to bring that over there. Nice use of the slow bubble. Try to slow down that attack and at least negate those power-ups. They actually do just that, and they end up with it in their hands. This would be a great start to the round. Nice defense from Saigib. So the first points on the board are going to go to Team BMG. Yeah, and that's so, so important for them, and they're in position for right armor. They're going to give up the MacGuffin, which is an interesting play. Um, so Liquid's opting to go for the MacGuffin and then the power-up. Oh, and the grab, and he goes down. Who's going to have it? Was that Id? Yeah, Id's got the power-up. Like I was saying, this is such Almost a shot. Almost into Rafa's crossbow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, only 68 HP. Got to be careful, but Shaft is such a dominant weapon on this map. You, you throw Vindicator on top of it. But Liquid, there you go. Vindicator going to bring them back to base and right back into the lead. Inching their way towards a tournament victory after you know, almost eight hours of play. You know they're ready to kind of take this one home. Dang, almost hitting the 90 HP rail. 90 damage rail. Uh, haven't seen anything surpass that. Last tournament we had a couple hundred rails, but... Uh... I find that mechanic pretty exciting. It's always nice to see. Yeah, it kind of makes you rethink the risk point. versus reward. Sorry, take it. It makes you rethink the risk versus reward calculation of taking that shot. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, MacGuffin down in mid. You see the, sh the toss over the head. We saw some fighting over the red. Nobody took the red. Interesting. So Saigib's going to rocket jump up to it. Drop down and get one kill. All right, That's so. a real indication of how much the players are focusing on the objective here. If uh, six top players are giving up a red, it's because something really important <laughs> is going on. Yeah, I mean, you can see Liquid didn't want to give them any hope in this matchup. They don't want to let them start racking up points. They did, but uh, still, still a pretty good lead for Liquid. Oh, and they've got this moving back to their base. It leaves right between the enemy team. Somehow not getting chased down. They tried to go for the cutoff. Can't stop them. That's going to be five more points on the board immediately. And time ticking down on BMG. Vindicator. Vindicator up now. Side give passes the 4K damage mark. Enemy MacGuffin. So power up goes to Waz. If Liquid can control this power up and take this MacGuffin back, that could be it. I was about to say, this is what Side give should do. If he rushes this and they have Vindicator and he loses it immediately, the scoreline is too close. 70 is a big number, as we all know. Oh, but he goes down. Liquid's got it moving. That's too low to carry it. Throws it ahead of himself. And, uh, to hang. Looking to move in. Yeah. Nice recovery on the Vindicator by Rafa. But it's a full wipe. 
from Saigib, and then he kills himself with yeah. the plasma. Yeah, I guess that was Watch intentional. Him. They did. Maybe he just wanted to reset himself. Oh yeah, totally. Briggs got it in his hands, and like you said, this is a, an opportunity if he can avoid players try to rack up some points, but he's just gonna get shafted down from behind. Rafa takes him out. Liquid gets it moving again. We're, we're almost at the four minute point, so another long round here. But if Liquid can get this home and defend it for just a couple of moments, they'll be able to take this tournament home. Up to 85 final seconds here, and... Isn't this how uh, the first MacGuffin game went, though? It was a 99, a comeback from 20. To versus 99. Yeah, it was it was a it was a nail biter, and yeah, anything can happen in MacGuffin for sure. That's kind of the interesting thing about it. It's never over till it's over. Let's go on board with the MacGuffin carrier. Brick, he's got to get this mega right now. Oh, it was so critical. He's gonna back up. He's surrounded though. He's got to get some teammate help. He gets the kill, but goes down and lost all of those points in the meantime. Waz throws it across. I think that's gonna get picked up by an opponent though. Yeah, I, you know, it's gonna have it. He's gonna have to move back. And this this McGuffin's been stuck in mid for a couple of minutes now, just back and forth. <laughs> this sure is as is. brutal of, Someone, a, of a battle I've seen. Team Vindicator. <laughs> Someone was just on the rocket launcher spawn, spamming the McGuffin in the corner, so nobody could get it. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of spots in this map too where you can hide the McGuffin. Oh, he takes out the power up. Now who's got it? Rafa still got it with that machine gun out. And he's got MacGuffin as well. Throws it to himself in a flower bed. Yeah, I think he was trying to just hurl it towards the hang, but bounces right back at him. And, and so that's going to be a, a situation now where Waz has it with 43 HP. Vindicator in, so no one really taking a huge advantage on that Vindicator. We've been at a stalemate basically fighting over mid right now. If Liquid gets, gets a chance to cap this, It'll be almost an immediate. Oh, 90 points. So here we go. It's almost an immediate overtime. And this could be the tournament right here. Waz is on the point trying to keep them away. Slow bubble comes down. Overtime is happening. They got one more kill to get. Sidegib goes down. Brick can touch it. He can they've reset the timer. And Id's on it as well. And they've got it moving. So 99. Here we go. What can they do with 55 on their side? Oh, and keep in mind, if they come back and win this round, and they still have to play another. <laughs> All right, so Brick doesn't look like he's in a huge hurry. It also doesn't look like he's uh, necessarily got any, any armor in front of him. He goes down immediately to hang with that killer shaft again on this map. He's just, he's extra brutal with it. And he has Mega on top of that, but he actually goes down, which is crazy uh, with the stack that he had. But it was 1v2, not much you could do there. And the MacGuffin is uh, somewhere. Yeah, it was kind of there dug into the corner there. Sidegib uh, pulls it out. Only 67 HP. At this point, if I were Sidegib, I would be throwing it just under the pressure. You got to clear it out of there. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like a you know, hockey or a soccer move. But here we go. We're in overtime again. It's planted on the spot. They have someone on there. And they get it moving again, facing elimination. BMG here, but, not giving up, staying focused, and now what do they do with it with 15 health? Rafa with the Vindicator. Seems like he got faked. He's found everyone except the MacGuffin Carrier. Where is it? it yeah, he gets kept. it home, but, but it's not really going to get him anywhere because he goes down immediately. And now Rafa's here with the Vindicator and 100 armor. He's going to be able to defend that Carrier. It's going to be a really tricky situation here for BMG. They do manage to grab it back, though, with the Ambush, and they can slam it home. Got picked up to De by DeHang, though, who's uh, going to circle back around, take his time, almost at eight minutes for just this round. This is, I think, uh, as long of a round as we've seen. I think the last tournament, we maybe saw one or two. Overtime, here yeah. we go, one-on-one, -on -one, but, oh, and he actually gets beat. DeHang finally lost with the shaft out. Unfortunately for them, so Waz was right there to pick it up. The pass to Rafa, saving just a couple of seconds. Will it matter? They've got him down to overtime. One more kill will do it, and this could be the tournament right now. Three more seconds. They can't touch it, and that's Didn't it. Wow. Liquid coming in GG. and finally gets it across, but getting all they could handle from Team BMG.
Boy, that was an eight plus minute round to finish this tournament off. You, you can't really get any crazier than that in MacGuffin, I don't think. That that That's MacGuffin true. was just stuck in mid. There was a good two or three minutes there. It was just going back and forth. Yeah, when it went down at the top middle area, uh, it was down for at least a minute and a half. It went towards Mega and then came back. It was crazy. Amazing game in the chat. Absolutely right. It was uh, something else. Oh yeah, and, and you know, one of a few games. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna refresh the brackets and let people take a look at that. I mean, you look at Team Liquid. So you want to talk about <laughs> fighting through adversity? Four matches in a row, including the first round of the grand final, where Team Liquid played Liquid played three maps. They won the first three in a row from rounds three, four, and five. You know, facing elimination in the third map tiebreaker, lost it in the grand final, and came back again after all of that. And then finally finished one up in two. Although, again, we, we think that uh, BMG maybe just decided to try to take him out on their favorite map. Could have easily been another third map grand final. Yeah, and uh, I would not have complained. Those were super fun to watch. If it had gone longer, that's okay with me. But uh, it was really well played, especially with the passing there. Um, like you said, that those trade trademark uh, Team Liquid in MacGuffin, really nice passes and control. Like... Even that last pass, which saved, you know, 0. 0.2 seconds uh, to throw it onto the point. That stuff adds up. Yeah, and that's, so that's and that's what I wonder. These teams that are really, really have that locked down, how much of that is instinct and practice and how much of that is, you know, you don't have time in that moment to say, hey, you go stand on the point, I'm going to grab it. Like, that's all just instinct at this point. And that yeah. was, like you say, if that saved half a second over running there yourself, that could be the difference, right? Yep, yeah, Absolutely. And uh, chat was making fun of me earlier because I said it was gamer instinct, but that's what it is. It's gamer <laughs> instinct. Uh, you know, you find yourself in a situation and you know you have to make the most of it, and you do, and it turns out to be the best possible play that you could do. Uh, and uh, we saw that throughout the finals. Both teams played really well, though. BMG were owning uh, for quite a few of their matches today um, and doing really well in the grand finals, too. Yeah, I mean, even the ability to come back. I mean, uh, round three in the winner's bracket, you know, they lost to Team Smiley, fought the way back through the lower bracket. And keep in mind, those were best of three matches at that point. There was no longer best of one in the lower bracket. So they had to beat um, uh, Team Idiots, they beat once. Then Edgy Children, they had to beat twice. Prevail Gaming, they had to beat twice, which, by the way, those are not two teams that are just pushovers. Um, take, coming back, beating Egg Control, you're talking about teams that have finished top three, top five in prior tournaments just to get to the lower bracket, to try to mm -hmm. get revenge on Team Smiley, just for the right to come back and try to reset the bracket, which they did against Liquid. So huge road here for BMG to try to come back and take this. They did just about everything they could and just came up a couple steps short. Um, and on Liquid's side, tons of adversity. You can see all of the two, v two to one matchups and just did exactly what they needed to do, which was uh, you know not, not allow the, the, the fatigue to set in and not allow themselves to lose focus. They did exactly what they had to do and ultimately coming out on top. Absolutely. Uh, hopefully, I, I know Dehang was streaming earlier. Hopefully he will have uh, VODs up and stuff for uh, if he was streaming any of this. Um, and we will be able to catch some POVs with some comms. That would be very nice to see later on. Um, and of course, hopefully we'll see these players again in future tournaments, get cracked plans to host uh, more community tournaments. Speaking of which, uh, tomorrow there is a 2v2 arena tournament. Still time to sign up, I believe. I guess I should have double checked that before I said it. Um, but yeah, there is a uh, Discord link that was posted in the chat there. If you want to play a 2v2 arena tournament and you um, feel like you can make the cut for that of course uh go check out the discord and get more details on that and um once again if we could thank the sponsor prevail gaming uh for supporting the tournament and the donators all the donations go towards the prize pool uh we'd like to thank azurite uh lady drac pvl or prevail the whole team skiz blind light and dradic thank you very much for the donations um you know, community-run tournaments obviously are going to run entirely on donations, and uh, it's very much appreciated. Thank you for supporting me and Connex Five 
Um, you can find him on twitch.tv slash conx5 or find me on twitch.tv slash press ok. And um, thanks to all the other streamers and, and everyone else who participated and organized everything. Yeah, I think that about covers it. You know, shout out to everybody who made this happen, uh, all the players for sticking through it, keeping these matches rolling, and all of the viewers who hung out. We are just past the eight hour mark, so it's not an insignificant event. Appreciate everyone hanging out. Again, keep an eye out uh, for tournaments coming up. You know, tomorrow, get cracked as another one. Lots of tournaments coming up in the future. Um, you know, watch Discord, watch the sites. Uh, of course, all of that announcements that Diabotical slash esports will have now from the official tournaments coming up. So, a lot going on from Diabotical. Um, and happy to be a part of it. So uh, thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Thanks, Press OK, for joining me here for the co-cast. And thanks, Thank everyone you. else who made it happen. Yes. Talk to you later, Connix. See you next time. <laughs>